It was a sunny day, the day before the graduation ceremony from high school, but without any meaning or warning, he fell out of consciousness, leaving his body, and fell into deep darkness. But soon, he went to hell, and there was no limit to his panic, because there were creepy monsters devouring each other in front of him. This place is meaningless, it is soaked in blood. But why did he end up here? This thought did not give him peace. Ten days had passed at such a pace. He was insanely hungry. There was no day or night in this place. There was not even sunlight. And now he found meat. All he could eat was the rotting meat left by the monsters. He ate with effort, because it tasted just awful. But he needs to eat it otherwise he will die. To survive, he had to adapt to this cruel place. And one day when he was carelessly eating meat, he was attacked by a huge monster but he did not lose his head and threw the nearest stones at him, and in order to survive, he had to fight. After that, tears poured out of his eyes, because the guy missed his family very much. On the thirty-ninth day, in order to survive, he had to give up humanity, and in desperation, the kid decided to kill all the monsters. On the fifty-first day, he arranged a shelter for himself and the skeleton of the deceased monster, where the guy lit a fire and continued to gain strength when suddenly a strange sign appeared in front of him, which said that he had raised the level to the third, the guy had seen this for the first time and most likely he had already gone crazy, or not? With these thoughts, he clicked on the system screen and accepted the promotion. Since that moment, seven years have already passed, his current level is 27th, he was killing hellish creatures alone without hindrance, even at that moment these monsters were like worms, because he killed them with one blow. It was the twenty-fourth year since he found himself in this crazy place. The guy managed to make himself a sword from or that he received from a steel knight, and with the help of this weapon he calmly demolished the heads of these monsters. It was the fifty-first year, the boy himself turned into a monster and beheaded a pathetic incarnation. On the seventy-ninth year and three hundred and sixty-five days this year, he is finally ready to meet the demon king, because this bastard dragged him to hell. The kid can't wait to blow his skull off. It was a fierce battle, but the guy did not spare his enemies and soon he came across the gatekeeper of the demon king. He promised to cut off the kid's limbs and throw him to feed wild animals, but these were just his dreams. And feeling the taste of possible defeat, the demon began to fight seriously. He threw the boy away and advised him to order a place in the cemetery. But the guy was not confused by these arrogant words and he rushed into the face of danger. Then he stripped the monster of both hands and jumped back to the side. A fiery shard appeared in the air, he is the boy's assistant, and strongly recommends him to finish off this monster right away, because he is a serious opponent. The demon himself was very angry, because how did this arrogant boy dare to challenge the gatekeeper himself, did he really lose his fear? And while the demon was shaking the air, this same kid punched through the monster, and the reason for such a cruel act was due to the fact that the demon was too noisy. The monster could not believe his eyes because it is impossible and after these words he fell dead. Now that the black-haired man has killed the keeper of the gate, the shard is interested in what the guy is going to do next, because this act must have greatly angered the demon king. Eighty years have passed since he went to hell, during this time he has fought many monsters to survive, everyone has different reasons and stories for which they fell into this terrible place. But the guy has a question, why did he end up in this place and why did the demon king bring him here? That's what he's going to personally learn from the most powerful demon. At the same time, the shard begins to doubt the intelligence of the guy, because wasn't it possible to just ask politely? Flying Skull advises not to do anything stupid, but just get down on your knees and ask for forgiveness from the demon king. But the boy does not agree with this plan, because the price should be paid for being forcibly dragged here and made to suffer. Then the kid raises his sword and rushes to fight. But instead of the demon king... He saw a drip and then he was thrown into a sweat. The pale guy does not understand what is happening. Hospital? The boy has not dreamed of earth for quite a long time, about thirty years, but why the hospital? He realizes that he can't move, it's a waste of lucid sleep. At this moment, a tray of drinks falls in the room, it was dropped by a woman standing in front of the bed, with tears in her eyes she rushed to her boy. But the guy doesn't like this dream, it's too childish and now he wants to wake up as soon as possible. But wait, if this is a dream, then why does the guy feel like everything is real? Why? At this moment, he remembers what happened. The exhausted guy was actually able to kill the demon king. During the battle, the cowardly demon tried to deceive him. But apparently it didn't work out. 
The shard is surprised that the black-haired man was actually able to kill the demon, but what is he now? He became the absolute ruler of these lands, sighing heavily, the guy turns around and sees in front of him a table of the system that invites him to return home. But he himself does not know if he wants to return back to earth after 80 years. While the boy is puzzled by a difficult choice, the shard flies nearby and asks about this land, but these words do not reach the consciousness of the black-haired guy. He prayed every day to escape from this cursed place, so there is no reason to worry and he presses this cherished key, after which a bright light illuminates his face. When he wakes up, he sees the doctor shining a flashlight in his eyes, the guy is addressed by his name, his name is Han Dae Song, he does not believe that this is really happening. The doctor warns that it will be difficult for the boy to move at first, since he has been in a vegetative state for a very long time, but he is in a hurry to calm his relative, because if the boy continues to receive rehabilitation treatment, he will feel much better. The girl with tears on her cheeks sincerely thanks the doctor, because the guy woke up thanks to the treatment provided. At this moment, the black-haired guy lying on the bed screamed furiously. The doctor is trying to calm Han Dae Song, but he does not hear him. The kid does not understand when he moved into reality when he received a notification from the system or just now. The patients lying nearby were frightened by this strange behavior of the guy. The doctor is still trying to calm the patient down, but he shouts that no one should approach him. But without following his warning, the doctor was bitten, grabbing the doctor with his teeth. The guy wanted to know what was done with his body magic or it's a paralyzing poison why can't he move it must be all a dream just a terrible nightmare the boy thinks at this moment a man in a bathrobe manages to stick his hand out of the kid's mouth but it doesn't end there the guy falls out of bed and starts yelling at the top of his lungs because he somehow lived before 80 years of struggle and suffering and now after all he's been through is he really just going to die enraged he declares that he will never die the guy is not going to give up even when the kid was dying in the lifeless land of hell, he begged and begged heaven to let him come back. At this moment, a couple more strong men burst into the room in order to calm the patient. They grab the exhausted boy by the hands, but he is not going to give up and orders them to let him go, otherwise he will kill everyone present. The guy still can't believe that he woke up in such a terrible body. But in a fit of anger, something else attracted his attention, and then the rage in his face was replaced not by concern. In the window he saw yellow flashes of thunder and lightning in the clouds, it's a hellish wormhole, but what has she forgotten here? They put him on a cot and the guy started to resist again, but soon they give him an injection and inject a sedative, and with the words that he will kill everyone, he loses consciousness. Breaking news, today at 9 o'clock in the morning over Songpaku, in Seoul, the opening of a mysterious gate took place. Fortunately, a team of hunters was quickly sent to the scene of the incident, and they took control of the nearest neighborhood. Currently, the hunter's mission is almost completed. In order to clear the area, the man reports that it may take about one hour. Then the guy in the office demands that he be immediately informed of the completion of the mission. He promises to take care of the rest himself. The hunter accepted the order of the head and hung up. The latest news was broadcast on TV in the ward. It said that thanks to the prompt response of the hunter team, the consequences of opening the gates were quickly eliminated and then the gates themselves were closed. In a half-asleep state, the black-haired man listened to the news and did not understand what was going on. Why did some hunter stumble into a dangerous wormhole? At this moment, an unknown person enters the ward. The boy in the jacket is surprised that his friend has really woken up, but the current ruler of hell does not recognize the guy and asks who he is. But soon he recognizes an unknown man, his old friend Chang Ho. Yes, that's right, it's really him. His friend is happy that the black-haired man finally woke up after a long ten years, after he lost consciousness. For ten whole years, he lay unconscious in this world, then on the day of graduation from high school, he was full of energy. But suddenly, for no reason, he fell, after which he lay in a hospital bed for about ten years. Thank God, the guy is glad that everything is exactly like that, because while he was in hell, it seemed to him that all eighty years had passed, but in reality it was not so. A friend informs the boy that while he was unconscious, his mother worked very hard. Because of hospital reasons, she had to get two jobs, but that's for later. Now the most important thing is for the black-haired man to recover as soon as possible and return to his former form and also about work, he cannot worry, because Chan Ho left him a free place. The kid thanks his friend, even though he is not very happy with what he heard. 
Soon, mom rolls her son out for a walk saying that the weather is gorgeous today, but his thoughts are occupied with something else entirely. Because in hell he fought for a chance to survive and return to his body. But in reality here he has to take responsibility for his family and help her, despite the fact that he got up on his own it can't. And this disadvantage can bring him a lot of trouble, because he can become a heavy burden for his family. There is no less cruelty in this reality than in the real hell. At this moment, his mother stops and turns pale before her eyes, their way was blocked by bandits. They have been looking for this ant for a long time and could not get through to her in any way, it began to bother them a little, is she really not going to give the money she borrowed, but it won't work with them. The girl asks for forgiveness and promises to return every penny by the next month, but the guys are tired of hearing these pathetic excuses. At the same time the woman approaches the bully and insistently promises that this time her words are true, if she is given a little time, she will really repay them what they owe. But the man was even more upset by this behavior, he was enraged that such a brat was touching him with his hands and threw the defenseless girl away. Han Dae Song watched this spectacle intently. The big guy pokes his finger at the loser and explains to her that when someone else's money is borrowed, it is necessary to return it on time. They're not going to talk nice to her this time. The helpless mother started crying and asked them not to do this in front of the child. She really promises to return the money next month and asks the gentleman to let them go. But the man is not going to tolerate empty promises anymore. He has already gone for the second year. The bully does not understand how she herself is not ashamed in front of the child. With these conclusions, he strikes her in the face. Han Dae Song could not stand this mockery, and sitting on a wheelchair called these damn bastards to him. The hooligans did not hear the squeak of a small mutt and asked to repeat it. But the boy happily fulfills their request. The mother tries to stop her son, but he was already grabbed by the collar and lifted off the ground. The mother in tears asks Desen to apologize and tries to justify him in the face of the bandits, because the boy is just a patient. But despite all the mother's attempts to prevent bloodshed, the exhausted boy continues to insult the vile insects in his sight. Bugai realized that the kid was clearly in trouble with his head, since he continues to climb into trouble, but still Moltz's words offended him greatly, and he decides to show which of them is a real insect. After that, the black-haired man goes flying, but it doesn't end there. Because according to the man, insects need to be crushed, and he begins to trample on the defenseless young man. While Han Dae Song is being beaten, he reproaches himself for the fact that his body is in such a deplorable state, because if not for this, the tearful girl tries to stop what is happening, but to no avail, the man continues to kick the boy, he demands that he call him again if he is not scared. The kid keeps calling him names in his mind, because if they were in hell right now, there would be nothing left of the man for a long time. At this moment, a long-forgotten system screen appears in front of the black-haired man, she offers him to take part in a divine quest, and she also warns that in case of refusal, the reward will not be received. The boy's eyes lit up with hope, he no longer paid attention to everything that was happening, he was only interested in the divine quest. With the window of choice suddenly appearing, his doubts were short-lived, because these windows were the only thing that helped him survive in hell for all eight and six years. The quest was accepted, he did not immediately understand what was happening. For some reason everything froze, namely time, it stopped. The task he accepted is called body restoration. The difficulty level of this quest is the lowest. All he needs to do is get to the marked destination in one hour. As a reward he will be given a medicine to restore the perfect state, as well as 10% to health. The guy was very surprised. Can his body really be returned to its previous state? A red marker appeared in front of him notifying him that he should overcome ten meters. The black-haired man still can't believe his eyes. It turns out if he gets to that place he will return himself. Smiling, the kid said that he would get there no matter what it cost him. Even if he crawled, the main thing was that he would be returned to his former state. Through a stream of sweat, the guy continued to crawl with all his might. It's hard for him to believe that the one who conquered everyone in hell ate how to cope with such a trifle. There are about eighteen minutes left before the end of the task. But at this speed he will never be able to get there on time, and one person will not get through it, so Han Dae Song decided to think rationally. If we take into account that the system cannot issue a mission that cannot be completed, in this case everything is exactly the same, there must be some solution. After carefully reading the goal, namely to get to the destination, he realized that there was not a word that he needed to get there, which means that you can get to the destination in any way. 
After looking around, he remembered about his wheelchair and notices that it's pretty stupid that he realized it just now. Somehow climbing onto a wheelchair, he did not give up and began to pick up speed. Soon he manages to get to the designated place in the last seconds. All out of breath after this quest, he receives a small bottle of medicine, and the system also provided a little information about a small bottle. This liquid is a multifunctional medicine for restoring and improving the current state of a perfect being. The kid drinks the contents of the bottle without hesitation and immediately notices changes in his body. All the pain has disappeared, and the strength has returned to this body. Those present did not understand what had happened. The young man who had just been lying at the feet of the bully disappeared. Soon, law enforcement agencies arrived at the scene of the showdown and got involved in the conflict. At the same time, a terrified mother rushed to her son. The big guy couldn't understand how the kid managed to be in that place. But his friend offers to get out of here as soon as possible, and they leave this place. But Han Daesong remembered them and is not going to forgive their rudeness. Soon night fell. The boy continued to lie in his ward. But he was in no hurry to sleep. The black-haired man still could not understand how that window with the choice turned out to be in front of him. After the incident, he tried several times to call the system again, but all to no avail. He tries to call the window again, but nothing happens. Then Han Daesong decides to completely restore his body as soon as possible, before these scumbags come again. And for that, he needs another quest. At this moment, a message appears out of nowhere that the Pantheon is expecting a visit of perfection, and at the same moment the weakened boy finds himself in an unknown space for him. At first it seemed to him that this was a dream, but soon he saw the system window again. It said that from that moment the guy was given the opportunity to speed up his implementation. In order to return his perfect body as soon as possible, he will have to complete tasks, and the system wishes him good luck on this. Then he decides to proceed with the implementation. The second task is that Han Daesong needs to destroy these objects. The difficulty level of this task is average, and it is not limited in time. As a reward he will be given a 30% realization. The previously mentioned object appeared in front of the guy and concentrating, the Lord of Hell easily shatters the miserable bag. Now he has a third task in front of him. This time his task is to run 10 kilometers. The difficulty level is the highest, and he has three hours for all this. As a reward, he will receive a tonic for the perfection of the average value of the realization, namely 5% of it. At the same time, the black-haired boy began a difficult workout, and soon he successfully performs this task. Already the fifth task was to do a thousand push-ups in two hours and soon the kid copes with this test. His current realization is 55%, but this is clearly not enough for him. Han Dae Song does not understand the heavens are playing tricks there, he has done so much, and in total he received only half, and besides, they give a miserable tonic as a reward. He demands a normal task, otherwise he's tired of shaking the air for nothing. At this moment, he climbs the tenth test, he will have to fight with a crying demon. A pillar of fierce energy appeared on the training ground and a well-known monster appeared in front of the boy. Once in hell he almost died at the hands of this monster, but now the black-haired man is sincerely glad to see him here. A huge monster without hesitation rushed at the boy and struck him the first blow, besides with great difficulty managed to block the first blow. At this rate he will obviously die and realizing that defense is not the best strategy. The guy jumps and decides to strike back at the monster, but the monster easily presses the guy into the ground. The wounded lord of hell spits blood, he realizes what a pitiful situation he is in, because the fact that he lost his balance because of some crying demon is humiliating. The monster continues to inflict a series of attacks, but Han Dae Song dodges each one without any problems, but soon he is caught by a huge demon and being trapped in a deadly trap, the kid remembered how he killed this monster in hell. Smiling, he deprives the monster of a paw, the kid completely forgot that he could summon his sword. With him he rushed at the filthy monster and ordered him to go back to hell. After that, he woke up in his bunk and opened the window slightly. With this action he woke up his sleeping mother and rubbed her eyes. She was shocked, because her beloved son, Han Dae Song, was standing in front of her. All the same hospital, Han Dae Song is doing exercises that promote muscle recovery. But he doesn't need it anymore. His mother is standing next to the doctor and asks him if such a quick recovery is possible. After all, the doctor said that rehabilitation would take more than six months, but he suddenly began to move, as if nothing had happened, in just fifteen days. But the doctor can't find the words to explain this to the boy's mother, because such a miracle is inexplicable from a medical point of view. 
The doctor says that there are probably some features present here that they should identify, and most importantly, the guy is no longer in danger, because he is healthy. With these words, the specialist calms the frightened mother, and she is happy from the bottom of her heart. At this moment, the guy begins to resist, he is tired of being groped by doctors. But this is normal because everyone is surprised and find at least some clue in this case. But still, now the black-haired man is much calmer, because he no longer has problems with the body, namely with the movement of his arms and legs, but still this is not his final body shape and he is going to return to his former state as soon as possible. The guy turns around and finds his mother talking to the nurse. The mother thanks the girl with all her might, but she says that her help is not even close to what the woman has experienced over these ten years. From these words the mother burst into tears. And it's hard to even imagine how hard this time was for his mother. But now everything is different, and he promises himself to protect her from now on. The kid goes to the toilet, goes to the sink and calls out to the pantheon. A second later, he finds himself on the training ground. But still Han Dae Song is not happy, because this implementation is too long a process, and he wants to speed it up. At this moment, a message from the system appears in front of his face. From now on, the black-haired person is allowed to choose the difficulty level at his discretion. The higher the difficulty, the faster the progress. The guy is going to finish it the first time, whatever it is, and with these thoughts he chooses the difficulty hell. Having chosen the maximum difficulty, a mysterious sphere appeared in front of the youngster from which power flowed. It felt like it was ready to explode at any second and a white-haired man fell out of it. But the guy was not particularly worried, because it looks like a complete show-off but when he opened his eyes, he realized what kind of opponent he was. The two stood motionless on the pantheon under the red moon, but the guy is not surprised, because only he could be a perfect being from hell. At that moment, the clone began his insane attack. At the same time, the worried boy tried to make a blow to push the enemy away, but he jumped up and was ready to strike back. The guy somehow managed to block the attack, but the force of the blow carried him several meters away, and while he was annoyed by what was happening, the white-haired demon was not going to stop, and a fierce fight began in which there was no winner, but still Han Dae Song was gradually pushed back and he received minor wounds. He realizes that in this state he will not be able to defeat him either in strength or speed, the longer they fight, the worse the condition of the black-haired one. And then, in the process of his reflections, the perfect creature from hell pushes the boy away with his hand for hundreds of meters. A column of thick smoke appeared on the platform and there was obviously someone's figure inside it. Having dissipated, the wounded Han Dae Sung smiles maliciously and holds on to the surd. He understands what a pitiful situation he is in. That even a fake is much better than his real one. He is not particularly happy about it. But this does not negate the fact that he is in any he will kill her today with his own hands. And at the same moment, he uses his trump card, namely a skill called Blood Psyker's Anger. An enraged clone flies at the kid and soon he cuts the guy in half. But not the guy himself, but his afterimage. The boy himself takes the ruler of hell by the head and drives it into the ground, after which he desperately tries to chop it off, but the clone pushes the head away from the cutting attack, after which he breaks out of the trap and prepares to strike back a blow, but first of all. He also decides to use the ability Blood Psyker's Anger. Han Dae Song did not expect such impudence from the clone and continues a desperate battle but soon the ruler of hell turns out to be behind his back and causes serious injury to the boy. At that moment, the cleaning lady started knocking on the toilet door, but the guy was not conscious and did not react to the sound. At the same time, the employee decides to open the locked door with a key. The guy is on the verge of losing and already understands that if he loses now, then everything he has accumulated up to this point will turn into nothing again. Bleeding, he desperately tries to think of a way that will allow him to kill this creature from hell and soon he remembers about his inventory. At this moment, the cleaner is distracted and then she takes out the key and goes to another floor with a colleague. The wounded guy opens the inventory and puts his hand in it in the face of death. Soon he takes out a once useless item that he received for each completed task. It was lying around all this time in the inventory. But now this is exactly what he needs. This is a medicine for restoring the body of a perfect being. It helps to increase endurance by 2% and if everything is really like that, then after drinking 5 such vials he will be able to fight this crazy monster. Approaching the clone tries to strike, but the boy dodges and hits the white-haired man in the face, so much so that he flies away. Finally he is able to fight and without wasting time he decides to increase his endurance 100%. Bouncing off attacks, he drinks the second bottle, and soon also all the others, 
and after the fifth bottle, he continued to block the clone's attacks. But despite all the medications taken, it is still difficult to compete with this monster, and at the moment the ruler of hell grabs a guy in hospital pajamas by the throat. Smiling, the clone was already ready to pierce the defenseless boy, but he called the inventory and with the help of the portal absorbed the enemy sword, and at the same time he pierces his opponent, after which he falls to his knees and begins to gradually disappear. Finally, he completed this dreary task. Now his realization has reached 100% and from now on his body condition in the real world will be returned to its original state. But the guy was surprised, because with the last body, he also returned all the old scars that remind the youngster of hard times in hell. Now he asks the system to return him back to earth, but immediately she notifies the kid about the message she received and invites him to look at it. He agrees without thinking twice and a message is immediately displayed to him saying that hell welcomes its new sovereign namely Han Dae Song. During his absence, the heavenly space will be sealed and the demons of the pantheon will await the arrival of their sovereign. But the kid is doubled by their arrogance, because do they really want him to help them after 80 years of suffering, just because he became their sovereign? In response to this, he puts out his middle finger and sends these greedy bastards far and for a long time, now he again asks the system to let him out of here. Hundreds of demons were watching everything that was happening. After a while, the guy continued to recover in the hospital. From early in the morning he does push-ups on one hand. At this moment the attending physician comes into the ward with his mother, and yet it seems to the man that the guy is awake. The concerned woman asks the doctor again, because earlier he said that her son is not like that, but the doctor says that even now there are no specific symptoms of awakening, but still, it cannot be explained otherwise. The woman is worried about how this could happen to her son, but the doctor says the association will do the rest. Mother and son are driving a taxi, although the guy pretended not to notice anything, worrying about the task, but his mother is hiding something and now the guy is trying to figure out what happened in ten years of his absence. Going into the house, the mother tells the guy to come in and rest, and she will be back soon. And going inside, he sees a girl with money in her hands and asks who is she? At this time, the mother returns and offers the guy to eat, and seeing Jiza, she asks where she has been all this time and why she did not pick up the phone. The mother was very worried about her. But soon after seeing the money in the girl's hands, she understands everything. The daughter steals money from home again, and she, lowering her head down, silently passes. The guy is unpleasantly surprised, because how could he not recognize his own sister? She passing by says that the guy looks quite healthy, at a time when every day in their family was like hell. After these words she leaves home again. At this moment, the same bandits are knocking on the door. They demand that the doors be opened to them otherwise they will take it out. The noise continues to be heard on the street, and hooligans in anger kick the gate of the house, shouting that they know that the woman is at home. Soon the door opens and Han Daesong's younger sister comes out of it. She says with a menacing look that these guys are extremely noisy creatures, then turns around and leaves. But this does not particularly affect them, because now the front door is open, but the bully still drew attention to the attractive little girl. Soon the mother came out to the uninvited guests and apologizes for not being able to call them. It's all because they only managed to get out of the hospital today, and now she is ready to give them money. But men are not attracted to this trifle, and they repel the defenseless girl. Seeing this scene, the ruler of hell flew into a rage and soon his comrade flew to the nagas of the bully. And raising their head, they watched the furious kid. Han Daesong himself wanted to meet these losers, but then they showed up to him themselves it's quite successful. But the bugai does not understand what is the matter. Is it really the same disabled person in a wheelchair standing in front of him? There was still some use from the money that his mother took. But the guy did not listen to the nonsense of the deceased, explains to them that he survived in hell, only because he returned everything to those from whom he got a hundred times more. With these words, he grabbed the man by the face and began to beat him, after which he fell to the ground and grabbing a stool tried to strike back but it was easily punched by the ruler of hell and the big guy once again got in the face, after which he flew to the door. But his friend did not lose his temper and took out a knife, after which he began to provoke the boy and beckon to him, but he was not afraid. The black-haired man calmly approached and grabbed the bloody guy by the hand and asked if the bastard had hit his mother with this hand. After that, I just broke the guy's arm with a grip. The bully promises the guy a fun life in the future, because they are not going to forgive, but Han Dae Song does not really care, because there is one way in such cases, namely to kill witnesses so that there are no traces. But the mother screams at her son to stop, 
she asks him to stop this bloodshed, because it's impossible. At this time, the beaten bandits run away, promising revenge. Soon the two are driving in their black car and discussing what happened, although the guy has increased in size, but it's definitely the same brat. They were interested in how a guy who had been in a coma for ten years could change so quickly. Now they don't know what to do, because their boss demanded to get at least a receipt from a woman, but now they have to come up with a new plan. At this time, the big guy looks out the car window and seeing a familiar face demands to stop the car. Sitting in the yard, his mother decided to tell him what had happened during the whole time he was in a coma. When he first lost consciousness, his mother ran around hundreds of hospitals, not knowing what was wrong with him. Then she sold the house and left their shop. The mother thought that her son would recover quickly, but the reality turned out to be much crueler, and all the money they had quickly ran out. On the recommendation of an acquaintance, she soon paid off a loan in the finance department, but it turned out to be quite difficult to repay the debt. Not only the loan amount itself was growing, but also the interest on it. Then the son decides to find out what about his younger sister? She's still in school, and why does she walk like this? However, his youngest dropped out the year before last, and his mother herself got hurt last year while working in a diner, and then Jisoo volunteered to help with work. She also suffered. Now the girl works at a gas station during the day, and at night she goes to work in a store. But the saddened guy declares that it was necessary to stop the girl because she needs to attend school, the mother tried, but it was unsuccessful. The black-haired man says that it was necessary to leave him, but the mother asked the guy not to say, after all, they are a family. Soon a mobile phone rang on the floor, picking it up. My mother says that these are those people. At the same time Han Dae Song picks up the phone and hears about the abduction of his little sister. At that time, a tied-up girl was sitting in the car, and the big guy demands that the impudent guy run to them in a jump together with the sum of one hundred million otherwise his sister will remain intact. In anger, the boy squeezed the phone, the worried mother asks what happened. However, the guy is in no hurry to tell and announces that he will come soon. But the mother asks the guy not to go if it's something dangerous, because if the boy goes to prison hurting someone, then the woman will not be able to live. Indeed, now he will not be able to kill his enemies in peace, because he is no longer in hell. At this moment, a system appears in front of the guy. The boy asks his mother not to worry and says that nothing like this will happen. The guy gets an award for adaptation, but again he is unhappy, because if they were going to give him something like this, they could have given it out earlier. As a reward, he receives the Poison Skill B class, the Concealment Skill A class, and the Hell Chlorination Skill D class. In addition, he received the Shadow Caster Skill. At this time, the guys bring the kidnapped girl into the building, but the boy with a broken arm is worried that the black hair type may come to them. But the big guy calms his friend down, because even if this bastard comes, they have a hostage. At that moment, the light started flashing in the elevator, and the bully did not understand what was going on until a dark figure began to appear out of the void behind his back. Frightened, the bully jumped away from the creepy silhouette and screamed what the fuck is this? But this is exactly what the fat man asked. The Lord of Hell came as he asked. Out of the offered rewards in the system, the guy decided to try out the Shadow Conjurer skill initially. Tearing off the sleeve, which was soaked in the blood of the villain, the guy threw it to his new servants and asked them to find the bastard by blood, after which he demanded to open the way to him, and at the same moment appeared in their elevator. The frightened man attacked the boy, but it was a huge mistake, in a second he was already knocked out. And of the kidnappers, only the bully remained, and then he asked the question, is the boy awakened? But the guy hears about this term for the first time and asks what it is. Soon the elevator opens and the bully tries to warn his comrades that their guest was awakened and orders them to fly at him altogether. Without having time to say more, he is mercilessly knocked out. And a crowd of robbers pounces on a black-haired guy in a hood, but he is not afraid of this. The light blinks in the room again and striking the first blow, instead of the boy, he strikes his shadow. The monster himself was already behind the poor guy, after which he strikes a powerful blow. The same fate awaited the others. Soon the corridor turned red and only one king of hell remained standing in the room. After that, he approached his tied-up sister and asked if she was okay. Having untied her, he ordered her to go home, and he himself promises to come to her a little later. The nurse looked at his back in surprise and saw all the horror that had happened when the light turned on again in the corridor. The guy himself headed up the stairs, where he soon met a new pack of fleas. They looked at the impudent man and asked if it seemed to them. However, the guy said that these devils only know how to talk they are annoying. 
Soon a window breaks in the building, the phone rings in a light haze, and it is this fact that the man is annoyed, because he ordered not to disturb him while he is steaming in the sauna. But on the phone, his wards ask the boss to come to the office urgently, because they have big problems. But the tattooed man is only more angry about this. Is he really their errand dog? The wards still ask the boss to come as soon as possible, because the matter is very urgent. Having said something about the monster, the connection was cut off. Out of rage, the man crushed the red phone in his mighty hands. Meanwhile, all the corridors as one were filled with bloody bodies and the ruler of hell was standing over his next victim. The bald bandit cracked with fear and desperately asked not to approach the guy, when suddenly the wall collapsed, and a bully in a suit came out of it and grabbed the guy by the head, after which he drove the guy into the concrete. The boss was incredibly furious with the fact that some brat had trashed his office and all the staff. But the black-haired guy was now interested in something else, because if you think about it, either his mother nor Jisoo were surprised when he used his powers, apparently such types can live here without problems, he didn't notice it at all while he was getting used to the world. In the end, black hands reached out to the big man, and he jumped back in surprise, noticing that the kid was very clever. Then Han Dae Song decides to find out, this man in front of him is also something like awakened, but the proud villain declares that it's too late to regret it, because now he's going to send a young boy to hell. But these words only angered the black-haired man, the bully strained all his muscles and his things were torn into small shreds. But this did not surprise the boy in the hood and hitting only once, he sent the proud man into free flight. Soon he was imprinted into the wall. The boss of such a large group could not accept such a quick defeat, but he angered Han Daesong in vain, and he began to ask the impudent man in a peculiar way, but does he know something about hell? His family suffered a lot during his absence and the man is clearly guilty of this. With tears in his eyes, the big guy asks to stop the young man and save his life. In return, he offers money, everything he has. Then the kid asks where they are. And the bully points with his finger that the money is in that office, namely in the safe. After a short thought, Han Daesong decides since the man himself so politely asks to take his money, it's hard to refuse. Then the beaten boss runs away from the crime scene but the remaining bald man will not go unpunished, after which a scream was heard in the building. The man in tattoos ran to his car and in anger he cursed this bald dog, and he also promised himself to kill the guy, as well as his whole family. But the king of hell forgot something, namely, he would ask the code from the safe, from the dog of the fake. After that, the man took the shadow in his arms and a scream was heard in the car. As a result, Han Daesong received more than 500 million won. Now he can afford several luxury apartments in Seoul. Soon the black-haired man decided to go to the store. There he was presented with a new model of a folding phone, which costs about 3 million won. Also the guy is interested in a pink phone and they hurry to tell him about this new model for girls. It also costs about 2 million won. The seller, seeing that the client is a little doubtful, offers to take the phone in installments. But he demands that both be folded. The bespectacled one was shocked because today he collected a huge jackpot. Soon Han Daesong returned home and put a bag of gifts on the table, after which his mother knocked on the door and called him to eat, but he says that he needs to move away and after opening the door, the mother does not watch her son. Evening City, an old friend is already waiting for Han Daesong at the table, seeing him he is very surprised, because the guy has changed a lot. Soon they continue to have a cultural rest over food and an old friend asks the black-haired man if he has decided what he will do after recovery. However, finishing his glass, he replies that he hasn't thought about it yet. But Chan Ho warns his friend that now they are no longer stupid schoolchildren, but the black-haired one does not listen to his interlocutor, and is crazy about delicious booze. After another drink, he asks Jang Ho how many floors he can buy in a house for 500 million, the same answer is that if the guy has that kind of money, he can find an apartment somewhere outside Seoul. The black-haired man is surprised and then decides to find out how much the apartments themselves cost in Seoul, and his friend in a jacket announces that somewhere around two billion. Hearing this news, Dae Song lowers his head, but Jang Ho tries to cheer up his friend, the world has changed for a long time while he was out. And then the guy tries to raise a sensitive topic, namely, he heard from Desen's mom that he woke up, he wants to know is it true? However, he does not know what to answer, because he will be able to say when he finds out what awakening is. Then the friend realizes all this pun, because the black-haired one could not have found out about the awakened ones since he was out. At the same time, Chang Ho went outside to smoke and began to tell that after the guy lost consciousness, 
various portals began to appear in this world after a while. At first, the authorities ordered to investigate this unusual phenomenon, but soon at one point these strange portals began to crack and unusual monsters began to appear from there. Soon they began to attack people, even the strongest weapons did not take them. So people realized that these creatures were not affected by human weapons, and the number of victims was increasing. At this point, the black-haired man interrupts his friend and clarifies that nothing works at all for monsters. No guns, nothing? The smoker confirms that none of the weapons they are used to does not work on monsters. During these incidents, they realized one thing, namely that only the aura weapon acts on monsters, namely weapons made from the biomaterial of the monsters themselves. And such weapons can only be used by the awakened. Such as the black-haired one himself. At this point a smoking friend pointed at Day Song. Soon the kid pulls out his red-hot phone in order to show off to a friend, but he announced that this is far from a new model, and also that this phone can be found for a song at all. Chang Ho was surprised did his old friend spend money on this stuff. Well, it doesn't matter. Another important feature of the Awakened is that they can strengthen their body thanks to aura control, even without using weapons. And the fact that the guy recovered so quickly, and they also say that he beat up the goons recently, gives the feeling that the boy is one of the Awakened ones. But he turns his head and decides to find out if they give money at least if they become awakened? But Jang Ho is disappointed in his friend at the end. He seriously doesn't even know that. At this moment, a shelf forms in space and a red portal opens from which a crowd of monsters breaks out. The street was filled with monsters. Frightened people could not even stir. But soon the leader of the monsters gives a signal to his subordinates. And they begin to attack. At the same time, people began to scatter in different directions. The worried Chang Ho does not understand why the portal would open right now. The ruler of hell himself notices that these freaks are different from those he met in hell. After that, he kicks the tile, breaking it and takes out the first stone he finds, after which he decides to compete with monsters and throws a piece of tile at the monster with a swing. But it had no effect, it felt like a barrier was erected around the monster. But such an act only angered the monster. Chang Ho once again hurries to explain to his friend that such things will not work on them. But the black-haired man has already realized this himself. Soon, a furious monster is heading to a couple of friends and swings his baton to finish off two standing idiots. Chan Ho squeezed his eyes and covered his head with his hand. Now he has to wait for his death. But soon blood gushed out on him and opening his eyes, he saw how Dae Song coped with a terrifying monster with his bare hands and this plunged him into a stupor. Because this can't be. Soon another bunch of monsters headed for the king of hell. But they also failed. In a split second the monsters were deprived of their heads. Chan Ho could only stay and watch on the sidelines. Did his friend become an awakened above B class? Soon he comes to his senses and realizes that there is no time for these reflections now. Soon ordinary citizens were surrounded by bloodthirsty monsters. But Chan Ho tries to take control of the frightened crowd and advises citizens to follow him because he knows a safe way. However, the monster jumped in front of the people and thereby blocked the way for retreat. Now the people did not know what to do and panic reigned around. The helpless people were attacked by true monsters and in the face of death, the tearful baby was calling her mother for all her strength. The green thug strikes, but the guy manages to save the defenseless girl. After that, a black-haired man appears and breaks the monster's skull. Chan Ho is very happy about the appearance of his friend, because he is in time. After exchanging a couple of words, Desen recommends that the guy leave this dangerous place together with people. Everything that was happening on the evening street was filmed by the owner of the butcher shop on the phone. The audience was delighted with this live broadcast, because an unknown school bar loan dealt with terrible monsters. Under the ardent messages of his subscribers, the operator comments on what is happening in every possible way and at the moment the guy is in a dangerous situation, because he is surrounded by a crowd of angry monsters. A concerned store employee shouts to the black-haired man trying to warn him about the danger but it's too late the boy is overtaken by a serious blow, and he flies into the nearest car. Watching this show, the audience is disappointed. Is their main character dead? At this time, the citizens under the leadership of Chang Hyun went down into the sewer and are heading through the tunnel to a safe place. There, the terrified baby reunites with her mother. The wounded guy in the suit is happy because everything is fine. However, Jang Hyun is asked if he will come back to help his friend and he wonders. At the same time, a monster approaches the weakened black-haired boy. The store employee continues to broadcast live from a hot spot. But the situation is tense, and he and the audience are worried about the fate of the youngster. 
and now a terrible monster swings in order to finish off its victim. The operator closes his eyes, because he cannot look at such terrifying things. At this moment, a fatal blow is heard, but instead of paving the boy's head, the monster broke a harmless car. The youngster himself at this time was killing relatives of a creepy monster behind his back. The operator rejoices, because the black-haired hero survived and despite his injuries, he fights as if nothing had happened, but for the ruler of hell this is just a warm-up. Now he's going to kill them all in turn painlessly. At this time, the comments of the stream were filled with requests that the fight be filmed closer, but the employee is not going to die because of the live broadcast. At the same time, he receives a donation from the viewer in the amount of 5 million won, and in the message the subscriber said that he would throw off another 5 million if the operator took off closer. This huge sum hit the kid in the head, but despite the money, he does not know how to get closer safely. At this moment, Han Dae Song blows off the head of another monster with his bare hands. Soon, the guy in the apron began to receive more and more donations with the request to remove the face of the young hero or to find out his personal information. If the operator succeeds in at least one of these points, then they promise to fill him with donations. But despite numerous donations, the guy resists and refuses to risk his life. At this moment, 20 million comes to him with the same request and inspires the youngster very much. In one of the skyscrapers there is a live broadcast of this stream. Influential people are watching him and they persistently decided to take the guy under their wing and therefore tried to get any information about him. And while they are trying to stir up the operator to show the guy's face, their people have already been sent to the scene. The black-haired man crushed the head of another monster, and now the freaks finally experience fear. But the leader of the monsters splits the skull of a pathetic coward, thus showing that this will be the case with everyone who retreats. At that moment, the cameraman had already gotten closer and hid behind the first car and continued filming. However, suddenly he was scared by Chan Ho called from the side. Because of such a surprise, the boy dropped the camera with the microphone from his hands. At this moment, the audience began to pray for his deceased soul, because they did not know what had happened. But now it's not up to that. The man in the suit is trying to take the madman to a safe place. But he was reaching for his lost phone with all his might and soon, he began to pay for his money. At this moment, one of the monsters turns out to be in front of the guys. He breaks the electronics and makes himself felt but the guy in the apron has already started a panic attack. Chan Ho is trying his best to bring them to their senses, but to no avail, and now a deadly threat is hanging over them, but the monster suddenly loses its head and falls to the ground, they were saved again by a black-haired boy. Temporarily hiding in the store, Desen asks why his friend returned, but he justifies his act by saying that he was worried. Well, anyway, it doesn't matter, the king of hell asks the kid to stay alive, and now he needs to go somewhere. Chan Ho says that it will not be difficult, because the clans should arrive at the scene of the tragedy soon. De Song asks again about the clans, but the friend promises to explain everything to him after he returns. After that, the ruler of hell calls the system and opens a portal to the pantheon. Chan Ho himself, opening his mouth, follows his friend with his eyes. He asks himself the question, who did De Song become if he is able to open such portals? Han De Song enters an open portal and complains of pain in his body which is strange because he only knocked over a couple of small fry. At the same time, he demands from the system to show how much magical powers he has left from the previous body. A screen appeared in front of him at the same moment and announced to the impudent man that he had only 10% of the magical powers left from the original. Then everything becomes clear. It wasn't about the weapon at all. He needs to quickly return to full form and with these thoughts he demands from the system the fastest way to raise the level of magical powers. At the same time, the system asks the kid to systematize his diary, and then he will know the time and place of various tasks. And after their fulfillment, he will receive awards. The Lord of Hell does not immediately understand what the hell the diary is. Is this really the diary he wrote every day in hell? He wrote it so as not to go completely crazy in that damned place. The system again offers to systematize the diary and Destin agrees without a second's hesitation. At the same time a red-bound notebook appears in front of him. The system begins to systematize the manuscripts and at the same time a demonic force breaks out of the diary and launching the seal before the eyes of the youngster, the past days fly by. After that, the diary lights up and the system announces the completion of printing. At the same time Desen wants to immediately proceed to obtaining magical power and proceeds to the eleventh page in the manuscript, titled In the Forest at the Predator. The system accepted the request and the pantheon began to change instantly. 
Meanwhile, the guys left in the store climb the stairs and the greedy operator realizes that the guy in the suit is a friend of that Kurt youngster. He decides to ask where his friend has gone. Chan Ho immediately understood what was going on and, looking at the survivor with a judgmental look, asked if he had been offered money for revealing his identity. The impudent man could not even answer this. When suddenly a strange sound was heard on the landing, after that Chan Ho ordered the boy to go ahead and keep quiet, because there could be surviving creatures on the roof. After that, the business guy received a notification. Taking out his mobile phone, he saw a message from the leader of the clan Seoul. The main one's name is Huang Junyan. He reports that those responsible for the evacuation are late, referring to the fact that it's the weekend, which is why Jang Ho should also leave there as soon as possible. After reading this sad news, the guy mentally asks Desen to come back soon. Desen himself was in the Pantheon at that time. The system notified him that the Predator's Forest, recorded on the 16th page of the diary, was restored, but three-dimensional seals prevent reproducing the picture. Near the youngster, a window was lit notifying about the upcoming task, namely, he will have to destroy the celestial being who captured the predator's forest, the time to complete is one hour, and as a reward he will receive 30% of magical powers. The celestial being discovered the interventionist, and was going to destroy him immediately by firing a powerful laser from his eye. The black-haired man easily dodged such a predictable attack, after which he turned around and a celestial resident appeared in front of his face. The creature makes its second attack and, having missed, digs its hand into the ground, but Dae Song does not have time to catch up and he is going to finish with the monster quickly. He deals a crushing blow to the creature, after which his face cracks and he falls to the ground with a crash. The Lord of Hell successfully lands on the surface, but it's not over yet. The monster lengthens his fingers and continues to step on the kid, but it starts to bother him, and he is going to overcome this obstacle. And having rounded these steel bars, he delivers a fatal blow to the torso of the monster, from which he falls apart. This bug is not enough for him, and he is going to continue further, but turning around, he notices a completely whole red core, and this promises big trouble. But more on that a little later, at this time the events continue in the butcher shop. Chang Ho carefully looks out of the door, and when they go out on the roof, they see corpses, it's terrible, but there's no way to help them. After examining the surface more carefully, they notice a man who has survived, but he is also in a very sad state. The guys immediately run up to him and Chan Ho tries to reach the victim, but he is in a state of shock and mutters some incomprehensible words. At the same time the guy in the suit asks what the man wanted to say and from his bloody mouth one word was heard run. At that moment, terror permeated Chan Ho's body and a huge monster appeared before him, thirsting for fresh blood. But the operator did not notice anything like that and suggests moving the victim to a safe place faster but the wary Chan Ho says it's too late, and also asks the boy not to move without a voice command. But the careless guy does not understand what is the matter and turning his head another ninety degrees, he abruptly began to realize his situation, because there is a terrifying monster above them. The guy in the suit is trying to reach the store employee, because if he does not come to his senses, they will quickly die here, so the youngster should quickly run to the door on command. At this moment, the monster begins to scream furiously and jumps on the survivors. At the same time Chan Ho gives a voice command. At this time the forest of the predator. A strange energy emanated from the mysterious red ball and the black-haired man did not understand what kind of crap it was. At the same time, the core announced the beginning of rebirth and the remnants of the restoring monster took off. Desen immediately rushed to the ball and struck it with a powerful blow, but it did not have any effect. Therefore, the ruler of hell jumped on the old object and began to destroy it with all his might. Soon small cracks appeared on the core, but despite this, the rebirth of the celestial dweller continued. Day Sun was making punches without stopping and the ball began to disperse at the seams. But this is already pretty tired of the kid and he was going to finish it with a final blow. But swinging his arm was shot with a laser and turning around he saw more of the same creatures. Suddenly, they bowed their heads, after which they launched a massive attack on the boy who took off from the spot into the air, thereby grandly dodging the withering attack. After landing, his deeds were terrible, because the percentage of the monster's rebirth reached 95%. Then the angry kid quickly rushed to the core and punched through it. The light from the shattering core illuminated the monsters, Desen flew back to earth and even though he defeated one monster, but this way he could not finish this fight, so he had to find another way out of this situation. After a short thought, he decides to try to look for the answer in his memory. Clutching his head, 
he realizes that his head is a complete mess and it's terribly unpleasant. But suddenly he remembered and now he knows how to destroy these bugs. At this time, the guys are running with all their strength to the door, and the monster in the air is ready to deliver a crushing blow. Landing he makes a huge crack in the concrete, but he missed his main goal and realizing this, he rushed after the guys in a rage. But they already managed to run into the building and the monster with his huge the hand is not able to reach them. They narrowly escape their deaths. The monster pulls his huge hand out of the doorway, leaving a mark on the floor. Having calmed down, Chang Ho suggests going down. At this time, Dae Song jumps from the heavenly inhabitants and dodges their attacks in every possible way, just a little more turning around and he will be able to do what he has planned. The guy jumps away from the fog and running away at a sufficient distance from his pursuers realizes that he has reached the right point. Meanwhile the heavenly inhabitants have already got to the right distance and have started their attack again. But it's too late, and Destin politely says goodbye to the heavenly creatures, because they are in the forest with the predator. At this moment, a huge monster bursts out of the ground and swallows these monsters in a moment. The boy is surprised that the swamp whale still has the same appetite, and now these creatures will not be reborn, because this whale will digest anything. The system lights up and congratulates on the successful completion of the task, as well as warns about Han Daesong's physical reboot. Now he notices that he has really become stronger and he is also given a bonus for completing the mission, namely the judge's dagger. This is quite a nice gift for a youngster, the description of the dagger says that it can be controlled at a distance of a hundred meters. And also, the stronger the owner, the stronger the weapon becomes. The black-haired man decides to use this wonderful ability for testing and throwing the dagger flew a short distance, and returned it back. Now he has to go back, he opens the portal and calmly returns to earth. At the moment, the news is broadcasting about the recent opening of the gate near Nangikdan. The area has become chaotic. The professor criticizes the association of hunters, because the affected area is under their jurisdiction. A man does not understand how people can trust people who are slow with such catastrophes. Besides, they allow themselves a weekend in such a difficult hour. Portals in this world are opened periodically, which means that hunters should be on the alert on any weekend or holiday, and this case should show all their irresponsibility. At this time, a white car is driving along the road and an irritated man is watching this broadcast and criticizing him in every possible way, because hunters from the association cannot receive as much as members of clans. In addition, he claims that he is not a clairvoyant and cannot know about the appearance of the next gate, even with the help of special equipment. The boss is trying to calm down his ward, because he, as a leader, will definitely be fired if they fail. Suddenly, an urgent announcement is made from the same broadcast. They received information that a dubious hunter with injuries appeared in the area. This news surprises the guys who are rushing by car to the danger zone. At this time, the operator asks the senior about whether there is no way to get out of here. After all, there are a lot of corpses on the roof. Besides, a creepy monster is wandering nearby. But Chan Ho is also depressed. They have no other choice but to wait for rescuers. At this moment, a lot of noise is heard on the street. The guys do not know what to expect, they are worried about the thought is it really hunters. A powerful explosion is heard in the store, the frightened guys hid behind the table, apparently they are monsters. Raising their heads, they saw an angry Daesun, who had killed another monster, because he was terribly hungry. Chan Ho is surprised how his friend ended up here. But Desun kept silent and in response he wrinkled up a lot. At the same time the guy in the suit asked if the black-haired man had been wounded. But even on this... Dessen kept silent and turned to the store employee with a request. He demands that he turn on the fire and fry some meat, because the guy is so hungry that he is ready to eat an elephant. The guys were surprised by such a strange request. Is he really going to eat quietly in such a place? Soon, Daesong picks up a fried piece of meat with the monster's blood and begins to eat. In response to this sight, those present began to vomit. Soon a man in uniform came to the door of the store and asked if the survivors were okay. The former operator enthusiastically jumps up from his seat. He is insanely happy because they are saved and will live. Running up to the military man, the worker thanks him with all his might. But the guy in uniform himself pays attention to the black-haired man who is quietly eating on the sidelines. But then Jang Ho jumps out, who salutes and thanks the military for the work done in such a deep night, and also hurries to explain that the guy at the table is slightly out of his mind and behaves like that because of shock. Daesong doesn't understand what's going on, 
but Jang Ho continues to prevent him from eating and for some reason began to carry all sorts of nonsense about the fact that the black-haired man should be shown to a doctor. To which the soldier replied that the survivors are not allowed to leave the place of the incident yet. At the same time the guy in the suit pulls out an ID card from his pocket, which says that he is the head of the first team from the Soul Clan. At the same time, the soldier awkwardly scratched his head. He did not expect to see his colleague here and offered to take them from here to a safe place. At this time, on the street, the rest of the soldiers were examining the place of the incident, and the pumped-up guy turned away from the numerous corpses and began to burp. The manager is outraged by the behavior of his employee, because now is not the time for this and orders him to check the survivors as soon as possible. After that, the guy apologizes to his boss and goes to the nearest military man, after which he asks to go inside with him, because he is a hunter from the association. Meanwhile, the leader was lost in thought, because what kind of strange hunter could do such a thing with monsters? Judging by the remains of those killed, he is stronger and tougher than monsters. At this time, two friends took a look at the places of events in Chang Ho's car. The guy behind the wheel offers Dae Song to spend the night with him. However, the black-haired man immediately refuses, because his relatives will worry. But Chang Ho accuses his friend of short-sightedness, because at the moment everyone will want to catch him, so he will call his mom and warn him that he will not be home. The ruler of hell went into the apartment of his old friend. The guy takes off his business suit and sends the black-haired man to the shower first, and at this time he promises to order something to eat. Soon coming out of the shower stall, the guy observes a fully set table. He is pleasantly surprised. But why is it suddenly such generosity? In response to this, Chan Ho states that the black-haired man was interrupted when he was eating meat, so now he is eating away. De Song mentions their recent conversation. Namely that his friend said that if you become hunters, you can earn a lot of money. And Chan Ho confirms the above, because now is such a time the world needs heroes. Chan Ho wonders if his friend has decided to become a hunter? The black-haired man, chewing meat, agrees the guy is pleasantly surprised, because this is a great solution. If Desen goes to the association and shows his abilities, he will definitely get level B, and if he tries he can get level A. These words attract the attention of the ruler of hell and he wonders what kind of levels are these. In response, a friend explains to him that this is something like the ranks. If you are at level B, you can join a large clan, well, or become a member of the association. In any of the options they will pay a lot, and if you have a level, so even more. Licking his fingers, the lord of hell asks if there are higher discharges. And Chan Ho happily replies there are such people, but there are only five of them and their class is S. These are walking legends, because there are only five of their two million awakened ones. And then the friend laughs maliciously. Is Dae Song thinking of becoming the sixth? But he asks him to stop. There is no need for such ambitions, because it would be great if they took him at least to A. In Korea it is not so easy to get there. And after asking again about his friend's intentions to become a hunter, he promises to help him in this matter, after which they fight for their success. At this time, in another skyscraper at a solid table, a man is having dinner neatly and considering the biography of a mysterious guy. Then he started talking to his subordinate about the crazy debtor. With a dirty knife, he begins to poke at the report and clarify that this unknown person destroyed his entire organization and because of this, they may now find themselves in a difficult position. The head of the internet was interested in the question, why didn't the survivor escape since he was still alive? Why did you come to them and start telling them about it? The frightened bandit declares that he had nowhere else to turn. The head of the Red Horse clan notices that this is quite logical, because the bully could not go to the police. But why is he trembling so much? Is it really because of that bandit nearby? After looking at his past boss, the guy swallowed his saliva. The leader, under the name of Lee Sogu, held the poor bully by the shoulder and he tearfully asked to save his life, but the head calms him down, because he promises to take only money. But the guy can't utter a word and taking the bandit by the head, he says that no matter how they were robbed, they probably had to give up hidden savings, but the bald-headed one doesn't know. He explains that he held the lowest position in the company, so he does not know about this and prays to Soga to believe it. Then he lags behind the guy and says that he believes him. The intimidated bandit thanks him from the bottom of his heart. This is where the head of the Red Horse clan is going to finish and with these words he mercilessly kills the sitting, blood stained the whole room. And even after death, the fountain of blood continued to illuminate this room. But it didn't bother Soga. He went back to the report and examined it carefully, after which he demanded from the servants that they sort out this guy in the photo. The next day, 
the Hunters Association of Korea. Before Dae Song goes inside, Chang Ho explains to his friend that when he comes in, he should tell the employee at the entrance that he has come to receive a certificate of his awakening. After that, they will show and tell him everything, and also the guy in the suit wants the black-haired man to use a polite style of communication, otherwise he looks like a nut when he speaks informally. In response to this, Dae Song just waved his hand nonchalantly. Chan Ho once again shouted to his friend to perform there without amateur performances, and he will also go to work himself and ask to write to him when the results are known. For some reason, the guy in the suit was worried about his friend. Passing by the crowd, the ruler of hell looked around and saw a lot of smoking people who came here on a light, apparently they also came here to get a certificate. Going inside, the black-haired man thought, although Chan Ho promised that he would be able to get a lot of money here, but somehow it's too confusing. Soon he sat in a queue near the examination room, the ninth number is written in his coupon, as it turned out, he is quite a sought-after position, and looking at his uncomplicated tolicnic, he hopes that they will reach his number pretty quickly. At this moment, his attention is attracted by an incoming message, taking out his phone, he sees a notification from his mother. She asks her son when he will return home, and also tells him that her back ached today, and therefore took a day off. Han Dae Song decides not to tell his mother what he is going to do, so he decides to write what is still at a friend's house and promises to take a shower slowly and return home. Soon he receives a reply message saying that Jisoo wanted to have lunch together and therefore went for soup. After reading this message, the guy grinned and decides that he needs to come home as soon as possible. At this moment, a woman with glasses comes out of the office and announces that the next in line is number nine, so he should prepare. Meanwhile, there was a conflict in the office. An elderly man is very indignant, because they tell him that he is not awakened. He claims that he definitely felt it happen to him. In response to this, the employee apologizes, but the device did not recognize anything like this. Then the old man begins to blame this non-working piece of iron for everything that is happening. He is very outraged by the service of the association. Meanwhile, in the corridor, visitors are already beginning to get tired of this scandal, because the man is only delaying the queue but the old man continues to insist that he is awakened, because how else will they explain that he went bald in just one night? Hearing such a thing, the people did not hold back their laughter in the corridor, but Desson was already tired of waiting, because they were waiting for him at home with soup. At this moment, an elderly man announces that he will not go anywhere and will declare himself in this way, but then he is abruptly grabbed by the head and the ruler of hell tries to politely address a respected pensioner. Turning around, the old man went through nine circles of hell and his poor bald head missed it up because of the boy's twisted gaze. In response he could not say a word, but soon declares that this association has worthless equipment, because he is definitely awakened. Daesong asks the staff if this is true, and a man in a suit declares that he is awake and can check the words of an elderly man, after which he approaches the device and puts his hand to the ball, soon the ball lit up green, which means that the man has a level C as it was possible to understand the machine is working correctly. In response to what was happening, the man had no words and the assistant with a malicious grin politely asked to leave the room, while other people standing in line were ready to kill the old man with a look and going outside he shouted that the app art could be wrong and then left. The woman apologized for this incident to the black-haired man and asked him to go to his office. Going inside, the woman turned to her colleague and whispered that it seemed to her that this client would have a fairly high level but he did not take her word seriously and hitting her on the forehead, told her to continue working and not to build eyes. But still one thought did not give her peace of mind, because the guy caused a feeling of fear and if he is awakened, then his level should be exactly above level B. Association of Hunters, Office of the Head of the Branch. The main one is called by phone and asked to urgently go down to the sixth floor to the third ward, but the man does not understand why this is necessary and asks what happened but they don't give him a clear answer and say that he should see it with his own eyes. The man gets into the elevator and wonders if someone of the S level has appeared, but he calms himself with the thought that this is impossible. The gentleman in the suit calms himself with the thought that most likely someone from the visitors is brawling again. But going down to the sixth floor, the man sees a strange picture. The corridor is packed with a crowd of people. There has never been such a thing here before. The head tries to squeeze through and sees an extraordinary sight. The force measuring device was broken. He does not understand what happened. Soon one of his subordinates approaches him and explains the essence of the situation, namely, the black-haired guy put his hand on the device and then for the first time he started flashing different colors, 
soon the ball cracked and an explosion occurred. After opening the door of the room, smoke streamed out of it, and the boy stared out his eyes and stood motionless. Soon one of the workers ran up to him and clarified Dessen's well-being, but he was only covered in sweat and was silent. The manager listened to the situation and suggested that the whole thing was a malfunction of the device, but the employee corrects the boss, because all three could not be faulty. At the moment, the ruler of hell is concerned with only one question, will they demand monetary compensation from him? Soon he decides to clarify with the staff what he should do next, but the distracted manager is in no hurry to announce them, because there is nothing to announce, and it is impossible to allow him to continue testing on machines, they will only break more devices. At the same time, he came up with a great idea and offers Dessen an alternative testing option, since this is the first time they are faced with such a problem, the border guards will conduct testing. The black-haired guy asks again, at the same time they rush to explain to him, at those moments when the device cannot decide, the judge conducts a licensing test and based on the results of this test, they identify the level of the hunter. At the same time, the ruler of hell clarifies whether this test will be honest and then he is told that the assessment will take place according to the established criteria and you don't have to worry about this. At the same time, he has no choice and he agrees to such conditions, after which he says goodbye and leaves. The guy was followed by a glance, and after his figure disappeared around the corner, the assistant turns to the head. She clarifies the information known to her, namely, is it true that the crystal ball reacts to foreign energy in the body of the awakened one? The head confirms the girl's words and then she assumes out loud, is it possible that Han Dae Song's energy has exceeded the scale that the ball can withstand, because it is possible that it was because of this that the ball exploded? But in response to these tales, the guy just laughed, thereby defacing a colleague and the head of the same opinion, because it is impossible that this simpleton was above the S level. But the girl insists on her own and declares that there may be such a possibility, but the red-haired man again bullies the assistant and advises her to at least think before saying such nonsense, because this kid can't be a god. Soon the black-haired man calls up with Chang Ho and his friend can't wait to find out the result, but Dae Song quickly disappoints the guy and declares that the result is not yet known and now he has to go to the border guards. The friend is surprised and does not understand what it is about, did the device fail? But the black-haired man interrupts Chang Ho and says that the car broke down. At the same time, the excited one asks again, did the kid put his hand on the device as ordered and the device broke down? Daesun confirms the words of a friend and he declares that the black-haired man is full of surprises and he is sure that the boy will get a high level as soon as he passes the test. However, the ruler of hell does not care anymore. At the same time Daesun wants to have a good time with him and also promises to inform him about the date of the test, as well as all the information about him. The black-haired man does not listen to the message and hangs up, after which he stops and turns his head. There is a glare on one of the houses under construction, namely a sniper rifle. The girl in the hood examines the victim and does not notice anything outstanding about him, but it does not matter no matter what power he has, one shot will solve everything. The sniper is preparing to pull the trigger, when suddenly the guy looked right into the front sight. The woman is overtaken by panic, did the kid figure her out, however, she calms herself with the thought that this is impossible, she has never been revealed yet and what can we say about the weakling? With these thoughts she starts aiming again, and the guy showed her the place, as if saying aim here. The girl shudders, she does not understand what is going on here and how they managed to reveal her, as well as how the guy hears her voice from such a distance. To begin with, she decides to hide, but abruptly a creepy voice jumps through her head ordering her to shoot and then, frightened, she releases a cartridge that flies straight at the target, but the boy continued to stand motionless. There was a powerful explosion and dense smoke enveloped the street. The smug girl is sure that she hit exactly the target, but soon after looking at the sight she could not believe her eyes, the guy was completely unharmed, but it could not be, because this damage was not ordinary, but was an aura bullet. The mercenary was at a loss, she could not even imagine the existence of such a monster, but soon she realizes that she has lost her cool and first she should escape from the scene of the crime. The girl throws a sniper rifle and hurries to escape but the judge's dagger digs into her shin and the woman falls to the ground. Soon, an enraged ruler of hell appeared out of nowhere behind her. The girl was mumbling in pain, but the boy at that time advised her to aim better, but even so she would not have killed him. At the same time, the girl takes out a hidden pistol and points it at the black-haired man, 
after which she asks where he came from such that he is even able to stand after the aura weapon, to which the boy declares that he is Han Dae Song returned from hell. But the girl refuses to listen to this nonsense and starts shooting at the monster. She releases both of them into him with the words die. Soon she runs out of ammo, but she is still strained and not sure if the target has died. But the malevolent speech of the boy says the opposite. He is more alive than all the living. The mercenary cannot understand what is the matter. She clearly saw him fall, but instead of a lifeless body in the smoke there is a dissipated shadow. Desson grabs the unknown by the throat and forcefully presses her against the concrete column, and soon demonic laughing creatures begin to embrace her. From what she sees, the girl faints and foam begins to come out of her mouth. Song is surprised that he didn't even need to use poison. The woman leaned back herself. Soon he begins to clean up the crime scene and this is a minus of this world, because in hell it didn't care who killed whom, and here it's a whole problem. In the process of stripping, he notices a guitar case and in it he observes his biography, as well as photos of himself and most importantly his relatives. The kid takes one of the cartridges, then throws it at the girl. After that, she opens her eyes and is horrified, because her body is captured by demonic shadows. But the guy calms the girl, because she may die soon. She will be killed if she does not answer his questions, and if she talks nonsense, she will face the same fate. Directing the next cartridge case at her, the ruler of hell asks his first question, namely, he wants to know who sent her. The girl understands that she cannot mention a word about the Red Horse clan, and soon she remembers about the person who has long been listed as a pro-hero. The mercenary pronounces the name Kim Sung-hyun and says that this is the name of the bully that the kid recently robbed. The black-haired man remembers something about it, and the girl realized that she was able to turn the conversation to the channel she needed, decided to pull time and get out of the shackles at the right moment. Now the girl offers to tell the guy where the bully is in exchange for freedom, but at the same moment Desson snaps his fingers and a bullet pierces the girl's shoulder, after which the construction site is filled with a piercing scream. The mercenary pretends to be innocent and does not understand why the guy did this. In response, Desson says that the woman is too kind for such a profession and if she continues to carry such a feeling, there will be no more warnings. Then the black-haired man repeats his question again, but the girl does not even know what to answer. She has already failed her task and even if she gets out of here alive, death is still waiting for her. Because this psycho from the Red Horse clan will definitely kill her, so wherever she goes, the result for her will be the same and if then she decided to act decisively. She grabbed her heart and decided to leave with pride and take the guy with her, but the guy without hesitation tears off her hand. Only she will die here. Half of what the bloody corpse falls to the ground, the guy is disappointed because he did not understand who sent her, and now he needs to clean up the corpse. He did not want to resort to using this ability, but apparently he has no other way out. With these thoughts he uses the skill of reading a diary. The keyword of the search is the memory of the deceased. Soon he found the information he needed and decided to go to the Pantheon. The construction site remained empty, and the corpse was securely hidden by a blue cloth from under which a hand could be seen. Upon entering the site, the system greets Desson and asks what date he would like to visit to which he replies that he needs a 134th page in which it is written about the imprisonment of the soul. This is the main royal weapon, along with the demon king, one of the fifteen main forces of hell. An artifact that connects the owner with the deceased through blood. Initially, he thought that with the help of soul imprisonment, he would be able to fight more comfortably. But he never needed it, because he did not find a suitable opponent in strength to fight with all his might. But this time the situation on Zimla is different and this time, he uses it properly. The guy is transferred to the 134th day of the page to a place called the River of Ghosts. On the other side of this cursed river is the territory of the king. There used to be a boat in this place, and he could safely cross this river. But now there are no boats, or trees here. And to touch this water even for a little bit, means to destroy it with the dead. At this moment, the system is highlighted again. It consists in the destruction of celestial beings capturing the ghost river. The time to complete is 30 minutes. Soon the guy is discovered by flying creatures. He sees such creatures for the first time and the system warns that this is a mechanical structure of celestial inhabitants that acts independently. Soon the spiders fall to the ground and begin their attack. The kid dodges the purple projectile and it hits the stone bliga, and soon completely melts it. Daesun hopes that he will be given at least a boat for the victory of these bugs, after which he takes out his enchanted dagger and starts the fight. He rushes at the spider and calmly cuts it lengthwise and across. 
he is attacked by a crowd of poisonous creatures and spit on him with poisonous bullets. But he does not need to dodge this. None of the attacks reach the target. The barrier worked as it should. But the ruler of hell is too stupid to deal with them alone. And then he decides to finish them off at once. The guy rushes at the cock-footed and in a moment deals with the crowd and pierces the purple sphere. Soon, he completed this mission and also raised his level and the level of the soul's reality. After that, he is given a reward, and the name of it is the patronage of poisonous insects, it reduces the injuries of the owner and carries immunity from the dead, the system offers him to use this item, but warns that after the second use it is possible to use only with support. But Dae Song has no other choice, because the rivers have to be crossed somehow, so he puts on golden armor and swims across the deadly waters. The system reports that the residents of the Pantheon are surprised by Han Dae Song's swimming skills, and they also sincerely regret that they can help in any way. The Land of the King Having come to this side, he notices nothing but emptiness, the king's fortress has also disappeared. Then at this moment comes another impotent message from the inhabitants of the Pantheon, they are also upset by the fact that the fortress has disappeared. Soon he sets foot on the lifeless earth and suddenly a huge obelisk bursts out of it and his name is the Heavenly Obelisk. The system reports that this building is designed by celestial beings and lined with stones, serves as a concentration camp for capturing the ghosts of the dead. After examining the unusual building, the ruler of hell assumes that his next task will begin there, and it is. A screen appears in front of the guy's warning about the high level of complexity of this mission, the goal is the destruction of celestial beings and the time to complete two hours. As a reward, he will be given expansion runes as well as the realization of the soul will reach 100%. At this moment, a warrior in armor appears in front of him, namely the commander of diseases. Previously, he would have been a serious opponent, but when he was in his usual state, they didn't even stand close to him. The ruler of hell shouted at the pathetic idiots and released a fraction of his energy, as the warriors immediately doubted their abilities, but this did not stop their advance. But Desen easily demolished their heads, Apparently the monsters had no base, and for some reason the black-haired one assumes that all this is because of this obelisk. At the same time, the black-haired man decides to use the blood naturalization ability. This skill consumes health points when used and increases the attack power of all states and skills by 300%. The kid rushes at the army of enemies at all times and cuts them out in droves. Soon he strikes a crushing blow and throws back another crowd and thereby kills 130 creatures in total. The system notifies him about this. But this is only the edge of the iceberg. Without thinking twice, he decides that it will be more profitable to attack from the inside, and then he rushes to the entrance to the building and cleans it completely in a moment. Multiple explosions rang out from the building and monsters disappeared around the area, and then the bloodthirsty hero leaves the building. Now he has completed the mission and the level of soul realization has gained 100%, and he also received two runes of expansion. Two bright spheres appeared in front of him, and before using them in the future, he wants to check them. The black-haired man collects two runes and reads the information about the reward. The artifact is called the Imprisonment of the Soul. This is a unique treasure that the king had. The soul of the deceased is mixed with the blood of the owner of the artifact and falls under his control. This artifact has three small features that will allow you to see some of the memories of the object or to revive the imprisoned soul in the form of a soldier of diseases. But the boy is not satisfied with the capacity of the artifact, because he can only imprison twenty souls, well, in principle, since it was given as a reward then in the future it may come in handy. Without thinking twice, the guy activates the artifact and begins collecting, at the same time the system offers Dae Song to engrave expansion runes on the artifact, he agrees and now the number of souls contained has increased, instead of twenty, he can imprison hundreds of souls. Now that the imprisonment of souls has been successfully completed, he has achieved what he wanted and decides to leave the Pantheon, but an extraordinary sphere suddenly appears in front of him. A message from the system comes out, namely, she announces that the inhabitants of hell are shuddering from the outgoing energy of light and now the Pantheon will be careful with Han Dae Song. The guy understands that apparently the inhabitants of the Pantheon are again trying to appease him with words, but they do not wait for his generosity in return. The guy immediately collects the issued treasure and now his hand is soaked with the brightest energy of light. After this procedure, the window appears again, but it turned out to be a useless message again. Now Desen is coming back. The guy found himself at the construction site again, and after examining the room, he was worried about one corpse, where the well-hidden corpse had gone. 
Soon the guy appears on the threshold of his house. His sister has already been waiting for her brother and declares that the soup has already settled and rather calls him to the table. The news broadcasts that the disclosure of portals this time has brought great damage. At this moment the mother turns off the TV and offers to start a family meal. Dayson notes that the world has really changed a lot, because now you can see monsters running around in the news, but the mother didn't even know what to say in response to this. She apologizes for not talking about it earlier, because she was afraid that the guy might fall into a strong shock again. But the guy says that everything is fine and he is very grateful to his mother for keeping him alive in such a world. There was a tense atmosphere at the table and Dessen, in order to soften the situation, asks if his family needs anything by chance, but Gilly laughs from him, as if the guy can afford to buy something. After the meal, the black-haired man calls up with his friend and warns him that he is going to temporarily lay low, but Chang Ho does not understand the reason for this act. Is it really all because the testing will take place somewhere out of access? But the guy explains that he noticed one flea and it disappeared somewhere in the blink of an eye. He is worried about a mysteriously missing corpse. He asks his old friend to look after his family. Now he's going to force the impudence to come to the surface on their own. Meanwhile, the Red Horse clan, one of the henchmen took care of the corpse, but judging by what happened to the B-class mercenary, it becomes clear to the bandits that the boy is not so simple. And now the servant is waiting for the next instruction from his master but the head of the clan asks to leave the Najlets, because the news has reached him that the boy should appear for testing, that's where they will have a chance to deal with him. There is a guy named Jinchel in the capsule and he can't wait for this day. The professor informs the head that the vital signs of the young man are normal and asks permission to start the introduction of the serum. At the same time, the long-haired man warns the guy that it will be unbearably painful and he should grit his teeth, but he knew what he was signing up for with these words. Lee Soga gives the command to start the experiment. Soon 20% of the serum was injected, but the heart rate was still normal. However, at 55% it was clear that the scientists had exceeded the limit, but the head of the clan demands to continue, but the professor is worried that the subject may die. But the man with the scar convinces the scientist otherwise, because he would not have brought the guy here if he could die from such a trifle. Soon the percentage of serum administration reaches 90% and the man was literally turned out. Soon the value reaches 100% the experiment is completed. But the heart rate is at zero, apparently the subject died, but the supervisor interrupts the man in the bathrobe and orders him to be silent. At the same time, at this moment, the first signs of life appeared in a flask filled with water. Looking at the screen, the professor discovered a revival of vital functions. Turning around, he noticed how the guy broke through the glass and got out of the device, but now he is in anticipation of the tenth day. At the same time, the black-haired guy receives a message from Chang Ho, which says that Dae Song will be allowed to use only a shield and a weapon that the association will determine. But this should not bring problems to the ruler of hell, because it will be possible to compensate for the shortcomings of the weapon with his physical strength, but he needs to check something. Dae Song picks up a small cane and strikes himself, as he thought, the shield, unlike weapons, is not visible in the real world, so it can be used all the time. As for the weapon, he decides to change the shape of the blade into a branch in order to use it later. At the same time, a system window appears in front of him, clarifying whether the guy wants to modify the judge's dagger. Soon in his hands, instead of a cold weapon, an ordinary stick appears. After learning that such manipulations are possible, he realizes that he can get his beloved sword, and this is really an idea. Daesong is going to get his blade back. The territory of the Salt King the boy did not expect that he would have to return to this cursed place, and soon he is surrounded by a herd of extraordinary wolves. And then the black-haired man decides to use the blade in a different way. He bleeds himself and uses the imprisonment of the soul. At this moment, a huge monster appeared in front of the boy. But the ruler of hell is not afraid of a lousy dog. Han Daesong takes out the judge's dagger and decides to use it in a different way. The next moment he bleeds himself to use the imprisonment of the soul. At this time, an angry wolf in armor was already standing in front of the guy. But the guy was not confused at all. He was ready to feed this animal, and the fight began. In the next second, Daesong pierced through the belly of the demonic creature, and it soon evaporated. But the bloodshed did not end there. The judge's blade was already flying after its next victim. Soon, the Lord of Hell destroyed thirty-three warriors from the army of Orkiel after which the blade returns to the hand of its owner, and Daesun uses the call of Armiai. While the black-haired man stood motionless, 
the fang creatures were getting closer by the second, suddenly one of the wolves was grabbed by a strange hand, as if consisting of a shadow. And so it was, now the red-eyed beasts had to get together with their demonic copies, but it was an unequal battle. Seeing this eerie sight, the dogs shook in fear, but the shadow wolves only did what they came from underground. And when they all appeared on the scene, Day Song ordered them to attack. His wolves immediately rushed to their pathetic parody. At the same time, the black-haired man, enjoying the spectacle, took out a lighter and lit a cigarette. After taking one puff he choked. After that he wondered why his friend Chang Ho was putting such rubbish in his mouth. At that moment, the red-eyed dog cut the shadow with his mighty paw, but for the shadow, such an attack is a mere trifle. At the same time, the armored wolf knocked down his dark copy and trampled it properly, but Dae Song would not advise underestimating these copies. At that moment, a mad wolf was rushing towards him, but the residual shadow immediately grabbed the creature behind its back. The summoned wolves will be reborn until the stigma is removed from their body. After this phrase, the white-haired dog was pulled back and soon he felt a gentle breath near his neck. Summon beings who are not afraid of death, this is the strongest army on the battlefield. Despite the crushing victory over the wolves, the guy collected only twelve dust stones out of one thousand. The ruler of hell understands that if everything goes on like this, it will take him too much time, and since the level of implementation for this task is only fifty percent, then another one will follow. Realizing this, the guy pushed off from the earth's surface and soared into the air like a rocket, although Day Sun is lazy, but it doesn't cost him anything to kill some bunch of animals in two hours. At this time, the guy was at an impressive distance from the earth. Soon he chose the perfect place to deliver a crushing blow, and rushed there like a burning asteroid. These poor creatures didn't even know what was waiting for them. During the fierce battle, one of Orkiel's army instinctively sensed danger, but it was too late. For a second, a bright flash covered the battlefield, after which a powerful explosion occurred. At this time, in the Soul Clan, a snow-white blade bit into the body of a purple creature. It was a D-rank experimental monster. At the same moment it was gone. A notification was displayed in front of the mysterious female figure that every approved object had been destroyed. This blue-eyed girl is called Shinchon. She is from the Soul Clan. The scratch on her face disappeared on this the hunting simulation was completed. At this moment, the head with glasses turned to his boss for an assessment of this person, to which the head of the Soul Clan under the name Huang Junyan replied that the girl is not bad, but she has a problem, namely, on the battlefield she is loose. The man with glasses asks not to worry about it, because they have another ten days to thoroughly bluff this problem. A black-haired man demands to double the difficulty of training, this should be enough for them to get ahead of a psychopath. At this moment, the brown-haired leader hurries to clarify. By a psychopath does the boss mean Chong Jiknal from the Red Horse Clan? The boss was talking about him. The man is sure that if it wasn't for him, no one would have surpassed the skills of Shinchon. The guy in the jacket confirms the words of his master, reminding that Shinchon has category B, and Jiknal has A. However, Huang Junyan furiously declares that this is not the case. A more important role is played by what tricks the Red Horse Clan will resort to. A man with a tablet in his hands asks the owner if he really thinks that they will do something like this again, because because of that case they banned the recruitment of newcomers for a whole year. However, it is precisely because of this that the boss thinks that being shackled for a whole year, the Red Horse clan can no longer stand to do something even dirtier. Now the bespectacled man understands that this test will become an arena for two subjects, namely Shin Chon and Yung Jikno. The bearded gentleman notices that this is exactly what will happen. At this moment, Desson was already sitting on a mountain of corpses of mediocre creatures. A notification was displayed in front of the ruler of hell telling that the inhabitants of Pandemonium were amazed by the amazing skills of Han Desson, as well as these same residents with great fear expressed their respect to him, and some of the demons applauded standing. The goal was almost reached. The guy collected 999 soul stones out of a thousand. However, Han De Song did not appreciate this flattery. He prefers something more substantial. He sat quietly and smoked on the bodies of the defeated enemies, but one of the dogs was still growling. At the same time, the black-haired man took out his blade and finished the job. It was not worth making noise while the ruler of hell was smoking his cigarette. Now the system hastened to congratulate the guy on completing this task. Now his level of implementation has increased and he has also received the promised reward. Also, bluish balls slowly began to fly out from the bodies of the defeated enemies and they all rushed to their master. This is another ability of Han Dae Song, and it is called Collecting Souls. 
Now a smoking guy can collect a shower at the altar, but the blue-eyed one does not remember that there was any altar here. After that, he stretches out his hand and with the hope that the altar will not have to look for enough souls. Immediately after that, stone columns appear in front of the guy from under the ground. Apparently this time Han Daesong jumped to conclusions and did not even have to look for the altar. After that the black-haired man spat out a bull and a new task appeared before him. Namely, the task for the implementation of the subject, then Tristo is the 37th page called the Sword of Karma, the highest difficulty level. The ruler of hell will have to gather souls at the altar and prove his abilities as a guardian. The time for this task is unlimited. As a reward he will complete the realization of the Sword of Karma. The guy put the collected souls in a vessel, after which something huge soared up right in front of him. The couple coolly looked up and a huge snake appeared in front of him. Its eyes were like fire, but the ruler of hell did not care deeply about such show-offs. This serpent was the guardian of the heavenly world the serpent of Orkiel. To get the thing that the guardian lights up, Daesong needs to answer the question asked by the guardian and get his approval. The ruler of hell already held the blade in his hands. The black-haired man did not expect that he would need to answer just some question. Previously, everything was going so well and he is not happy with some sudden quiz. Looking at the great serpent again, he demands that he ask his question. Then the snake hissed absurdly that was his question. Daesong was furious was he being bullied? At the same moment, he threw his blade into the same fiery eye of the snake and she fell into agony but her emotions cannot be compared with the rage of the Lord of Hell. The guy activated his ability called Naturalization of Blood, it turns the owner into a centaur, and when used, consumes health points and increases all skills and statuses by 300%. The black-haired man made another small wave of his hand and now he grabbed the snake and the second eye. After that, Daesong grabbed his blade and rushed straight to the snake. The guy initially wanted to be nice, but apparently this Nidoskirka saw him as an easy victim. Well, now she has to see his abilities. The guy squeezed his blade with all his strength and plunged it into the head of the nasty snake, after which she screamed furiously, and soon her head exploded, and tons of blood poured out of the decapitated torso like rain. Daesun was upset because of this vile smell of blood. Turning his gaze, he saw an unusual glow from the body of the snake, and then he remembered that these snakes are tenacious as worms. Well, this is not surprising. At the same moment, Tissue began to regenerate from the body and literally a second later the head was in the same place. However, the black-haired man is not facing this for the first time and if he understood correctly, then fire is it. The snake looked at the guy and howled furiously, and poison poured from its mouth. The ruler of hell declared that this could not continue. After that he called her to him. The red-eyed snake rushed to its abuser. She opened her mouth in order to swallow Han Dae Song, but the guy held his hand and restrained the onslaught. After that, Looking into the mouth of the monster, he saw a snow-white flame, as he suspected it was the fire of rebirth. After that, the monster's mouth closed with a pop, the snake was perplexed by what was happening. Immediately, notifications from the residents of Pandemonium began to appear, they were delighted and also one of the demons even bowed his head with his eyes closed. Immediately, the snake sensed something was wrong, suddenly a bright light erupted from its mouth, and this light was Han Dae Song namely the sealed sword that he held in his hand. It was a pity for the black-haired man to waste such a treasure on a guy who didn't even have hands. The ruler of hell has received the sword of karma. At the moment the item will not be able to be used to the full, because the level of realization is only 50%, but the skills peculiar to him at number 123 are assigned to him. The guy was not entirely happy with his level of realization, but it was hard for him to believe that he was fighting someone who could not use the fire of rebirth. At this moment, the monster's mouth was open in front of the guy again, but now with this sword in his hands everything will be different, and it will be more than enough. He waved it to the sky and then made a rough movement that split the monster in two, the parts of the snake passed by the guy with the blade and only the thick of the once breathing snake remained behind him. But Destin was no longer interested in this, he read a pop-up window that congratulated him on the successful completion of the task. Now the Sword of Karma has reached 100% and the process of its implementation has been completed. Immediately, the chains that once enveloped the sword fell off the blade and released its true power. The system window warned the black-haired man that a test was sent to check his rights to the Sword of Karma. He needs to try to withstand the fire of karma for a given time. Having understood this, Han Daesong decided that he must definitely pass this test if he wants to finally master the sword, a test called Sultry Hell. 
He needs to endure the pain of burning for 240 hours. It's only 10 days. This test cannot take his life, but it can bring him excruciating pain. Grabbing the sword, his body was covered in fire. It literally melted, but he didn't have to endure this pain. His skin was already gradually disappearing, and at the same time the ruler of hell turned to his brazen blade with a question. Could he not recognize his real master? But after that the time on the timer did not change. At the same time, Han De Song changed his tone and demanded to remove the timer while he was speaking in a good way, otherwise he would take it to pieces. At the same time, surprisingly, the time on the timer disappeared and the guy deservedly passed this very difficult test. The skin gradually returned to its rightful place and the sword turned to the black-haired guy. He sincerely apologized to his master for not immediately recognizing him. At the same time, Desen said that he was not worried about this. The guy was also glad to meet them. However, he was surprised that the blade did not descend to pandemonium. Pandemonium is the dwelling place of demons, the place where souls who died in hell live is a place of endless non-existence. Before the guys, the notification windows were lit up again, notifying that the demons of pandemonium support him with tears in their eyes, and they also cordially asked him to release them. Suddenly, the sword began to tell its story, from the moment its owner disappeared, the sword only wanted to disappear. Hearing this, Han Daesong asked the blade if he would prize him. However, he hastened to say that everything is not so at all and he will gladly accept any decision of the owner. The only thing he was worried about was what happened after the black-haired man disappeared. The ruler of hell asked about what happened and then the sword continued to tell that once unidentified creatures broke through the boundaries of hell. They quietly made their way to hell because all the demons had lost their powers due to the absence of their master. As a result, the demons were defeated. Not only did the unknown seal the time and space of hell, but they also cast all the demons into pandemonium. The sword had no choice but to be swallowed by the serpent. Watching the demons suffer, he had to lead a meaningless existence because his ego was hurt. But fortunately his master freed him again. Apologizing for the audacity of the sword hurried to find out why his master had returned. However, the black-haired man briefly replied that he needed his help and he would tell about the details later. The blade sincerely regretted that his great master had a situation in which he needed his help. The black-haired man stopped the monologue of his ward and hurried to ask if he knew what it was in front of him. At the same time, looking closer, the blade stated that he also did not know what it was but he felt that a very strange energy emanated from this sphere, exactly the same as that emanated from those unidentified beings who captured hell. The blade does not know what it is, however, it confirms before anything is done, it is necessary to safely check what it is. However, the guy did not hear the exclamations of his blade, who asked not to touch this unknown thing. However, Han Daesong believes the system because it has never failed him yet, and it will be possible to check after he collects this sphere. After that, he squeezed a strange sphere and a system came out in front of him, which announced that the guy already had two keys out of three. Seeing this, the guy realized that with the help of these things he would be able to enter somewhere. Before that, he always returned to reality after completing tasks, but according to the Sword of Karma, there are still a few things that he has to get. Therefore, instead of returning to reality, he declared that he was returning to the Pantheon. At this time in the world, the video with the killing of goblins was scattered everywhere. Well. This was to be expected because it was incredible, the whole office in which Chang Ho worked talked about it. When suddenly a previously familiar leader with glasses approached him, he wanted to talk to the guy alone. The men went to the roof of the building for a smoke break, there the head of the Soul Clan remembers that Chan Ho was kind of at the scene of the incident, and asks the guy if he has something to share. However, Chan Ho himself does not even know what to answer, because if he says that he is a friend of the guy who dealt with the goblins— then he will be forced to hire Han Dae Song at any cost. At the same time, he hesitantly decides to say that if he knew anything, he would immediately report it. At the same time, the bespectacled man said that it was a pity, because they would gladly have tried to recruit him. Jang Ho decides that it would be better if he continued to pretend, he also remembered that there are seven days left before Dae Song's test. The guy, in order to avoid a minute's pause, decides to ask the bespectacled man how Shin Shon is but there was no answer. At the same time, Jang Ho is interested in how nothing happened. The man thinks a little and says that everything is fine, he's just a little worried that she may not be able to cope with such a heavy burden. Seven days before the license test. In the thick of the forest, Shinchon trains hard, 
she has ten minutes left before the end of the simulation, and she also has ten plates left to destroy. At the same moment, it will flare up and cut the slab into pieces, thereby destroying it, immediately the next and the next one arises from the ground. In one of the plates that appeared behind her was a simulation monster of rank D. As soon as he stepped on the ground, he instantly rushed to the woman. The girl was expecting his attack when suddenly she was unexpectedly bitten on the shoulder. It turns out she had to fight with two monsters. Suddenly a strange voice rang out and announced that enough was enough for today. After that, the monster's hand began to disappear. But the girl did not agree. She asked to stop. But despite her requests, the training program was completed and the forest around her evaporated. The head of the Sol Huang Junyan clan was looking at her from the window. He asked her to get up and said that they needed to talk. In the medical report, the girl says that she could continue, but the black-bearded man is interested in whether the girl is overdoing it. At the same time, she says and repeats the phrase of the boss go to your goal even if you fall off your feet. However, closing his eyes, Huang Junyan declares that he was talking about body training. At the same time, the blue-eyed girl declares that she does not overwork herself in any way, she already knows this. However, the man does not quite agree with this, because does she really know her body better than their system? Immediately on the screen on the left shows the indicators of the usual emotional state of a person, and next to it. Seeing this, Xin Chuyen lowered her gaze. Huang Junyang asks what is it? The system shows that now the danger for the girl is her depressed state. At the same time the blue-eyed one declares that she needs to enter the top five. The man is surprised by this news. Does Xin Chon really want to increase his rank? If she gets the A rank, she will have a lot of new opportunities. But Huang Junyang is not doing all this for this. Clutching a plastic bottle and gritting her teeth, she declares that she wants to kill all the monsters that live on Earth. Five days before the start of license testing. Suddenly an iron door opened. A man with a scar appeared on the threshold, whose name is Li Sogu. He calmly stomps down the corridor and again approaches the next door, after he scans his fingerprint, and another door opens in front of him. Closing his nose, he announced that he did not expect that it was possible to survive in such a place, and he also added that they should change the equipment of the insulator, especially the ventilation system. And the sparkling lamp should also be replaced with these words, he turned to his ward Jinchul but he was busy with his meal. Apparently, he lives well here and the food tastes good, he should eat more just so the properties of the drug will not bother much, and then he will be able to become the main hero of testing. Three days before the start of license testing. The level of implementation increased upon completion of the next task, and the implementation was completed. Now, the exalted Han Dae Song was ready. The sword turned to its owner with the question, are they really going back now? Wrapped in his robe, he replied that everything was exactly like that. The day of testing, the number of awakened this year has increased by 25%. It is also expected that the level of competitiveness will be increased due to the rapid increase of awakened. Members of the association report that this may change the methods of recognition starting this year. A snow-white car rushes along the road and stops in front of the building. All the reporters were waiting for this moment, because this is Lee Sogu the tip of the red horse and his ward. Soon. A reporter from SBC owed Zekel approached the guy with a scar on his face. She wonders if the person next to him is a newcomer who will represent the Red Horse clan this time. She is also interested in finding out what the man thinks about what kind of assessment their clan will receive on this test. One man from the crowd shouted out that the Red Horse clan could not participate in the testing last year because of illegal methods, so he asks to share his feelings about introducing a newcomer for the first time in two years. Li Sogu is in no hurry to answer all these annoying questions, however, he did not expect that they would rattle his nerves from the very beginning. After a little thought, he replies that he sincerely regrets the events of two years ago, but the reporter continues to put pressure on the man and declares that regretting those events is not enough. At the same time, Li Sogu takes hold of the man's shoulder and promises him that this year they will honestly pass this test, after that they silently pass on. Testing Buildings In the Corridor Chikmal declares that they should have just given up on that reporter, but the guy with the scar restrains the kid and he soon says with a smile that he was just joking. At the same time, Lee Sogu declares that having fun is good, but you shouldn't overdo it. If everything comes out, they will find themselves in a difficult situation. Behind them is a hefty man in a white outfit who is interested in why the guys may find themselves in difficulty. 
Li Xiegu turns around and greets the head of the Seoul Huang Junyan clan with a casual smile. After that, he is interested in what a man looks like. He reminds him of a gorilla undercover, to which he replies that journalists are very violent, and so he had to do something, he did not want to stand in front of the camera like some. The black-bearded man lifted his hat and looked at the red-haired youth from whom there was an unhealthy aura. Of course she was stable, there was a lot of her, but not too much. This time Lee Sogu did his best to polish everything cleanly that he didn't even find fault. The long-haired man bent over closing the youngster and says that even though the test has not started yet, but the big guy is already looking so intensely. Huang Junyan asks to understand him, because who knows if Sogu can bring an injected person again, who can harm newcomers just like two years ago, the man does not want those events to repeat this year, to which the long-haired man agrees. After this conversation, the two ask for forgiveness and continue on their way. Jinchil furiously declares that this guy looked at them so strangely, is he really a pervert? The guy with the scar understands the feelings of the youngster, but he made a mistake with the choice of the enemy, he should look straight. Jinchil walked past Shinchon, after which, looking after her, the red-haired man recognizes this girl, because she is a diligent newcomer of the Soul Clan, and he does not mind seeing what this little guy is capable of. However, Lee Sugu reminds the kid that it's not important that he became stronger after injection, it's important that that girl from the Soul Clan and that old man put a lot of effort, and the guy agrees with this. That's why he wants to smash them to smithereens all the more. Huang Jun Young watched the mad young man who represented the Red Horse Clan. He did not understand what they were going to do this time, but he reassures himself that this bridal will be able to harm his ward. When suddenly his instincts sounded the alarm, Han Dae Song was walking behind him, looking at him. The alarm sensor was simply broken, but the guy just passed by. Meanwhile, Shin Choyin tried to reach her boss, but he did not hear her and soon he was scared and told the girl to be very careful. However, she was going to be on the lookout with the Red Horse clan anyway, but Huang Junyoung wasn't talking about them, but about that sexy guy over there. At this time, Chang Ho called the black-haired man and sincerely apologized to his friend, because he wanted to personally look at this testing, but he had too many things to do. Dae Song replied that everything was fine. In the corridor, it was announced over the loudspeakers that the hunter license test would begin in 30 minutes, so everyone present is asked to gather in the third testing room after they change into equipment. Chang Ho told his friend that his event was about to start soon, and he also asked him not to stay there and also asked him to call after he finished. Han Dae Song stood in front of the vending machine, detailed instructions for use were written on it, namely, the guy needed to leave his fingerprint and get a box from the lower department. After receiving it he should change clothes. Having looked at the equipment, the ruler of hell was not very pleased. He expected something more, but in the end he took off some piece of cloth. Testing hall number three, there were many newcomers standing in front of the entrance to the hall, and one of them could not believe at all that he would participate in this testing. It can be seen that a lot of calls and the same number of letters justified themselves. He is generally shocked that the association dared to doubt his abilities. With particular anger, he remembers the ill-mannered boy who touched his head, but if he had met him, he would definitely have been in trouble. At this moment, someone firmly takes hold of the old man's skull. Turning around, the man saw an angry Jinchil who demanded that the like it go far away. At this moment, the old man thought about the essence of being and thought that it would probably be better for him to leave. Soon Han Dae Song was walking along the corridor, who still pulled on these rags, when suddenly he saw an old man he knew but now he realized with anticipation that everything was just beginning. The guys gathered in the hall, namely Shinchon, the red-haired Jinchil, and the magnificent Han Dae Song. All the guys joined the ranks. Soon the lamps in the arena were lit, and the participants were illuminated by a bright light. Many people saw such technologies for the first time. The microphone suddenly turned on, and the inspector greeted the newcomers properly. He did not waste time and went straight to the point. The man stated that this time three level portals were organized by responsible persons. In each of the portals, depending on the level, there will be different terrain and tasks. However, many newcomers first heard about such terms as three level, four level portals. One of the boys stretched his hand up and hurried to ask when they would already be given weapons. However, the man with glasses said that this time the test subjects will not be given weapons, and they are also prohibited from carrying anything other than the equipment that they are wearing. No one expected this, because how can they fight without weapons? 
Suddenly, the guys were greeted by artificial intelligence, which will help conduct the test. The topic of their test today is adaptation. They will have to find out how well the examinees will be able to reveal their adaptation skills, whether it's heat or frost. The value of a hunter is not in his equipment, but in the aura inside him this is the skill that appears due to the strength of the body. It is enough for the guys to show how well they adapt and fight. This is the end of the brief introduction. This is the beginning of the opening of the portal. After the portal was ready, the examiner ordered to enter it gradually starting from the back rows, and he also wishes everyone success. First Level Portal, Rainforest Although the test had just begun, the subjects fully appreciated the cruelty of this place. It was so stuffy and hot in the forest that some could not even breathe calmly, and if everything continues like this, they will die from the heat before the test begins. At this time, all the subjects were closely watched from the broadcast room. The brown-haired man declares that only a few will pass this time, while the black-haired one asked if the standards are too high this time, because no one will pass at this rate. However, the guy behind the equipment hastened to reassure his partner saying that this should not happen. The guys on the big screen watched, watched and enjoyed a very big soul, even the huge soul of a minion of the soul clan. At this time, the girl decides to clear her mind so as not to waste energy once again. Watching this spectacle, Huang Jun Young was very happy, he realized once again that his Shin Cho Young was talented. However, the attention in the hall quickly jumped to another participant, although his soul was not as great as that of the last participant, but he is clearly stronger. The observers stressed that this time the Red Horse clan was thoroughly prepared, because their participant inspires great hopes. At this time, Lee Sogu consoled his ego, he suspected that the old man was probably jealous. Looking at Huang Junyan, the guy with the scar noticed that it was impossible to be so surprised by this, but the man seemed dumbfounded. At this time, not a small noise arose in the observation room, because the participant at number 104 is somehow too calm. Looking at the screen, Li Sogu was shocked, he recognized this brat. There was no sweat on the black-haired boy, but no or either, many wondered if the kid had hidden his aura. But if this is really the case, then how can a test subject have a technique of this level? In fact, Han Song drank the item that fell from that lousy snake, and it's called the Guardian's Blood, this item will be valid for another 46 hours. Thanks to this subject, he will feel free regardless of the situation and the place around him, but the ruler of hell hopes that no one will notice this, otherwise he may be excluded. At this time, the rest of the test participants were looking forward to its start, otherwise they would simply die because of the unbearable heat. Suddenly, a pink bracelet lit up on the hands of the guys. Now that all the test subjects have successfully entered the portal, artificial intelligence is in a hurry to announce the first task, namely, the examinees will have to kill twenty orcs in the swamp. After the sing-along about the beginning of the task, Desson rushed forward leaving the losers behind, but the rest of the guys were not going to lose either. Soon one of the participants stumbled and fell. From exhaustion he had double vision, he already hated this jungle with all his heart when suddenly a water source appeared in front of his eyes. The guy couldn't believe his eyes because it really is water, which means that he will live. However, as soon as he touched the liquid with his hand, she grabbed him and pulled him along. It was a monster called the Velcro Worm. It lives in a swampy area and eats hunters by luring them with a substance similar to water. That's how the test subject number 94 dropped out, and emergency help was called to him. Suddenly the monster was torn apart and the defeated guy was enveloped in a protective sphere, it will protect him until the recovery team arrives. At this time, Han Dae Song continued on his way, he realized that apparently the orcs were not in this direction and ran in another direction. At this time, help arrived to the participant number 94. Suddenly one of them received a message on the sensor demanding supervision of the 104th participant under the name Han Dae Song. An unusual figure appeared behind the back of the orc with an axe but the monster instinctively sensed danger. The guy was already choosing the best way to finish off the monster. For example, it's not bad to hit him with this stone, but the orc did not appreciate it and rushed at Han Dae Song. The black-haired man expected about this, so he imperceptibly threw a stone and stood up in a stance. A huge boulder landed in front of the orc's face, after which the ruler of hell dealt a crushing blow to it, causing it to shatter into small pieces. The same stone fragment struck the monster, and wiped it off the face of the earth, and the forest itself suffered. An observer was watching everything that was happening, 
At first the man thought that the management had gone crazy when they ordered him to follow some test subject. However, now he understands that this boy definitely does not go to any comparison even with the newcomers of the largest clans. At the same time, Han De Song realized that killing these orcs one by one was not at all effective, although he did not want to use magic in the first half of the test, but apparently there was no other way. The black-haired man used the summoning of the shadow and ordered the dark servants to find the right targets. At this time, some rustling was heard in the forest. After hearing this, the orcs decided that a field mouse was started somewhere, and for them this is a good dessert. The monsters already wanted to rush to find a small animal. But the elder said that if a guy wants to eat a small animal, then he should have patience for the kala. Suddenly, the orcs felt the shaking and stones rained down on them from above. The orcs turned around and saw a hole in their den, and an unknown person appeared in front of them, and in his hand he had some kind of stick. Still, Han Desen managed to find rats that were buried underground, but the monsters were even a little uncomfortable, because the food came to them by itself. While the Lord of Hell was counting the monsters, they were discussing the mouse in front of them. Desen didn't quite understand why the guys started repeating something about a mouse. At the same time, the sword that took the form of a branch decided to explain to its owner that these lower beings took their king for bait, after that the sword waited for instructions. Han De Song took another look at these funny creatures and then ordered them to be incinerated to the ground. At this time, Shin Chon was running through the forest. She took advantage of the opening of the aura and expanded her search. Soon the radius of her view covered a large area of the forest. However, even so, she was able to detect only one orc. She instantly changed her direction and flew off her feet into a poor tree, after which an orc fell from it. The blue-eyed girl realized that if she continued to take the test at the same speed, it would take her an hour. Meanwhile, the monster jumped to its feet and tore away from the evil mouse, but Shinchon was not going to let go of her prey so easily. She swung and decided to use her fourth move, when suddenly the orc's head was blown off by someone else. The black-haired woman didn't really have time to react, but the mad Jinchil enjoyed the taste of blood. A newcomer from the Red Horse clan appeared in front of the girl. Suddenly the red-haired man decided to get his hair, and he also said that this was the fifth monster on his account. However, the girl stated with dislike that the Red Horse clan, as always, is in its repertoire to covet someone else's. However, the boy only smiled maliciously at this. He said that this was a competition, and there was no framework for yours. Did the girl have less brains than these orcs? However, Shinchon did not just keep silent, and said that the boy was good at talking in the style of his clan. At the same time, Jinchil said that apparently her clan likes to take those who have gone since last year, so the atmosphere between them has reached its peak. The blonde-haired man already wanted to kill her, but he realizes that he cannot act so early, he should wait for at least the second level. Looking at the sour face of the boy, Shinchon exhaled and walked away, when suddenly she turned around and wished the scumbag a good time alone, from this Jinchil was beside himself with rage. The kid couldn't wait for the next level so he decided to swat this fly right now. When suddenly there was a huge explosion in the forest, this event brought the blonde-haired man to his senses and forced him to stop, but he had to understand what kind of mysterious explosion it was and not only him, but also Shin Chon. At this time, the forest continued to blaze. A few minutes before, Han De Song held a twig at arm's length, the disguised sword was waiting for the order of its owner, and he no doubt wished to burn all the enemies thereby the characteristic characteristics of the Sword of Karma were activated, namely, the first skill called Rage was activated. Seeing this, the orcs were at a loss and now they shouted the word Mouse with fright, but this did not save them from imminent death. Everyone in the observation hall was shocked. The test subject number 104 successfully completed the task of the first level, thereby he moves to the next level. The observers could not believe their eyes, because such a thing is impossible, they only recently started the task and some nameless one has already completed it. Now everyone present wants to get information about the 104th issue and obliged to conclude a contract with him. Huang Junyoung expected that this kid would make a noise, but not as much, but Lee Siagu did not appreciate it and hurried to turn away from the screen. Meanwhile, the staff who personally could not evaluate the guy turned pale and the girl began to take out her anger on the guy who did not believe her words that this boy was unusual. However, the man could not do anything, he admitted his mistake and asked to stop beating him. Suddenly, a black-haired man from their company saw something terrible, 
he attracted the attention of his colleagues. A well-known old man appeared on the big screen. A grandfather with a bald spot on his head ran out onto the split battlefield that was left after Han Dae Song and picked up an axe that had fallen from the monsters. Now all he had to do was finish off the wounded orcs. The man even got into the taste, and soon he killed as many as eleven pieces. Grandfather did not regret that he went after this loser at number 104. Looking at this, the guys had no words, because this cowardly grandfather can only cheat. But it didn't matter because the topic of this test was just an adaptation, and the man coped with it perfectly. It was still difficult for the blonde guy to understand how an ordinary person who did not pass the test for the awakened got to this test. At the same time, the girl with glasses happily stated that on that day Mr. Han Dae Song broke a lot of balls. The guy interrupted the woman and decided to find out since when did Han Dae Song become a master? However, he quickly took back his words and asked to continue the story. At the same time the girl explained that rumors had spread that day that someone had broken the balls and their results were not valid. And she also heard that someone filed complaints to the society about this. Most likely because of this the old man was allowed. However, the guy in the red tie brought his colleague to reason and asked her to think before saying such a thing. Although he knows that people from above do their work superficially. Suddenly the boss intervened in their conversation and in a rude voice he apologized for superficially doing his job. The guys immediately bowed to their boss and asked what brought him here. The man said that he himself had put this elderly man on the list of participants. But the black-haired man did not understand why the boss did this. At the same time, the man said that this old man wrapped himself with bombs at night three days ago and tried to enter the portal. Hearing this, the girl was surprised to assume that the old man really decided to do such a terrible thing to himself because he could not become awakened. But the boss explained that this was not the reason. The fact is that several years ago this bald old man lost his family because of the opening of the portal, and thus the man tried to take revenge on the portals. After hearing this, the guys were in a stupor, and they had a minute of silence in the group. Soon the black-haired man made a bold statement that if the boss would give such generous indulgences for every such situation, their evaluation system would collapse. Having heard such bold words from a colleague, the guys moved away from this immortal creature and waited for punishment to befall him. However, the boss felt sorry for the kid and said that he was right and it was impossible to do that. But after the situation with the old man, the boss saw Dessen. For three months he received complaints from the pensioner when suddenly he seemed to have found a diamond. At that moment, some technical problems began to occur in the observation room. Namely, the screen began to lag heavily. In the same building, Lee Soga meets one of his subordinates and declares that now there is a complete madhouse in the observation room. A short-haired man declares that at this rate the 104th participant can quickly jump to the second and third levels. However, the chief with the scar declares that this kid does not overtake their jinchal, just their newcomer gives him a head start so far to look at the endurance of the black-haired out of interest. However, the guy can hardly believe in this handicap, because it is written on the pocket sensor that an ample of change was introduced to the monsters of the second level. At that moment, one of the emergency aid group began to carry out the order, he felt sorry for such a talented novice, but he should not have stood in the way of the red horse with these words. Apmila struck the monster. After that, the forest became restless, seeing this. Dessen assumed that apparently this was the entrance to the portal to the second level. The bloodthirsty Lee Sogu was just waiting for the moment, when this arrogant boy would accidentally die. The flying golem was hit by an ampoule with unknown contents, after which it evolved. It became a floating golem whose feature is the ability to appear out of the fog. The monster became enraged and began to spew flames from his mouth, now the mercenary's mission is completed, he should report this, and he will receive a good reward for such a feat the boy took out his communicator, and it suddenly exploded in his hands. The guy realized with horror that the smoke from the explosion contained a paralyzing poison. The mercenary dropped his weapon and started coughing uncontrollably, but as expected, he could not remain unnoticed. At this time, the ruler of hell got lost in a foggy area with a stick in his hands and his device did not really want to help him with this. Suddenly, Han Daesong stumbled upon a strange corpse. The guy suspects that this was originally intended for him, when suddenly he felt danger from behind. Cones rained down on the ruler of hell. However, he easily beat them all off with the help of his fiery sword of karma. But these projectiles were not simple and an explosion occurred in the forest. 
The guy did not expect such a trick, but he easily withstood such a flame. After seeing such a trick, Destin at first thought that it was the absorption of flame, but soon he came to a different conclusion and decided that he should use the skill he used against the orcs. However, he can't use it yet as it is being recharged and it doesn't look like this red-eyed monster will kindly wait for him. At this moment, the monster decided to launch its attack. The cones again fell towards the guy and he continued to diligently repel them, after which he rushed through. He got tired of playing with nature and decided to first break the base of the monster. The cones changed the route of their flight, but they still could not overtake the youngster. Han De Song overtook the monster and decided to strike him a direct blow, when suddenly he was thrown into the nearest tree, well, into all the rest of the blessed trees. At this time, Jinchul was butchering the last orc, so the examinee at number 14 successfully completed the task of the first level. The blonde-haired man was furious that he had spent so much time because of this type. Suddenly he felt the presence of a stranger behind his back. He caught a thrown object in the air. Inside the white box was an ampoule, a special compass and a note. After reading its contents, Jinchul burned it with his aura. Now he knew that the 104th room was still on the first level. At this time, the stone golem continued to throw cones at the ruler of hell. Dessen flew a few kilometers and got back on his feet now he decided to use the ability the ghost of shadows. He fed the summoned shadow in order to clear the way for him. Now the summoned monsters began to catch flying cones, but this was not enough and Dessen had to defend himself. Now the lord of hell will return this debt with interest. The summoned shadow absorbed the fiery fragments and then disappeared. At this time the monster growled furiously and rushed at the youngster, when suddenly his own shadow came to life and fiery cones appeared from it that were ready to explode. It was a special gift from Han Dae Song. At this time the picture began to appear quietly in the observation hall. They could again observe number 104. Although the picture was restored, however, the audience still could not make out anything on the screen because of the thick fog. They thought it was strange because the zone of the first level is a tropical level and fog should not have appeared on it. But a second later they saw a huge monster. The observers were amazed. Was this monster also included in part of the test? And it was also not clear where the inspectors were looking. The boss, seeing this, became gloomy and the blonde-haired man decided to ask if this was normal. Because no matter how you look at it, this monster is some kind of mutant. Also, the blonde man clarifies, shouldn't they stop this lawlessness? Because the boss has the right to do this as the highest defender. However, the man was in no hurry to do this. The blonde-haired man turned to him and also the second colleague said that the location of the 104th number had been determined and now inspectors were being sent there. So he also asked if they should suspend the test for the 104th. After hearing numerous requests, the boss announced that apparently he had no other choice. The girl who continued to watch the broadcast was stunned, because the black-haired man in whom no one believed was able to fight back and it's just incredible. The shadow surrounded the flying monster and began to return his bombs to him. A column of smoke appeared over the forest, and the observers had no words to characterize this event. The boss had previously thought that it was just a malfunction of the device, but now it became clear that it was impossible to determine its level. Although a man cannot appreciate the boy, but there is clearly something unimaginably strong in him. The girl saw how Han De Song dragged that mutant to earth with every second he becomes more incredible. Suddenly, a colleague approaches the blonde girl and loudly tells her that all these achievements have nothing to do with the test. Therefore, the impudent woman is sure that Zhang Jinchul from the Red Horse clan will get to the second level first. Thus, the atmosphere has heated up between the two girls, they have a black-haired man behind their back who is interested in his master whether he should recall the people they sent to the aid of the 104th number. However, the boss says that it is not worth doing this. He wants the guys to analyze the wounds and make a detailed report on this situation. At this time, Jinchul was running through the forest thicket and looking at his pocket radar. Soon he reached the approximate destination. Judging by the fact that the fog began to dissipate, he realized that everything seemed to have already been decided here. The blonde-haired man decides to get rid of his compass while no one noticed, and now he can run at full power. At this time, Han De Song was pouring his blood into the stone slush to use the soul's imprisonment. After the rite was completed, he decided to summon the commander. Now, a black fog began to appear over the forest. 
The observers looked at this performance with their mouths open, they could not even guess what this black-haired youngster was doing. Soon the defeated monster rose from hell, this event further misled the audience. The flying golem became enraged in front of Han Dae Song, but the guy didn't have time for this, so he asked the monster to bow his head in a good way. And the monster, realizing his possible fate, prostrates himself. After that, the ruler of hell stands on a pile of stones and orders her to run forward. At this time, the narcissistic Jung Jiknal has already reached the portal. He is sure that no one but him will be able to become the first in this test. At the same second, an afterimage of an unknown figure flies past the boy. The blonde youngster did not even have the opportunity to say something. Number 14 was completely stunned, and he could not understand how this jerk had done something so crazy. At this time, Lee Sugu approached the room of observers from which surprised shouts could be heard. Judging therefore the long-haired man assumed that Jinchil had already amazed the audience. However, when he entered the room, he saw the stunned face of a teenager, then the head of the Red Horse clan was greatly fascinated. A little earlier, Han Dae Song climbed on his new subordinate. Together with him he was looking for a way by which he could cut the distance. Soon he decided to clear the way and ordered his pebble to move just forward. After that the black-haired one activated the breath of the ghetto king. With this ability, the ruler of hell burned the floor of the forest, and while the monster was flying, he continued to spam with his skill. The observers were rather surprised because the 104th uses an unknown trick with a call, and he also uses techniques that no one has heard of. At first, people had doubts whether it was possible to do this at all with the help of the aura technique, but the guys decide once the kid comes out, it means it's real, in principle they have nothing to be surprised at in this fairy tale world. For the workers, this test has turned into a reality show, a little more and the guys will start betting on Han Dae Song's victory. Suddenly, there was a crash in the audience, the guys present turned around and saw Lee Soga blushing with anger. The man wanted to make a remark about the behavior of the head of the red horse, but it could become dangerous, so the bodyguard politely asked not to approach an outsider for his own good. Meanwhile, the guy with the scar pulled himself together and asked for forgiveness for his behavior explaining that he was too excited by these unthinkable abilities that were demonstrated on the screen. Huang Jun Young was quietly happy about what was happening, because Lee Soga got what he deserved. Such a weasel like him from the Red Horse could not imagine such a thing in his sleep. The head of the Soul Clan realized that Chon should also arrive at the place soon. At the same time, Jigmal was becoming more and more filled with anger, when suddenly someone's figure appeared behind him, turning around, the blonde-haired man saw Shinchon running. Gritting his teeth, the guy decided that he did not dare to lose to this dog. Meanwhile, Han Dae Song was already standing in front of the snow mountain that was on the second level. The guy was surprised by the imagination of the leaders, because at the last location he was greeted with heat, and now he has to run in the freezer. After looking at his ward, the ruler of hell declared that the pebble could be free at this stage. A previously familiar artificial intelligence appeared from the guy's wristband. He congratulates the 104th number on the fact that he is the first to reach the second level. Hearing this, the black-haired man wonders if it is possible to start the task. At the same time, artificial intelligence stated that everyone would be divided according to their strength by five people, each of whom would start from another place. And the goal of the second level is that the test takers should reach the top of the mountain. After this little excursion, Han Dae Song was wished good luck. Although the ruler of hell could not accurately determine the height, however, he is sure that this mountain is more than five kilometers. The black-haired man continued to climb up the cold rocks. It's quite a simple task, but the ruler of hell was so lazy to do it, and besides, all this time he was surrounded by annoying drones because of which he could not use his trump card. At this time, Jinchil appeared below Dae Song, looking at him, the black-haired man remembered that the awakened Class C and D earn a living working as porters. The blonde-haired man was getting more and more angry, and besides, for some reason everyone has a different starting place, he was extremely dissatisfied with this. Now, he decided not to sit back until he stopped Han Dae Song, he would not calm down. Turning around, the blonde-haired man saw a dark figure in the distance, and the guy realized in anger that it was probably the annoying Shinchon again. But this was far from the case. A half-dead old man appeared on the horizon who almost died from the local cold. After seeing this, Jinchil decided to destroy this fly first. 
the old man slapped himself in the face and decided that he should not even think about death, because he should think about his family, which has disappeared, now he is not cold at all. At the same moment, the old man falls asleep in an avalanche, the cause of which was a merciless boy. After what he had done, the blond-haired man said that this midge does not know its limit at all, so he wishes him a speedy rest. At this time, some problems occurred again in the building of the building, namely, for some reason, the signal from the flying drones, as well as from the rest of the video devices, was lost. Hearing this, Li Siege didn't even twitch, because this is just the beginning, now Zhang Jinchul doesn't dare let him down. At this time, the other participants, after hearing the explanation of their goal, decide that it will be easy, because they are the strongest. When suddenly Jinchul lands on the optimistic boy, the fat man was shocked by what he saw, but he did not have time to blink as he was firmly taken by the head. After the cameras were turned off, the blonde turned into a real monster. The scion of the Red Horse clan was shocked by the effect of the injection of the champion orc, because with its help he will be able to kill all his opponents. Meanwhile, Xin Chuyin was quietly climbing the mountain, when she suddenly discovered that the equipment had started to mess up again, but she still could not understand the reason for what was happening. The ruler of hell also noticed that a strange thing near him was out of order. He is insanely happy about it because now he will be able to move as he pleases. After that, the black-haired man lets go of the ledge he was holding on to and with a smile calls to himself the armor of a ball arc fighter. Suddenly, Xin Chuyin felt a strong surge of energy from below, when suddenly Han Dae Song flew in front of her face on wings. The girl could not even imagine that the 104th number could fly using the aura technique but she did not even guess that this was far from the aura technique. At this time, the mutated Jinchul continued to smash the faces of helpless opponents, sitting on the bald-headed bully turned around and saw the 104th number soaring to the top. The guy in a rage suggested that this scumbag was given an ampoule of a harpy, after which he rushed forward for the 104th. At this time, in the observation room, Huang Junyan demanded that the competition be interrupted, because the safety of the test subjects was always a priority, but the boss asked the gentleman in the white suit to be patient, and the man also promised that they would try to fix all the problems as soon as possible. Hearing this, Li Sogu only laughed and then said that if those who want to become a hunter cannot survive such a small incident, then will they be able to perform their duties properly. After such an audacious statement, the long-haired man turned to the gentleman responsible for the test and asked his opinion about it. The man coughed, but did not give his answer. At the same time Huang Yunghyun suggested with anger in his eyes that Li Sogu was involved in this. However, the guy with the scar didn't even try to hide it, and said that it was better to disqualify weaklings initially, and asked is a newcomer from the Soul Clan so weak? Those present did not even know what to say to this, but Huang Junyun caught fire with anger. At the same time, the insidious Li Sogu advised the man to take a break and retire. At this time, Han Dae Song reached the tip of the icy iceberg and stood in front of the next portal. Now he was ready to go to the final round. While Xin Chon was diligently climbing with a stick, the blonde mutant was climbing like a gorilla. However, we forgot about the strongest participant. The old man miraculously got out of the avalanche that befell him and sobbed, because he won a major victory for himself. He survived and this is already a victory. When suddenly the old man was pierced by cold, now he decided to go back down. Artificial intelligence announced the task of the third level. The guys should get ready for a monster raid. Moving around the field they will fight monsters for which they will be awarded points. To pass this stage they should score a thousand points. Xin Chuyin found herself in a dark cave, so first she decided that she should hold out until her eyes got used to the darkness, when suddenly she heard someone calling her name. There was a mutated Jinchul behind her, he wanted to know with great interest if the girl had seen a flying type here. Realizing that behind her, Zhang Jinchul from the Red Horse Clan, the black-haired young lady realized that the situation was not in her favor. At this moment, the angry kid noticed that the girl somehow came here before him, and this is not very good. Xinchon, after thinking a little, politely asked the guy to get out of here not to annoy her, but Jinchul was not going to let her go so easily. At that moment, the girl relaxed her vigilance and remembered the words of her master that she should be more careful with the guy number 104. Xin Chon admitted that the unknown was faster on the first two levels, 
but on the third the situation could turn around. Suddenly an error appeared on the girl's transmitter informing her that an error of the aura reactor had been noticed. The aura reactor sets and makes stronger the release of aura in an awakened person, it also activates the emergency protection function of the suit. At the moment when the girl dealt with the mistake, her torso was severely injured. S first wanted to deal with the flying bastard, but Shin Chuyin was just unlucky enough to stumble upon the bloodthirsty Jinchul. At this time, the ruler of hell had no problems burning the monsters he caught. Soon he turned to the sword and asked him to finish everything as soon as possible. The next moment, the remaining monsters turned to dust. The black-haired man noticed that it took him too much time for these losers. At that moment, he had already collected 530 points. But it was still not enough. Han Daesong looked around and decided to get rid of what was visible first. At this time, the boss was talking on the phone and was interested in when the video surveillance system would be restored. Li Sogu himself was calmly sitting on a chair and looking at his watch. He was pleased with the result that they mixed different factors in the ample. He even felt a little sorry for this old man in a snow-white suit, because his ward Shinchon would either die or become disabled. The girl was bleeding and turned to the man and with a question. She was interested in what he decided to do during this ordeal. Zhang Jinchul did not expect that the black-haired girl would withstand such an attack, because she is a fragile girl, but she had protection. At that moment, the red-eyed man tensed, the wounded girl attacked her abuser and punched him right in the head. The blonde guy staggered but withstood this blow, but after that his rage was greatly inflamed. Raising his head, he did not detect his prey, but he does not mind playing catch-up with her. Hiding, Shinchon hurried to examine her deep wound, she decided to heal it as soon as possible with the help of the aura technique, but she was found. Without thinking twice, the black-haired woman threw her uniform at Jinchul, after which she dealt him a forbidden blow, which we hardly show on YouTube. The man howled in pain, but the cruel girl was not going to stop, after which she punched him in the face from the knee, from which the cape flew off the face of the blonde monster. The guy was trying to recover from his injuries but the black-haired woman was already in full combat readiness. During a powerful punch in the stomach, the girl declared that she was the ace of the Soul Clan, and her name was Shinchon. From this technique, the guy coughed up blood, after which he flew several meters away and fell with a punctured belly. After looking at the scumbag, Shinchon said that even monsters are less vile than him. Her supervisor was completely right. After that, the girl spat and walked away from the scene of the crime not for Huang Jinchul educates strong fighters. At this time, the ruler of hell killed even more creatures, but the number of points did not change at the same time he realized that the device was broken. Now Han Song had no idea what to do, for a second he even wanted to go out and ask, but soon came to his senses and went on wandering around the lifeless cave. At this time, the wounded girl was also walking through the cave, and was thinking why he did not see other players when suddenly a lifeless body flew by in addition to her. Turning around, she sensed danger. It was still the same Jinchul. Realizing this, the girl rushed away from this monster. She could not understand the secret of the trick. Shinchon was sure that she had killed the guy. When suddenly his muscular arm appeared in front of her and knocked her to the ground. Now the monster on steroids decided to take his revenge. He sat on her body and began to strike her in the face nonstop. Poor Shin Chouyong tried to block the attacks, but she could not resist it because the escape route was cut off for her. Soon Jinchul took her by the hair and lifted her up. He was going to kill this goat in the most painful way. Having imbued his fist with aura, he hit her on the stomach, causing Shin Chouyong to start coughing up blood. The blonde guy gloatingly ordered the victim to call for help. Suddenly someone would hear her grunting and come to help, although the guy remembered that he had destroyed all the video equipment so the girl had no chance. At that moment, a pair of fingers flew into the guy's smug face, which deprived him of his sight. After that the guy fell screaming to the ground, and Shinchon tried to move away from her injuries. Soon Zhang Jinchul got up, and the heiress of the Soul Clan could not do anything. In tears she realized that she should leave as soon as possible because the guy would recover quickly. At this moment, the mutant's eyes gradually regenerated, the black-haired woman was trying to make her body move when suddenly she heard an enraged Kainal calling her name. The guy restored his eyesight and picked up the girl again. Because of her, 
The number of monster lives was halved, and he is not able to forgive this, so it's time to kill. Suddenly, someone called the mutant from the side, Han Dae Song, who was wandering around, came across a strange couple and decided to ask what they were doing. Han Dae Song, who was wandering around, came across a strange couple and decided to ask what they were doing. The bloody Jinsho was very happy to see the 104th number after that. He threw the wounded girl away and laughed madly. Soon he came to his senses and greeted Desen with the words that he had been looking for him for a long time, and as a result, the stupid black-haired man stomped here himself. John Jignall was behind the careless youngster and was about to deal him a fatal blow, when suddenly the ruler of hell just walked by. While the blonde could not realize that he missed his target, Desen examined the lying girl. Looking at her, he assumed that she was in real pain. He also noticed that she had recovered a little. It was like some kind of recovery cycle. At this time, the mutant recovered from the shock and was ready to continue to sort things out. Soon he pointed to the guy and said that he seemed to be very talented too. Daesong turned around and hurried to find out who did it. At the same time, the smug Jinchil said that she had confused the coast a little, so he had to process her, and the light-haired one also said that Han Daesong was waiting for the same fate. The black-haired man with a stick in his hands looked at the big guy and said that he meant who broke the thing that counts points. After hearing this, Jinchil only laughed and decided to quickly finish with the 104th number with the help of his skill called Storm Wave. At this time, Han Daesong's bracelet got stuck again. Suddenly the blonde man stopped because he had completely forgotten about protective clothing. If it breaks, then the examinee is covered. At that moment, Han Dae Song decided to introduce his fist more closely to the face of the blonde mutant, from which the fourteenth number flew away a few meters. After Jinchul grabbed his beautiful face and called the black-haired scum, but Han Dae Song did not hear the barking of an ordinary mortal, he used a skill called fire bullets. The mutant was soon surrounded by fire, but he didn't care about such insignificant attempts, when suddenly his pupils shrank from surprise. In front of him stood a real king of hell surrounded by his subordinates. Han Dae Song angrily declared that this dog had awakened his infernal character. At this time, in the building where the testing was carried out, the employee managed to restore communication at the second stage. Then the boss asked what was on the third floor. The blonde girl said that the engineers said they would need another half hour to fix the video connection. After listening to the subordinate, the man orders to send guards to the second level and another squad at the entrance to the third level. The smugly Sogu was quietly enjoying a drink at this time and also advised everyone else to do it, because everyone who is there is a future hunter. Huang Junyoung looked at this snake from the Red Horse clan with contempt, but unfortunately he could not do anything because he had no proof. Suddenly, the door to the observation room opened and a blonde man entered it and addressed his master. He told him that the guards had reported that one dead man had been found and there were also enough wounded at the second floor level. After hearing such information, the man turned pale, but Lee Soga looked at it with a smile. What was happening somehow leaked into the news and the TV was told that there were failures in video playback during testing for hunters and this situation has been going on for the last hour. Jang Ho heard this news, so he decides to go there immediately because his best friend Han Dae Song is taking a test there right now. At this time, the blonde man was running away from the black-haired man in horror. He was sure that the guy at number 104 was a demon in the flesh. Suddenly, the running boy's leg fell off, because of which he could not keep his balance and fell to the ground. The blonde-haired man was shocked by what was happening, because now he had only one life left. However, Dae Song just got into the taste. The blonde guy reminded him of bugs from hell who were constantly reborn. Hearing this, Jinchul screamed in fear. At this time, communication was fully restored in the observation room, after which the guards were ordered to be released. Looking at the screen, Lee Soga turned pale, he did not understand what was happening, poor Jinchul was kneeling in front of the 104th number and desperately begged him for mercy, because he had only one life left. After listening to the desperate boy, Desen realized that they had a serious problem, because he wanted to check whether the guy would live if he was divided in half. After hearing this, Jinchul was depressed because if he was cut at least half, even the properties of the ampoule would not help him recover. Suddenly, the black-haired man noticed that the camera was working again. After seeing this, he decided to ask three questions to the mutant, and if he answered honestly, he would let him go. 
After hearing this, Yung Jiknal couldn't believe his ears. Now he has a chance to survive. Suddenly, Dae Song waved his impeccable weapon, so the wooden twig turned out to be at Jinchil's head. The black-haired man said that if the guy lied to at least one question, he would pierce him. Now the blonde was overtaken by a tremor. First of all, Desen wanted to know only Jiknal was cheating or was there someone else. Watching this, Li Siagu turned pale, and Huang Junyang eagerly wanted to hear the answer from the frightened boy. The blonde was in no hurry to answer this question. At the same time the blue eyed offered to split the guy and see what would happen to him. But soon he decided that it would be even more interesting if the resulting halves were divided again. At the same time, the mutant in despair declared that he was the only one, and it was all his fault. Hearing this, Desen thought. Now the guy regretted what he had done, because from now on he was in full ass. But the ruler of the ghetto did not care. His second question he wanted to find out who made the blonde do it. The guy realized that he could not lie, so he decided to at least get out of here alive, after which he shouted that all this was the plan of the head of the Red Horse clan, and he was only following his orders as a subordinate. Desen now understood who he was dealing with. At this time, in the observation hall, everyone present began to squint at Lee Soga, because if the guy is number fourteen, then the long-haired one is the source of all the troubles. Now the head of the Red Horse clan was in a terrible situation because of the filthy Jinchul, the long-haired man turned around and told his guards that this guy was an abnormal psycho who had started this mess himself, and was now trying to hang his sins on him, so he demands that they immediately spoil him and bring him here. Suddenly, a voice interrupted the shouts of Lee Sogu. The chief said that all proceedings would take place during the investigation of the hunter's inspection. The hunter's inspection is a state body responsible for investigating illegal actions of hunters. Now the green-eyed man realized that he would not be able to get away with this situation from here, so he only had to agree and he said that he would arrive at the inspection at the appointed time. Those present were surprised because the well-known Lee Sogu lowered his head. Soon the disgruntled man left the building. He was very annoyed that Chong Jiknal, whom he had raised, thanked him in this way. For this he was going to feed the boy to the orcs. Soon one of the entourage turned to his master with the question, Was there a need to bow his head? At the same time, Li Siagu stopped and called the black-haired dumbass. Because if he had said at least something superfluous there, Huang Junyong would have been beside himself with happiness. At this time, in the same observation hall, Huang Junyong stood still and exuded his murderous aru. The boss approached the man in the suit and thanked him for being able to show such generous patience and endurance. But the bearded man grabbed his hat and said that he was not doing it for them. Then he turned around and hurried out of the audience, because this test is a real dump. The person in charge of the exam grabbed his phone and ordered all the guards to enter the testing area and stop it, and he also demanded that they activate all protective suits and collect the wounded. At this time, Han Song decided to ask his third question. Zhang Jinchul shuddered when suddenly the black-haired man asked if the guy had another life. The blonde-haired man looked at the demon with horror and asked what does this mean? The guy was in a very difficult position because if he lied, then the 104th number would divide him in half. But if he said that he still had one life left, he would still be divided in half so that he would not say the result would be one. Suddenly, an artificial assistant appeared in front of the guys who hurried to congratulate Han Dae Song on winning the competition, because he successfully took first place. At this the spirit thanked the guy for participating and announced that the test was over. The guy did not expect that it would be so sudden, but the artificial intelligence declared that the guy is a worthy hunter of class S. Hearing this, Jinchil smiled, because right now he has the perfect chance to escape, when suddenly he split into halves. Desen knew that the guy had one life left, and he was not going to tolerate deception, after which he looked back at the wounded girl. At this time, the rescue team was rushing to the gate that leads to the third level of the exam. Soon they found Shinchon and hurried to provide her with the necessary medical assistance. People who watched the broadcast of the test were excited, because the nameless Han Dae Song became the hero of this test. Their comments make it clear that if a hunter is hostile to another hunter, then he can be killed. After reading such comments, the man slammed his laptop, he is the head of which is called Park Chong Ho. Soon a black-haired girl approached Storic and announced that representatives of ten clans had already arrived. Every day these people come to the association, and the old man is very amazed by this. 
However, the girl does not see anything surprising in this, because Han Dae Song has already shown an S-level class at the first level. At the same time, Park Chong Ho notices that this boy is the first such monster of the half Li Chansik. Soon the man pokes his hand into the biography of the young hunter and demands that the girl definitely bring him to their company. More and more reporters gathered in the lobby. Many employees discuss the events that took place during this testing. Suddenly, an artificial intelligence appeared on the screen in front of a gathering of people who helped to conduct testing and announced that due to unforeseen circumstances, the selection criteria had changed. The main selection criterion was passing the first level. Therefore, the list of those who pass will be announced in accordance with their places. Many were surprised with this too low criterion, because if they are judged only by the highest level, it is difficult to imagine how serious the incident was. After that, an image with the leader of today's competition, Han Dae Song, appeared on the screen. He was assigned the rank of A. At this time, Chang Ho was walking down the corridor and talking on the phone with his friend. He was in a hurry to find out where he was. However, he was very surprised when he said that he was in the Class S recreation room. Chang Ho, who missed such loud news, did not know what his old friend could lose in such an elite room. At this time, the ruler of hell was sitting on an innovative massage chair and getting high. Soon an excited Chan Ho burst into the room and hurried to find out what had happened here. But Dae Song replied that he did not know, just the secretary of the association told him to rest here. Hearing this, the guy in the suit could not believe his words, so that the secretary of the association herself, at the same time the ruler of hell, drinking his codial, said that people say that he became a class A hunter with the potential for Class S. The guy was shocked to hear such amazing news. He was happy to congratulate his friend on this event and also told Dae Song that now he would be able to build a house for his friend that everyone was crazy outside because of his potential. Everything was a mess in the hall. Everyone wanted to interview the young the hero, as well as to conclude a contract with him. Suddenly, the elevator descended to the first floor. All those present turned to face the rising legend after which they immediately began to photograph him. At that moment the old man stopped and shouted that he had managed to win and was taken as a hunter. Reporters congratulated the man who came out and hurried to find out his name. At the same time the elderly man embarrassedly adjusted his tie and called his name. His name is Desen. Hearing this, those present were stunned because in front of them was the legendary Han Dae Song. After that the crowd began to attract the man more and more, they wanted to know about the abilities of the hero and also about what happened during the test. When suddenly someone suspected that something was wrong here, because Han Dae Song looked completely different, at that moment an old man was shown on the screen who took the twentieth place, and his name is in Dae Song. His qualification is a border guard. At this time, the remaining victims were transported. The beaten guys cursed Jinchul. At this rate they decided that the profession of a gardener was more promising. The worker who helped to evacuate the guys said by phone that they had searched all three levels and found no traces of Zhang Jinchul anywhere. After that he was ordered to close the passage. The man hung up and looked around angrily and thought was it possible that the blonde could escape from here? According to the news, they told in more detail that an unthinkable event happened at the next testing of hunters, namely, most of the test subjects were injured. At this time, Han Dae Song's mother was sorting through old things and was thinking that she should buy new clothes for her boy, when suddenly it was announced on TV that Han Dae Song, who had received a Class A hunter's license, could become the sixth hunter of Class S. Hearing this, the woman could not believe her ears, after which she immediately called her daughter. Soon Han Jisoo appeared on the threshold and wanted to find out what her mother wanted from her, but the woman could not say anything. Looking at the TV, the girl was also shocked, because her brother became a Class A hunter. At that moment the door opened and the black-haired man entered the house. At the same time, the girls looked at the guy as a ghost, but the confused Dae Song only asked what what happened. Meanwhile, the Red Horse Clan, the head of the inspection Kim Siansa said that from now on the activities of the Red Horse Clan associated with hunters are now banned. As well as all hunters, without exception, are required to be released from the clan posts but the long-haired one only grinned when he heard this. Li Siagu realized that apparently he had relied on himself too much. He should have been a little more modest. He was not going to drown because of some lousy dog like Zhang Jinchul. The man with glasses continued his speech. 
he asked Lee Soga to go to the inspection room with him. In response to this, the man with the scar only laughed. After that, he stood up and said that when you do dangerous things, the unexpected can happen. Is the inspector going to believe the words of some Jong Jinchul? Kim Sansu released his aura and asked to go through the soga with him again without any problems. At the same time, the long haired man also released his aura and decided to check with Kim Sansu, thanks to whom he is at this post. Lee Sogu was the second most important in the clan, but he quickly became the leader of the clan after the mysterious death of the former leader. The inspector has great reasons to think that Lee Sogu was involved in this. The long-haired guy himself does not know what the inspection is trying to achieve if they sent only two little hairs to the viper's lair, after which he declared that Pak Janho had completely aged, since he could not put two plus two in his head. Kim Sansa ordered his subordinate to get ready. Chon was confused because the elder did not warn him about it. At the same time the man said if the guy wants to live, they should eliminate the madman before he killed them. Lee Sogu with a smile declares that Kim Sansu apparently had to pay a lot for his place in the inspection, after which he spread his hands and activated his ability, when suddenly the black-haired man was stabbed by his own subordinate. Kim Sansu looked back at the kid, but Jung said it wasn't him, he didn't do anything. At this moment, the long-haired man was surprised with sarcasm that the guys decided to fight among themselves, from now on he had a lot of questions for their leadership. After hearing this, Kim Sansa realized that one of Lee Sogo's abilities. But it was too late. The long-haired man wished the inspector a good way, after which he again used the puppet's aura. Chan yelled. He tried to resist someone else's influence. But his body did not obey and soon his boss fell dead. The guy threw the knife and trembling asked Kim Sansa for forgiveness, claiming that it wasn't him. Soon the doors to the hall opened and Lee Soga proudly walked between his subordinates he should warn the association about what happens if he is disturbed. At that time, Shin Cho Yung was lying in the capsule, and Huang Jun Young was standing next to her and looking at his teacher. He was tormented by the words that the doctor had said a little earlier. The doctor said that the girl would no longer be able to be a hunter since her aura was completely depleted. After that, he raised his gaze and decided to take revenge on Li Sog, no matter what it cost him. At this time, Daesong's mother banged her cup on the table and said that she would not be able to live in peace while her son was engaged in such a dangerous business, and Han Jisoo fully supported her mother's words. The woman said that she had heard on the news that Daesong is very good, but dangerous things always remain dangerous. Now Daesong remembered Chang Ho's words that 99% of families oppose the idea of becoming a hunter, and the remaining 1% simply run away from home. His friend was absolutely right. The mother lowered her eyes and said that if something happens to the guy again like last time, she will. The guy did not let her finish and announced that he had already signed a contract with the Changho clan. Han Jisu asked if her brother had signed a contract with the Seoul clan and he confirmed it, after which Dae Song put his hand in the inventory and the girls were scared again. The black-haired man pulled out a stack of money from the inventory and threw them on the table. He received this deposit from the clan. Desen wants them to close all kinds of debts and use the rest for living. The mother and daughter were again shocked to see such a huge amount, but the ruler of the ghetto announced that there was nothing to make money here and he would continue to earn even more, so Jisoo should start studying well and obey his mother, and his mother just run her household. Daesun takes care of the rest, hearing such girls could not hold back tears, but when he saw this, the guy asked what was the matter because you need to rejoice. The mother hurried to wipe her tears, and Han Jisoo even went berserk, because as soon as she saw the money, her opinion changed dramatically. At the same time, Han Daesong felt at peace, because if this is his reward for returning from hell, then he really likes it. One day, an enraged monster appeared on the ground and swung at the helpless Chan, when suddenly Kim Sansa flew into the monster from his knee, thereby pushing the monster away. After that, the black-haired man turned to his subordinate and clarified whether the newcomer had wet his pants. But the frightened guy could not utter a word. The boss turned his back on him and promised to keep it a secret. Now, Jianu stood over his hero in the morgue and sincerely let out tears. Two more people from the top stood with him over the body. The boss approached the guy and asked for forgiveness. Because it was his fault, he did not realize that Lee Sogu was so crazy. But Chong remembered the words of the long-haired one. The bastard said that they should not touch him anymore, 
but now the guy decided to personally cut his throat. Park Chong-ho turned to the head of the department and ordered him to catch all the hunters of the association. The man asked in surprise whether he should even catch the preparatory squad. At the same time, the gray-haired man said that he should disband the entire Red Horse clan and catch Lee Soga if they resisted being allowed to kill. The next morning there was a constant chirping in Han Danson's house. Soon the guy woke up from the constant noise and looking into the phone he found 101 notifications. As soon as he became a hunter, a whole bunch of spam began to come to him, when suddenly out of hundreds of messages he saw a letter from Chan Ho, who asked him to call the guy as soon as he wakes up. Going out into the courtyard, the black-haired man called his friend and he said that the Class C portal won at the auction. It was good news, because now the money will flow like a river. A bunch of black cars were heading to the Red Horse building. Soon the hunters arrived at their destination and got down to business. The person in charge of the operation was an awakened ranker named Jean Kihan. Soon he ordered a squad of hunters to come in first. After them the cavalrymen would flow. They were also ordered to suppress any resistance, and when the awakened resisted, they were allowed to kill. After that, the guy with the earrings in his ears announced the beginning of the operation. The guys ran forward and stopped abruptly. The Red Horse clan's henchmen were lying in front of them who were begging for help. Ho Chong could not understand what had happened here and what they should do next. Then Jean Kihan ordered the rear guard to sort it out here, and the rest follow him. Along the broken quarter, in the middle of a pile of bodies, a large figure was sitting on a chair, and it was an angry Huang Junyan. The elite group of hunters continued to explore the estate of the Red Horse clan. Soon they reached the doors that led to the main hall. Ho Chong took out his blade and wanted to see Li Soga but he found the lifeless body of the long-haired man in front of him. Soon the rest of the guys pulled up to the place of the incident. Ho Yung could not understand why he was dead and in a rage demanded the scumbag to get up. The guy had to personally avenge his fallen friend, but Jean Kihan sat down next to him and asked Yung to stop because Lee Sogu was already dead. At the same time the guy regained consciousness. A hunter of rank A approached Huang Jun Young and said that it was too much even for personal revenge to which the man replied that everything that was outside was his handiwork. But he did not kill Lee Sog. Hearing this, the black-haired man was in a stupor. Meanwhile, in a very unremarkable building, the next news was reproduced, according to which it was transmitted that the head of the Red Horse clan, Lee Sogu, was found murdered, and also at the moment the main suspect is the head of the Seoul Huang Junyan clan. Most of the awakened of the Red Horse clan were also killed, the old man in front of whom this news was going was furious that he still had not received a call. No existing clan took it, so the old man created his own. But if everything continues in the same spirit, he won't even be able to look at the monsters and will soon die of hunger, when suddenly a notification came to his phone. Looking at him, the old man's face suddenly lit up with joy. At this time, the guys were driving a snow-white car. Chang Ho was surprised that his friend accepted all ten offers from different clans, because his sole clan would be enough for him, because their clan has the best equipment. However, Han Dae Song said that he didn't need it, he couldn't just show off his personal equipment from hell. Soon, the black-haired man looked at his friend and hurried to find out how much he could earn in the sea level portal, to which the guy replied that level C tasks cost 50 billion, taxes and fees alone cost 30 billion. Hearing this, Desson lost his temper, because on what grounds are they asking for such an absurd amount? At the same time, Chan Ho said that if he managed to get an ethereal core, then it would be possible to earn money, after which Koronavalasi recalls that Day Song was allocated an escort who would go with him and collect cores, but would he really cope alone? However, the Lord of Hell did not understand why he was going alone, because Chan Ho should also go with him. There was a minute's pause in the car after which the confused guy asked Dessen to repeat what he said. At the same time, the black-haired man announced that he had recorded his best friend as his escort, and he instructed his sister to do all the documentation, since he was too lazy to do it. After hearing this, Chan Ho realized how much he was in trouble. Soon the guys were greeted at the entrance to the portal and asked to show a certificate. The mortified man took out his ticket to hell and gave it to the guy in uniform. The man quickly got acquainted with the document after which he reminded that this zone is a military zone and whether the guys have enough staff for the guys, because for this portal you will need at least 100 hunters of rank C. 
The guy in the suit fully supported the military, but his friend, a psycho who became a hunter of rank A, apparently decided that he could circumvent all the rules of the association. Besides, Chan Ho did not even have time to get married. After listening to this, the military smiled and although it doesn't make sense, but he will open a portal for them following all the instructions, after which he ordered the barricade to be opened, he took these guys for psychos, so he didn't worry too much. Chan Ho harbored the last hope that his friend would come to his senses and asked him again if he was sure. After all, no matter how strong it is, it is still a military zone and a level C portal. All ten clans are not taking up this portal now because of the weakening of electricity. However, Dae Song grabbed his timid friend and told him to calm down, but Jang Ho did not expect such decisive actions and asked him to let him go, at least to say goodbye to his family. He also warned that if something goes wrong with the plan, he would leave him, he says for earlier so that Dae Song would not complain later that Chang Ho is an unfaithful friend. Lee Sogu was on his knees with downcast eyes when suddenly something lifted him into the air and he begged for help while every limb in his body alternately broke, after which something looked at the cockroach and reached for him. Namely, behind his heart, after which the lifeless body collapsed to the ground. Those responsible for the disassembly with the red horse viewed the recording from the video camera. Park Chong-ho turned to the hunter. He wanted to know if it was possible to check who took it off. Jean Kihun stated that there was only one surveillance camera and so far verification is impossible. The head of the department said that they conducted an autopsy of the corpse, but they were unable to determine who was the bearer of that strange aura. At the same time Park Chong-ho suggested with horror that it could be a ghost. At the same time, a van drove up to the portal, and Anderson, responsible for today's processing, got out of it. The military was happy to greet the person responsible for processing but he said that the old man arrived too early, because less than half an hour had passed since the hunters entered the portal. At the same time, the old man asked the hunter responsible for today's attack by the case of Han Dae Song. The soldier looked at his papers and confirmed the old man's guess and he was overjoyed. No one took up this case because this is a military zone and Han Dae Song took up it. Today the man is lucky. The day of testing the third level. The cut Jonkel desperately wanted to live despite his injury. He wanted to survive and take revenge. Suddenly a portal opened in front of him, and a voice was heard offering him his help. Something was looking at him. The guys came out of the portal. Chang Ho was inside the portal for the first time, and this achievement did not make him very happy. Suddenly, the black-haired man was surprised that there were really a lot of monsters. But the guy in the suit did not see anyone when suddenly a horde of running monsters appeared on the horizon. These monsters occupied the third level of danger, and they were called Wasteland Yasherits. They were striving for their food. However, Han Song opened the portal and took out his demonic sword from it, and decided that it would be better if he killed them all at once, after which he told his friend to look more carefully and jumped on the crowd of monsters. Chan Ho opened his mouth in surprise, and Song was already running to his enemies. After the landing, the monsters scattered in different directions, after which the black-haired man activated a special karma skill volcano. The mountains were swallowed up by magma, and soon the desert turned into split snakes from what he saw. Chan Ho doubted whether it was his old friend for sure. Dae Song was walking back towards the guy in the suit, and Jang H. Cho started shouting at the black-haired man. He did not expect that his friend would turn out to be a living embodiment of Superman who was hiding his strength. After hearing this, the ruler of hell embarrassedly puts his weapons in his inventory. Suddenly Chang Ho declares that they are obliged to create their best guild in the world. Less than an hour later, the portal into which the guys entered began to sparkle. The military who were nearby assumed that this was a measurement gap, which means that they are completely fucked. However, the old man drew the guys' attention to the fact that someone was coming out of the portal. It was the carefree Han Dae Song and his happy partner. Passing by the soldiers, Chan Ho turned to one of them and asked them to collect the remains. A black-haired guy in uniform had a cold sweat running down his face, because such a thing cannot be possible. The strongest old man with whom he once passed the test congratulated the rising star, but the ruler of hell was a little worried about something else he has the same name with this bald grandfather. Chan Ho was surprised, because shouldn't the old man have colleagues if he is from the clan of collectors? However, 
He handed out a business card and said that this was his temporary day job and he would try his best to match his name. Hearing this, Dessen turned around and walked away. The guy in the suit asked to wait for his comrade, but the ruler of hell was lost in his thoughts and reflected that he could not even change his name. One of the most elite skyscrapers with a helipad, passing through the apartment Ryertal explained that this apartment offers a stunning view, and everything is perfect in the house itself. Suddenly, Han Jisu jumped out from behind the wall, who declared with admiration that there is even a toilet in every room here. At the same time, the mother realized that they were quite satisfied with this room, and she decided to ask how much does living here cost? The man with glasses said that the official value is 17 billion, and the actual transaction is 8 billion. Upon hearing this, the woman fell into a stupor, but the man tried to justify this amount by saying that the association of hunters is right here nearby. According to the business guy in the jacket in their time, the most important thing is safety. He also remembers that if he is not mistaken, her son also became a successful hunter. Here, Han Jisu gets into the conversation again, who proudly declares that her brother is an A-level hunter who could become an S-level hunter. But now the man with glasses understands why the boy has such a familiar face. The ruler of hell said that he liked the house and he wanted to get a discount if he made a purchase right now. However, the realtor was not going to lower the price. He again tried to explain it by saying that the level of security affects the price of apartments. He also mentioned that in one of the expensive houses nearby, Li Changshik Hunter of the S-level lives. Hearing this, Han Dae Song got really angry. He wanted to know how much cheaper he gives apartments to S-level hunters. At the same time, the confused man said that they were given about a hundred billion. This price tag greatly impressed the women, but Dessen sees new opportunities that he can get. For example, he can buy this house that costs eighty billion. Late at night, when the city stopped, a lonely woman was walking along a dark street. It seemed to her without reason that someone was following her. At the same time, the girl decided to speed up her step when suddenly she bumped into a mysterious figure clumsily. Frightened, the girl with a tremor in her voice asked the unknown who is he? However, the guy ignored her question and said that she should not be afraid of him, and also she has a choice, and she should be grateful for it. The next day there is a morgue at the police station. Those present noticed that this girl died in exactly the same way as Sogu, only there are ten such victims in Seoul and even more across the country. The fat man said that they would not be able to stop the reporters, but the guys standing opposite thought to themselves that it must have been done by the awakened one. Jean Kihan was very seriously concerned, not only that the portal with monsters has been opening more and more lately, but also a killer who rips out hearts has appeared. Standing next to Ho Chong turned to his boss and asked him to entrust this case to him. He promised to catch the criminal by all means but the black-haired man decided for himself that for now he would think that it was connected with the same one who killed Soga. Having finished his thought process, the hunter replied to his partner that it was better for him to do business with portals for now. After that, Jean Kihun turned to a man standing next to him and asked him to monitor what was happening so that these cases would not leak into the news. In exchange, he promised to allocate a sufficient number of people from the inspection department. Meanwhile, Zhang Jinchou woke up in the incubator, looking around, he could not figure out where he was. All this time, an unknown man in a bathrobe was standing near his capsule and muttering to himself. Turning around, the man noticed with a smile that the boy woke up and slowly he began to approach his bed, and the blonde kid began to panic. When the mad scientist approached, he asked the youngster if he did not find this place similar to the laboratory of the Red Horse clan. Now the worried Zhang Jinchou remembered the room where the ampoule was injected into him. The guy in the dressing gown grinned, because the ampoule he gave to Sog turned out to be effective, just the same he personally asked his boss to save the youngster. After that, the madman introduced himself as Elder Hans, and his name is Roman. Jinchou remembered those mysterious eyes that he saw before he lost consciousness, which means he really didn't die. The black-haired man declared that from now on the boy should consider it a rebirth and from now on he is a servant of Hans. Hearing this, the blonde guy asked again, but he didn't have to think for a long time. The man took out an ampoule and asked the boy if he wanted to conquer the whole world with him, because that way he would get much more power. Meanwhile, in one of the offices of the hunters, there was a letter of resignation on the table. And a disgruntled Chang Ho listened to his friend's crazy ideas. 
Han Daesong wanted to become an S-rank hunter as soon as possible. At the same time, the ruler of Hell declared that he was ready to take on absolutely all portals, because he needed a good discount on a new home. Not having time to realize when Desen managed to buy himself a new apartment, he realized the seriousness of his words, however. He warned the black-haired man that first he needed to finish his business in the office, and in the meantime he offered the newly minted Akotnik to visit the Aura market and buy equipment there. Equipment, the Lord of Hell had completely forgotten about something like that. Upon entering the Colosseum, a notification appeared in front of him clarifying whether he was exactly ready to complete the mission, and the guy immediately agreed. At the same time, the following message popped up in front of him with the available options. After a little thought, Han Dae Song decided to choose the fifth option, the Iron Fortress. Soon, the following notification was highlighted, which stated that Han Dae Song would have to eliminate the rulers who would be on the field, preserving the law of causality in order to remove the seal to remove the seal from space and time. Another message appears in front of him demanding confirmation of whether he is sure that he wants to download information about the Iron Fortress of Balark, recorded in 45 years and 78 days. At the same time, the ruler of hell confirms his intention, and his entire past life flashes before him. Soon, a mysterious light appears near the iron fortress of Balark. A man with a wooden shield and an iron sword comes out of it. It was Han Dae Song, who was greatly puzzled by his ridiculous appearance, and it slightly got on his nerves. Meanwhile, in the Hunters' Association, there was a scattered stack of newspapers on one of the tables, which only talked about the appearance of a serial killer. Sitting in the chair, Park Chong Ho arranged for each clan to notify about this and put the news on the main page. Suddenly the door to the office of the chief executive opens slightly. A girl named Aim comes out of it. She hurries to report to her master that the Ocean Clan has failed its task in the B-level basement. However, the guy in the jacket was surprised. He remembers that the Ocean Clan is considered a fourth-generation clan where there is a back heron, and there are quite a lot of awakened Class A. In response, the girl adjusting her glasses, declares that the strength of the monsters turned out to be more powerful than the skills of Bak Heron. then the place needs another S-class hunter. Thinking about it, Park Cheng-ho realized the seriousness of the problem, because if you don't clean up the already open portal in 12 hours, then there will be a gap in it. However, it's good that it wasn't someone else who requested help, namely Bak Heron. Soon, the chief executive ordered to explain the situation to Li chang Seek and Seo dong Kal, and request their cooperation on behalf of Beck Heron. The guy in the jacket realized the intention of the boss, because if you do this, then no one will be able to refuse the number one hunter in Korea. Then Ain appears, who reminds me of a huntress named Ryu Son from Fortis. They don't get along well with each other. However, Park Jong Hun didn't care. He wanted the guys to do everything possible so that the portal would not break. Meanwhile, there was a children's shelter in the destroyed part of the city. Children were having fun on the playground and an adult man was watching them from the side. Two of the guys were playing roles and the black-haired one wanted to get rid of the monster in the yellow t-shirt, but the boy objected and flatly refused the role of the monster. At the same time, a red-eyed man enters the game his name is So Donkal, he is an S-class hunter and belongs to the Raven clan, he is 35 years old, and he is the second in rank in Korea. Turning around, the children united in order to overcome such an adult monster, and the man happily played along with them, and began his transformation into a monster, when suddenly a nun turned to him. The second hunter on the list looked at the girl with bewilderment, and asked what happened. At the same time the girl grinned and said that an urgent call from the association had come. At the same time, the man took the phone and said that he was not allowed to relax at all, after which he asked the girl to take the children inside because it was time for him to go. Before the Donka left them, the woman asks him to be more careful and wishes him good luck, but the guy asks if they really doubt the best hunter of their country. Soon, two lines of hunters lined up on Jeju Island near the sea level portal. An unknown figure came out of the Red Rift and said that she was bored. This was Lee Changshik, a class S awakened who held the first rank in Korea and was only 28 years old. The young hero was greeted with open arms by the rest of the audience. A secretary approached the white-haired guy and said that they had received an official request for help on behalf of Beck Heron. Hearing this, the blue-eyed hunter smiled and, taking a look, remembered what a beauty she was. Meanwhile, 
Han Dae Song stood on one of the seals and that in turn activated, after which a monster began to stick out from under the ground and a moment later the monster sat at the entrance to the fortress. Before the ruler of hell, a notification appeared again notifying that the content of his pretrial mission is that he needs to fill up the guard of the gates of the Iron Fortress, and the time to complete this mission is unlimited. The black-haired man understood that with his current body, it would be dangerous to even walk around there now, because at the moment he only has an ODI sword and an ice shield. At the same time, the ruler of hell threw his equipment and sat down on the ground. The guy thought about how he knocked down this monster last time but his memory turned out to suck. At the same time, he looked in front of him again and noticed the ice shield. After that he looked at the boss again, and suddenly it dawned on him. Meanwhile, the military in the city fenced off the entrance to the level B portal and asked reporters not to cross the set boundaries. However, an amazing number of reporters gathered near the place of the incident who were already ready to tell the people about the first unsuccessful attempt to clean up this ocean clan portal local government officials could not understand where this information had leaked from. Suddenly, the gathered people turned around and rushed to the Ocean Clan and its representative Beck Heron. Reporters wanted to find out from the S-Class Hunter the details of the attack and how she was going to overcome the consequences of the failure of the first attack. Of course, many men were interested in another most important question. Does such a charming girl have a young man? Soon, Obek Heron approached an inconspicuous guy from the crowd and politely asked him for a microphone for a few seconds. As a result, she began her grandiose speech that they would definitely prevent the destruction of the portal, and she had already requested help from two of the strongest hunters of their country for this. At first, those present did not understand who could be stronger than Beck Heron herself, but soon there were astonished guesses and she confirmed them because for this mission she called the first and second in the ranking in Korea Lee Chang-shik and So dong -kul. Reporters even failed to notice how two celebrities got close to the ominous portal and hurried to shoot such amazing material. Meanwhile, Galbaglazi with a grin on his face was surprised at how a woman from her failure was able to deploy a whole show. It was not for nothing that he chose her. Standing next to dong -kul suggested that most likely she called all these journalists— and then the queen of this scene squeezed into their conversation. The street was full of reporters and they were all in a hurry to write a whole article about it as three S-class heroes would attack shoulder to shoulder. Meanwhile, a meteor was flying in the Colosseum, which landed exactly in the head of the monster guarding the entrance to the fortress. The attacks did not end there. The ruler of hell continued to fire fireballs at the monster. At the same time the boss activated his aura and became enraged but Dessen was trying to achieve this. The black-haired man took a stand and concentrated, because one slightest mistake would cost him his life. At this time, the furious monster was yelling at the guy. The monster did not understand how such an insignificant flea dared to wake him up, when suddenly a giant creature slipped on the ice. The monster with all its might crashed to the ground and the ruler of hell was not going to lose such a great opportunity. Everything was going exactly as he had planned. Running up to the lying monster, he raised his blade over his head and noticed the seal he needed. Then he did not waste time and stuck his sword straight into the seal on the guard's neck. At the same time, the howl of a defeated reptiloid sounded over the entire iron fortress, while the ruler of hell himself stood motionless and looked at the dying fire. Looking at his cracked sword, Dae Song grinned. He was very lucky that he could remember about the weak neck of this creature. Now, this damaged equipment will not be of any use with such soaps. The black-haired man dumped garbage on the ground. Suddenly, a notification appeared in front of the guy saying that Han Dae Song had received a special permission that was on the seal. Now he can enter the Iron Fortress of Balark. Now his implementation level has reached 33%. However, before entering such a dangerous institution, the guy decides to get a suitable weapon first. Now the guy had to overcome various traps and advance to the Balark room. Again, he has no time limit for this mission. The guy from the ghetto stood and felt the concrete wall. He was sure that what he needed was definitely somewhere here. By clicking on the next block, he shifted, which meant that he found what he needed. After clicking, a secret mechanism was activated and mysterious doors opened in front of the ruler of hell. A notification appeared in front of the guy again which notified him that he had found the Balark treasury. Now he can use it for five minutes, after that the timer went. In front of Han Dae Song there was a room filled with various equipment, 
Slowly the kid approached a wooden stand and drew attention to one of them. It was a dark sword that can be a deadly weapon against dragons. Although the sword was of a low class, however, without this weapon, Han Dae Song would not be able to enter Balak's room. Exactly two minutes have passed since the ruler of hell opened this treasure in front of him, but he did not hurry and stood motionless, resting on a new sword. There were various armors and treasures in front of him. At first he did not betray much importance to them, but after thinking carefully, he realized that it could be the money that he did not have enough for a first-class apartment. In front of the black-haired man, a collegium notification was again displayed telling him that he had fulfilled the conditions of the task and now he was able to enter Balak's room. From now on his level of realization in the Iron Fortress reached 66%. Now the ruler of hell was standing in front of the iron doors. Finally he had to fight with the last boss. The monster with round scarlet eyes bequeathed at the top of his throat, so he couldn't stand such a terrible ultrasound and was about to tear off the poor guy's head so that he calmed down. When suddenly the giant began his fierce attack, he grabbed his mighty bat and struck a crushing blow. However, the damage did not reach its goal, because the hunter soared into the air and was ready to strike back. The next moment, he hit the screaming monster on the head with all his might, but after that the screams of the mad creature became even louder. So Donkal turned to his team of hunters and ordered them to attack together right now, after which the adventurers rushed into battle. The guys surrounded the lying monster and continuously inflicted cutting blows on it, but their weapons could not penetrate its thick hide. At this time, Bak Heron appeared behind the black-haired hunter, who was cheering with an ardent enthusiast from the Dunkel, when suddenly someone's voice rang out behind her. Was it Changshik soaked in blood? He decided to ask the beauty if she would go on a date with him if he killed all the monsters here? Seeing the hunter in such a state, the girl was horrified after which she immediately used her healing aura, after which the top one hunter felt like new. While the guy was rejoicing at his excellent condition, Beck Heron was in a hurry to find out where the blonde managed to get hurt, when suddenly the blue-eyed man said that he had prepared a gift for her. In front of the girl lay the thick of the defeated ogre king, who occupied the second level of danger. From what he saw, the huntress instinctively opened her mouth, because the guy was able to defeat the ogre king alone it's just not true. Li Chang Shi hugged the beauty and wanted to know if he was cool enough, but after pulling off her teeth, the girl demanded that the boy take his hands off her. At this time, the enraged monsters continued to shred the squad of newcomers, so Dong Kul could not understand what kind of magical skin the monster had, which even with the help of an aura could not break through. Seeing this, a blonde guy in a dark robe went to the aid of his comrades and before he left, he asked the girl to keep her promise about a date. After that he disappeared. However, Beck Heron continued to stand in disbelief, because she does not remember promising anyone anything. Meanwhile, in the Iron Tower, before entering the Iron Gate, Han Dae Song decides to open a stock of his potions. A notification pops up in front of him that there are 128,000 points in his current account, and is he sure that he wants to use bubbles with experience? Without thinking twice, the ruler of hell decides to use the bottles according to Maxim after which a bright light began to emanate from the glass container, which rushed into the body of the black-haired boy. After that, the Lord of Hell received a buff of all characteristics by 10%. After evaluating the effect of potions, he was ready to start a fight. The next moment, he opened the iron doors leading to a spacious hall and Balark sat on his gilded throne in front of Han Dae Song. The black-haired man greeted his old acquaintance, but the demon did not blink an eye in response. Suddenly, one of the walls of the room crumbled into small pieces. The fault of this was the scarlet dragon that had flown in. Without thinking twice, the horned creature opened its mouth and prepared a fiery volley at the target. But the guy had long been ready for the upcoming battle. He had a resistance to vanishing dragons and also used an ability called blood naturalization. Meanwhile, in the real world, the curly-haired guy greeted the weekly hunter's dear subscribers on his channel, and his name is Yen Gil. To begin with, he decided to look at the rating of hunters this week. The first place in his rating was taken by the youngest son of a conglomerate who became a hunter just as a hobby Li Changshik, to which he is the CEO and part-time chairman of the Josian clan. The second place was taken by the director of the orphanage, the godfather of So Dunkal. He became a father to many orphans who lost their real parents because of suddenly open portals. 
The list ends with a white lily blooming among the sullen hunter's lovely back heron. The guy says that this week there was one unpleasant situation in the Class B portal, but a team of three best heroes solved this problem in just six hours. Sitting at the computer, Yangil remembered what he still wanted to tell, when suddenly he saw a familiar face that he had already seen somewhere. Without thinking for long, he remembered that in front of him was depicted that incredible guy who single-handedly saved him once from a crowd of monsters. Meanwhile, in the Hunters' Association, a mad hunter was sitting at a desk in the office. He noticed that the hunters began to clean the portals very quickly. Suddenly, colleagues approached a man and named Jake and offered him a drink at a nearby institution. But a man in a red robe said that he still had unfinished business at home, so he was forced to refuse. When the guys left, the scientist took up a computer mouse and opened a map of Korea. Looking at it, he realized that they lacked a scapegoat, so the man decides that they should change the current circumstances. Meanwhile, Han Dae Song was standing in front of an enraged dragon. Suddenly flames began to erupt from the mouth of a wild reptile. However, the dark-haired man could not allow the dragon to make his attack, and with the words one blow is death, he pierced the monster's thicket. From the bloodshed, memories of the old days came flooding back to the guy. While Han Dae Song was coming to the senses, Balark was ready to pierce the impudent man with his spear, but the ruler of hell dodges such a ridiculous attack without a break. The guy is already quite tired of this ugly mission, and with a heavy exhalation he decides to finish it quickly. But the angry ball arc did not say a word. After that, the giant began to continuously attack the black-haired young man. But the guy easily reflected every attack of the monster, and stretching out the knight in front of him, he decided that it was his turn to attack. The guy released the accumulated energy and continued to fiercely repel attacks. But the toothy ruler of the fortress did not slow down the temp from which Han Dae Song began to lose ground. I'll take a sideways look at Ball Arc, the dark-haired guy asked why he was so strong. Suddenly, the monster screamed at all the Iron Fortress, after which wings formed behind the back of the giant. Ball Arc used the skill of the Brontosaurus cannon, and with the words one attack one death, he rushed at the insolent man who invaded his fortress. As a result, the hefty monster was beheaded. Looking back, Han Dae Song grinned at the fact that the lizard turned into a dragon. Suddenly, a white liquid began to flow out of the head of the defeated monster, and an unknown creature began to form from it. The ruler of hell saw something like this for the first time. The snow-white creature who appeared asked furiously who dared to disturb the rest of the holy apostles. Scarlet blood continued to drip in front of the shoes of the unknown. The maniac squeezing out the last drops of blood from his heart prayed to his lord that the sacrifice would be successful. When suddenly scarlet vines began to climb out of the red puddle and a portal formed in front of the guy in the raincoat. Meanwhile, in the Hunters' Association, a mad scientist received a call to his work phone and he officially introduced himself saying that his name was Jake and he was the director of portal search engines. The maniac told his master that he had successfully carried out his sacrifice with the hearts that he had collected before. Hearing this, the man grinned. The scientist said that he would let the Hunters' Association know about it. After that his subordinate asked when he should finish the sacrifice? To which the man in the red robe said that as soon as there were enough scapegoats, he would finish this case. Several notifications popped up in front of Han Dae Song saying that an unknown creature had entered the system and the system was also able to identify the monster as an excellent celestial, after which it began to glitch. Seeing that the alerts were out of order, the black-haired youngster assumed that Snow White in front of him was incredibly strong. Suddenly, another message appeared in front of the guy, which said that the guy could use his own power since the process of implementing the terrain was completed, after which the question was whether the guy wanted to use his own power. The ruler of hell smiled and noticed that it was damn timely after which Han Dae Song was surrounded by incredible energy. Looking at this, the celestial grinned, because such an insignificant bug decided that it could stop the course of the universe, after which the monster ordered the guy to die. A powerful explosion occurred in the Iron Tower of Balark. Looking at this, the celestial assumed that there was no dust left from the guy. When suddenly a black-haired boy with his mighty sword flew out of the thick smoke, the next moment, he plunged his blade into the body of a snow-white monster. However, there was a moment of silence on the battlefield. The celestial with Scarlet Galasmi grinned and asked if the guy really thought he could harm him with this ridiculous attack. 
However, the ruler of hell did not hope for this. The black-haired man decided to use the last skill of hell, which can only be activated in hell and the strength of this ability depends on the level of realization. The monster appeared in the boundless, echoing space, looking around absurdly. A certain glow began to form behind him this was Han Daesong's ability a fiery pond, eternal suffering. Gradually disappearing, the celestial could not believe what was happening so that such an insignificant bug had such an attack, he wanted to report it to the rest of the celestials, but he was completely swallowed up by a black hole. After that, notifications were displayed in front of the ruler of hell, which said that the excellent celestial was destroyed, and therefore the system was restored. And also there was a reminder that the mission will end as soon as the guy takes his place on the throne of the ruler. Walking slowly to the deserved place, the great Khan Dae Song ran to the golden throne. Touching the base of the ruler's chair, it began to transform and a moment later a staircase appeared in front of the black-haired man that led straight to the throne. Gradually climbing up it, messages from demons who were imprisoned were displayed in front of the ruler of hell. They were delighted with such a bright sight. Soon, a notification appeared in front of the guy saying that the Balark mission was successfully completed, as a result of which the guy acquired two S-class skills, an exchange of territory and a Balark celestial. Also now Han Dae Song could summon defeated enemies to his shadow army. The monsters bowed to their boss and swore to serve him forever. After hearing this, the guy noticed that the demons were too dirty and asked them to shut up, because they would summon them as soon as they were needed. Sitting on the throne, the black-haired man decides that he just needs to remove all these portals and earn some money. Meanwhile, a first-degree alarm was announced in the Hunters' Association, because a level 8 portal was discovered in Gangnam, Dogakton District. Before announcing an emergency evacuation of residents, it was decided to send an operation group there first. The main leader Park Chong-ho entered the observation room. The man asked if this was the same portal as five years ago that destroyed everything around him. And the chairman confirmed his terrible guess. There was definitely a level A portal in front of them. Raised his hand to his chin, the chief executive plunged into thoughts. Without thinking for long, the man demanded to call all hunters and ask for additional help from the World Organization of Hunters. Bowing, the dark-haired man said that everything would be done. Meanwhile, the system decided to show the ruler of hell his current characteristics. The physical realization of Han Dae Song reached 48%, and the magical 41. Also, the guy had a new ability called the exchange area. It allowed him to change the places of the real world to the terrain from hell. At the moment available to him is the Ethio Iron Fortress of Balark. Looking at the system notifications, the dark-haired guy noticed that his implementation is still too low and he decides that he should earn a few more new skills. Standing on an empty platform, the ruler of hell decides to use the exchange of terrain. This event was recorded on the 124th page of his diary, and it happened three years ago. Gradually the Colosseum in front of Han Dae Song began to change. Meanwhile, in the Hunters' Association, all the main leaders gathered at a round table, as well as a number of important people were present online at this conference. Looking around, the chairman made sure that everyone was gathered and since this is the case, he decides to start a meeting about ways to solve the A-level portal in Gangnam. A law enforcement bus was driving along a busy street in Korea. Huang Junyan was sitting in it surrounded by a convo. The man sitting on the chair was thinking who could be the killer. Lee Suga could not be killed so easily. Even for a professional mercenary it would not be easy and the dark-bearded man realizes that someone powerful must definitely be involved in this case. Also Huang Junyan sincerely hopes that everything will be all right with his student. Suddenly, the door of the hospital room opened and a nurse came in with a fresh cart full of food, but the employee notices that the patient did not even touch the last food. The black-haired girl notifies Shinchon that she will remove the four, since there is no sense from her anyway since the huntress does not feed. Sitting on the hospital bed, the girl clenched her trembling fist. Shinchon did not even listen to what the nurse was saying. She was immersed in her thoughts, and she blamed herself for what happened to her master. Meanwhile, the gathering was in full swing. An old man named Ryu Jones, who is the head of the Fortress clan, said that their huntress Son has been gone for a whole month since she went to investigate. The deputy chief of the Marble clan, Cho Hanku, who is the brother of the head of the clan named Cho Hano, who ranked fifth in the S-class hunter rating, said that his brother was in Silicon Valley to develop aura weapons, 
but after learning about the events that are taking place in Korea, he decided to return to his homeland as soon as possible. Upon hearing this, the chairman said that this time too, Lee Changshik, so Dong Kal and Beck Heron would be responsible for the attack. Picking his nose with Dong Kal agreed because they have no choice, if they can't stop this threat, then everyone will die. However, the blonde boy did not care much about it, he agreed to take part only because Bak Heron was going there, who promised him a date. Hearing this, the girl was outraged because they already had a date, and she even treated the guy to meat and bought him dessert. Didn't he remember that? But Lee Chang Shik was not happy with what happened, because the date should take place alone, and for some reason the girl called them from the down call, so the hunter cannot count this event as a date. The furious girl claims that if she said it was a date, then it was. Watching the children from Donetsk, I was ashamed that he was familiar with them and said that the guys would then solve their problem themselves, and it would be better for them to give volunteers for this mission among the A-class hunters. The audience decided that this was a great idea, because if a trio of S-class heroes could clear the A-level portal, then it would be a significant event in Korea. After listening to all this, the chief executive Park Chong-ho demanded to find at least a hundred A-rank volunteers and 10,000 ethers. From these words, the leaders were alarmed, because 10,000 ethers is the annual stock of the association, it's a lot. Jake was sitting inconspicuously at the table among those present, who was listening attentively to all the plans of the association. Soon an alarm sounded throughout the city, which notified of the danger of the first level and all residents were advised to take shelter in the bomb shelter of the association. A heavy downpour covered the building under construction, a uniformed man ran up to the two guards in raincoats and handed over the received order, and the assembled squad of hunters were ready to begin the operation. Among the crowd there were those who were not happy with what was happening, because it was too sudden, some even came here to look at the top hunters. So Donkal, throwing the bat behind his back, said that they should finish this business quickly so that the guys could go on their date. Hearing this, Li Changshik asked the elder not to come anymore. However, the black-haired man was not going to interfere with this couple. He asked the guys not to fuss and wish each other good luck. After these words, the hunters rushed into the dark portal and a beautiful view opened up in front of them. So Donkal, looking back at his squad, ordered them to check their equipment and disperse around the area. Li Changshik notified Bak Heron that he was going to scout the nearby area and asked her not to go anywhere. As soon as the guy left, the girl contacted the black-haired man and told him that hunter number one went to investigate. After listening to this, he was outraged because the guy could personally transmit this information through a radio transmitter. Turning to the rest of the hunters, the guy with the bat notified the others that Li Changshik had gone to investigate. So he ordered the guys to break the main camp into two lines. After listening to the person responsible for the operation, the hunters began to carry out the order. Meanwhile, Chang Ho stood in the office and prayed to all the gods that his friend would pick up the damn phone and the gods would hear him. The dark-haired man answered him and asked what he wanted from him. Restraining his rage, the guy in the suit politely asked why his friend did not take his phone for so long, because they had an extraordinary situation. However, instead of answering, he heard Han Dae Song's dialogue with his mother, he asked her not to take so many unnecessary things to their new home. Falling on a computer chair, Chan Ho asked if the guy was moving. Everything was exactly like that. However, the Lord of Hell bothered to ask what happened. At the same time, the brown-haired one said that a level A portal had opened in Gangnam, and now the association requires all hunters above level B to go there. The black-haired guy was surprised that such a grandiose event was taking place near his house but he still did not understand what kind of portal was there that so many people were called there. At the same time, Chan Ho introduced the guy to the fact that five years ago it was because of the gaps in this portal that there were gaps in others. Three S-class hunters were barely able to close it at that time. In response to this, from the handset of the ruler of hell, he could be heard asking his mother not to take anything from the kitchen utensils and promising her to buy everything new. After that, closing his eyes, the guy wonders if he will be raised if he successfully closes this portal. Hearing such an audacious statement, Chan Ho was dumbfounded and did not know what to answer. Meanwhile, a crowd of blood wolves appeared inside the portal. They occupied the second level of danger, and their favorite delicacy was human blood. Hiding behind the stone, Sodankal said that the monsters were detected for twelve hours, for three hours, also for nine hours. Suddenly, 
one of the hunters noticed another pack of wolves for six hours and transmitted this information through the radio. Looking around, the black-haired man's pupils narrowed because their squad was surrounded by bloodthirsty wolves. Ethers appear if you defeat monsters inside the portal. At the moment there are ethers from class E to class S. Humanity was going to collapse due to unequal development, environmental destruction and inadequate use of natural resources. At this time, ethers appeared that had a special energy. Thereby they helped humanity to avoid the inevitable destruction. More importantly, if you charge the auras with ether and inject them into the awakened one, then his skills will improve significantly. Just as aura weapons are important for attacking portals, so are ethers important for hunters themselves. So Donkal grabbed a glass bottle and ordered the superior hunter to charge with ether. After hearing the order, the salt troops began to inject themselves with ampoules with unknown contents, after which the strength of their aura increased dramatically, and the guys were ready to take the fight. The bloodthirsty monsters rushed into battle, when suddenly a meteorite flew in front of them, which threw the animals. The hunters recognized Li Changshik as the number one hunter in the silhouette that raced by. The blonde guy was running across the desert land and thinking that he did not want to use this ability. However, they have no other choice and the next moment he uses the release of the aura skill on a wide spectrum. A colossal amount of aura burst out of the black-robed guy's body. The blood wolves stood motionless and drooled hungrily, when suddenly a white-haired youth rushed in front of them, who successfully attracted their attention. So Donkal asked the girl to cover their rear while Li Changshik attracts monsters to himself. Starting to execute the command, the guys scattered in different directions. Running away from the crowd of monsters, the blonde-haired man told the elder to run straight. Looking back, Li Changshik made sure that the monsters continued to follow him. Looking straight ahead, Hunter number one saw in front of him rushing from Donkal, who activated the ether in full. Looking at the loaded comrade, Li Changshik handed him the baton. Suddenly, the black-haired hunter pushed off from the ground and soared into the air in order to use the ability that hits millions of enemies at a time or a lightning. Striking his mighty bat on the ground, a bright flash covered the nearby area, and the bodies of the blood wolves were soaked with an electric discharge. Beck Heron activated her fast aura which covered the friendly troops to strengthen the guys and replenish the reserve of energy spent. The guys were spent with such an amazing effect. At the same time, Li Changshik began to slow down, after which he turned around and rushed back into the inferno. Seeing such a brave action, the hunters were tempted and decided to follow the example of hunter number one. At the same time, in the ruins of an abandoned city, people were buying small packages with unknown contents. After the guy in the pink jacket received his dose, the man in the suit called the next one from the queue. Suddenly, his partner appeared from around the corner of the concrete wall and ordered everyone to run away from here as soon as possible. These words could mean only one thing. The uncouth guys ran as fast as they could from the place of the transaction. The black-haired guy with curly hair could not understand how he had come to such a low life. Suddenly, the guys were enveloped in a bright light coming from the headlights of a police car. A voice was heard from the wheelbarrow who ordered those present to drop their weapons and voluntarily surrender, otherwise the guys would be accused of illegal drug trafficking. A black-haired man holding an ugly blade in his right hand curses everything around. Suddenly the door of the state car opened slightly, and an unknown figure in dark shoes appeared in front of the homeless. The man grinned from what he saw. He did not expect that the entire Red Horse clan would slide so much and become garbage. Those present were worried, they did not expect that someone would be able to recognize them, and they wanted to know who was in front of them. At the same time, Zhang Jinchil in a suit stretched out his hand and invited his former comrades to show the new world. The guys opened their mouths. They could not believe what was happening because there was a living dead man in front of them. Meanwhile, the last bloody wolf was exterminated in the A-level portal. The hunters were not too surprised that they managed to clear the portal of such complexity without casualties on their part but some did not expect anything else because they had three S-class heroes with them. Back Heron alternately served the wounded and, having felt the girl's abilities on himself, was simply delighted, because if he had such abilities, he would not have left the portals. However, the girl was not too happy to hear such praise, because she had already told the guy that her skills are very money-guzzling and they definitely need A-class ethers, and if you consider that the downcall also use such an ether, then they plunge into debt. The black-haired man realized that he felt better without treatment, 
but he was already gradually starting to develop immunity to her screams. Li Changshik appeared behind the girl's back, who noticed that Beck Heron was chirping like a bird, hearing such a thing, the girl's rage was replaced by pure fear. At this time, the rest of the hunters were examining the bodies of the defeated monsters and one of the guys was very happy when he was able to detect the B-class ether, when suddenly his head shattered into molecules. The terrified hunters rushed to the guy's aid, but it was too late, an angry and hungry boss of the portal was sitting in front of the hunters. There was still a heated atmosphere around the portal in the Dagakton area, and a defense of military forces was built within a radius of three kilometers from the portal, and hunters from each region flocked to prevent surprises. According to the news, it was broadcast that the legendary trio of S-class hunters are now on the offensive in the portal. Last time during the attack of the B-level portal they cleared it in a short time and the girl asks is it true? Her colleague, who was in the danger zone, says that everything is exactly like that. Last time the hunters cleared the portal in just 6 hours and 21 minutes. But the current attack has been going on for 10 hours. Just as they were interested, the association set a goal to gather A-level hunters from everywhere and finish this mission. The hunters association was closely watching everything that was happening. The chairman decided to find out from a nearby employee when the hunters from the International Hunters Association should arrive, but the girl replies that there has not yet been an official response. The black-haired man notices that now they are in limbo due to the fact that they cannot contact those inside the portal. In response, the woman says that the military forces and their hunters have gathered, also Cho Haniel should arrive at the scene of the incident in eight hours, but for now they can only hope for three S-class hunters. The chairman asks to continue attempts to communicate with the International Association, and if anything, the man's voice breaks off at these words, he decides not to even think about such an outcome, he can only believe in modern heroes. The hunters, who were preparing for a fierce battle, took out their bows and a hail of arrows flew at the huge demonic wolf. However, the beast easily dodged the flying toothpicks and headed towards the annoying ants. The next moment the blood wolf was ready to crush ordinary people with his mighty paw. When suddenly a dark figure in a raincoat burst out of the crowd, hunter number one rushed to confront the giant monster and repelled its attack, after which he used his skill the sword of pleasure. He struck a powerful blow with his blade, but the monster managed to fight off with its claws. After the unsuccessful attack, Li Changshik jumped aside, but the demon was not going to just let go of his victim and began to attack the young hero. The blonde guy successfully parried the attacks of a huge monster, but the pace of blows did not slow down, and soon such a load on the body made itself felt the hope of all mankind bled. The blood wolf was about to finish off the blonde upstart with the next blow, however, so Don Cull saved his partner from imminent death. Now the black-haired man felt on himself what heavy blows Li Changshik took. At the same time Beck Heron had to heal the wounds of a boy in a dark robe. After receiving first aid, the blue-eyed man looks back and declares to the girl that he owes her his life. But the huntress did not want to hear such a thing. The main thing for her is that the guy could stand on his feet because they still have unfinished business here. The cheerful Li Changshik accepted the order from his beloved woman and the next moment charged his blade with ether to the maximum. At the same time, so Don Kalk continued to wave his bat away from the fang monster alone. Suddenly a blonde hunter flew out from around the corner who used the skill of his aura called Tiger Claws. The unshaven man looked at the restless guy and exhaled heavily. The next moment the hero released his tiger aura and in seconds inflicted cutting blows to the mad wolf, after which he collapsed to the ground. Having seen such an incredible sight, the hunters present began to chant the name of their hero. Standing near the carcass of the bloody wolf, the blonde-haired man, as if nothing had happened, straightened his hair, and exhaling from the bottom, noticed that the guy did not do it alone, but for some reason all the laurels go to him again. Suddenly, a terribly loud sound began to reach the hunter's ears and the guys did not understand what was the matter, when suddenly a horde of the same monsters with their leader appeared on the horizon in front of them it was a relatively small wolf and metal armor from which incredible energy power emanated. There was a panic among the hunters. The guys barely defeated one such wolf, and here in front of them a whole handful of the same monsters. Seeing this, the blonde-haired Li Changshik was dumbfounded and could not utter a word. 
but the squad leader tried to keep his calm and ordered the fighters to immediately gather their strength. Soon, the scarlet portal began to sparkle with new colors outside and began to spark furiously. Watching this, the Hunters Association established that this was a gap, a level A portal gap. The people in the observation room were stunned. The girl with glasses noticed with horror that such a thing could not be possible while the portal was being attacked from the inside. At the same time, the chairman had no choice but to assume that a detachment of three S-class hunters had been destroyed, after which the dark-haired man ordered to quickly convey the emergency situation to all reserve hunters of the country immediately. The people sitting at the equipment began to carry out the order and grab their mobile phones. Meanwhile a three-toed foot stepped on the concrete slab it was a wolf in armor wrapped in a colossal amount of energy. Looking out of their portal together with his wool brothers, he noticed that today they would have a feast and with a smile on his face, he declared the hunt open. The gathering place of reserve hunters, Jean Kihan approached the arriving hunters and looking at his tablet, he hurried to clarify whether the Damvancha clan was in place. Then a few uncouth hunters appeared in front of him. There were only three of them and they were B-class fighters. Looking at them, the dark-haired guy asked a question. What kind of a weird name do they use? Next, he called the Chandel clan to him. It consisted of two incredibly strong and fashionable B-class guys. Looking at these clowns, the guy in the earrings was about to shed a tear, when suddenly it was the turn of the Daesung clan. An inconspicuous guy in a shirt came out of the crowd who introduced himself as Han Daesung, and he is a level A hunter. Looking at the youngster, Jean Kihan was surprised because he had been told to follow this guy in the past. However, this was not so important. Soon the person responsible for gathering the reserve forces announced that the participants had been called for a counterattack to prevent the portal from breaking. Listening to this, the disgruntled ruler of hell began to mutter to himself that they, as a support group, would not only not enter the portal, but would not even stand next to it. After thinking about it, he decides that it would be better if Chang Ho contacted him faster, when suddenly he came to his senses that he usually does not answer calls himself. Suddenly, a loud sound came from the side of the building where the portal was located. Hearing this, those present were surprised, and the frightened Jean Kihan was afraid to guess what it could mean, but for Han Dae Song it was great news. An hour before the portal burst, the battlefield was covered with the blood of dishonor and valiant fighters. The ferocious wolf was running towards his next target. However, his mighty strike was blocked by the hunter who was holding a shield in his hand. Having received such a strong blow, the boy began to slide on the ground. For his level it was an unimaginable opponent, but he did not give up and looked his fear straight in the eyes. The boy with the spear lunged in the hope of hitting the demonic creature. One four-eyed monster soared into the sky and was going to crush the bug with his weight. When suddenly a downcall, who repelled such a heavy blow, found himself on the battlefield and struck the monster with his electric aura, after which the black-haired S-class hunter turned to the recruits and said that they had better get ready if they did not want to become food for these lousy dogs. Suddenly, the paw of the blood wolf flew away from the monster's body and fell to the ground. The panting Li Changshik successfully destroyed his enemies. But not only he took a lot of effort to confront the infernal creatures. The blue-eyed kid turned to So Donkal. His strength was running out, and he didn't know how much more time they had to hold out. A scene from the past flashes before his eyes from Donkal. An absolute protector was placed on the table in front of him. The chairman said that this was a development of German scientists, made from a Class S core for a counterattack. After hearing this, the senior hunter is afraid to imagine how much money such a structure costs, but the man declares that the chief executive received it as a gift and in addition, he said that all hunters are like children to him, so he does not feel sorry for such things, if only the guys returned alive. After hearing such sincere words, so Donkal asked to convey his gratitude, and said that they would do everything in their power. Bowing, the chairman says that he believes in the guys and wishes them good luck. At the same time, on the battlefield, 
The down called decides that the moment has come when they will have to use the absolute protector. Looking around, the black-haired man asks if everyone is ready and after a few seconds declares that he is starting. Putting the snow-white cube on the ground, the Donko began its activation. Soon the cube lit up and the energy of the S-class ether began to ooze from its facets, and soon a protective dome appeared over the guys. The hunters present were amazed by such an exciting effect, because a high-class protector that had previously been used in the exam appeared before their eyes. Wild monsters began to attack the emerging dome but their attacks had no effect on such a high-class artifact, and so Donko was proud of the device made in Germany. Suddenly, the leader of the Blood Wolves appeared in front of the barrier. He pushed away from the ground and flew towards the dome, after which he struck a powerful blow from which the polygons of the barrier distorted. Seeing such a terrifying blow, the fighters were afraid because at such a pace the monsters would break their protector. Suddenly the point at which the heavy blow fell turned back like a jelly, thereby detaching the wolf and the cloak from himself. Realizing the problematic nature of this defense, Vols clenched his fangs, while so Dunkal, along with the rest of the hunters, laughed at this amazing sight. Suddenly, a young man turned to the black-haired hunter who was interested in what they should do next, but the man picking his nose said that they had no plan, they should just hold out here. Turning to the rest of the guys, Sodonkal said that if something doesn't work out, then first you need to at least stay alive and then thoughts will appear by themselves. The guy said that the rest of the S-class guys should know what he was talking about, but Lee Changshik and Beck Heron had no idea. The rest of the hunters began to communicate with each other. They were worried that they had no plan for further actions, and while they were discussing it, an unknown hooded figure was hiding behind them. The maniac who created this portal was watching what was happening by getting involved in a group of hunters, but he did not like the situation in which they stopped, so after taking out a mysterious artifact, he decides to change his plans a little. In the next moment, the portal began to sparkle and numerous cracks were coming from it. Looking at this, people were discouraged and they could not understand how this was possible. From the torn portal, the real world and an abandoned building became visible. Seeing this, the wolf in armor smiled bloodthirstily and noticed that they still had some sense. There he decides to arrange his dinner party. On the asphalt near the portal, military forces were located that tried to restrain demonic creatures from the busy streets of Korea. But suddenly the bloody wolves broke through the fire defense and struck the soldiers with their claws. In the night sky, a monster in armor ascended above his brothers, after which he landed on the road. Immediately, the guns of the military were turned on the wolf in the red robe, but the metal bullets only buzzed like flies. Once waving its mighty weapon, the monster scattered the pathetic bugs in different directions. Suddenly, drones began to circle over the monster in metal gear. The wolf took a close look at the entertaining things and then decided to exterminate them with his breath. Due to the powerful roar, the flying electronics began to fail and the connection with the image coming to the screen was lost. In a rage, the chairman hit the control panel. After that he turned to the nearest guy and asked how things were going with the movement of the monster squad. In response, a confused employee said that they were now at Building H. The dark-haired man demanded to connect a high-level satellite screen and ordered to send reserve detachments to the portal. Korea at night was illuminated by a bright moon. A quadrocopter was flying in the dim sky. The kid under the nickname Seventh Dragon Young Soul greeted his viewers, and his broadcast took place directly from the scene of the incident. So for the sake of the video he put his life on the line. Standing on the roof of the building, he takes the drone under his control with the intention of shooting all the most interesting shots and thereby he wants to fulfill his dream to become the most famous streamer. After the guy gathered his thoughts, he asked the audience to write one to the chat if they could see the picture from the drone and two if not. The guys in the chat were writing units when they suddenly started writing to the chat that there was something behind the kid, but the blonde did not really appreciate this humor because he was risking his life anyway, and the audience was making fun of him. That's what he thought until he decided to look around. 
In front of the streamer sat a huge wolf who licked the clotted blood from his woolly beard, and from his mouth you could see the protruding limb of the previous victim. Seeing the monster, the boy's face turned pale and covered with sweat. Suddenly a severed limb fell on the concrete roof covering, and then the streamer jumped back in fear and fell to the ground. The blood wolf opened its wide mouth and rushed at the sweet kid, and he in turn began to call his mom. When suddenly the monster's huge head flew off his shoulders and swept past the streamer, the next moment the ruler of hell appeared in front of the youngster, dressed in his armor and holding his legendary sword. The blond-haired boy could not utter a word because his body was experiencing the wildest stress. At the same time the face of the defeated monster was flying away from the skyscraper and the flying drone recorded everything that happened. Looking at the brutal dark-haired guy, he recognized him as his past savior, and it was Han De Song. The next moment, the ruler of hell disappeared from the roof. At the same time the streamer rushed to his drone control panel. The guy who grew up in the ghetto found himself on the marked land, and in front of him stood a strange wolf in a red raincoat, and not only he alone, but all his brothers. However, the dark-haired man was not even embarrassed. On the contrary, with a smile on his face, he asked since when so many smelly dogs have been divorced in this area and also where is their pathetic owner. Upon hearing such a statement, the monster wrapped in metal armor clenched his fangs with rage, after which, with an axe in his hands, he tore at the careless scoundrel. A bright light illuminated the road from the collision of the strongest, but do not worry, the road was not damaged. The great Han De Song easily blocked the attack, and the strongest egoist asked if he should also strike. At this time, citizens were standing at the entrance to the bomb shelter near the Fells building and demanded that the doors be opened to them as soon as possible. Some of the people came across a stream in which the battle was being shown. Thus, all the people present got on the stream of the idol, seeing that a record number of viewers more than a hundred thousand people came on its air the guy swallowed saliva. And what surprised the blonde-haired guy that the kid who saved him from imminent death had not died yet, but still continued his fight. Looking back, the streamer wondered if he should already run for cover. Ion, who was standing in the observation room, also got on the live broadcast and said that the chairman should see it. Looking at the mobile phone screen, the man recognized this figure after which he demanded to immediately display the picture on the general screen. At the same time, the great Han De Song appeared before the leaders of the hunting association. The observers identified the boy because he recently took first place in the exam. However, the chairman, like others, could not understand why the guy is absolutely alone in the heat. A bunch of bloody wolves attacked the young man in armor, and the next moment they swallowed him as it seemed at first glance but in fact the black-haired man stood apart from the hungry wolves and mockingly asked them who did they lose. At the same time, fierce glances full of a thirst for murder were directed at the Lord of Hell, after which the wolves again began their reckless attack. At the same time, Han De Song plunged his stormy blade into the ground and uttered just one word rage. In the next moment, the crowd of mad wolves was covered with unbridled flames, howling in agony. The monsters burned in their sins, after which the subdued dogs fell to the asphalt. However, the vast hack of the pack did not stand aside and, seeing the suffering of his brothers, waved his mighty axe, thereby blowing away the blazing fire. Soon the monsters got back on their feet, not forgetting to express gratitude to their master. The wolf in armor orders the guys to continue cleaning the rest of the places while he deals with this insolent. Hearing such an audacious statement, the ruler of hell could not hide his smile. He was pleased to see such a confident doggy. After that, he decides to show who is the real master on this earth, and with a growing smile, he calls his demons from hell. The space around the devil king began to distort, and incredible energy began to emanate from him. The earth was once again enveloped in a magical light. Smelling such vile energy— even the bloodthirsty monster grimaced, but not only he, but also the nearby streamer could not understand what was happening. At the same time, a ball arc appeared in the sky, 
squatting on his pet seeing this, the guide began to stutter because a real dragon was in front of him. However, the performance did not end there. The Lord continued to call his troops. The chairman, who was watching everything that was happening from the observation room, opened his mouth wide and continued to stand silently. That night, something unimaginable happened in Korea for human eyes, which caught this phenomenon. Some hunters began to beg their Lord for mercy. Soon, the great Han Dae Song stood surrounded by his mighty subjects, seeing such unimaginable power. Even the stupid dogs lowered their heads in fear. Now the dark-haired man boldly declared that he would take this dog on himself, and the summoned demons would have to get rid of the rest of the garbage. Balor, sitting on his dragon, stood in front of a crowd of helpless monsters and Jean Kihan with a reserve squad of hunters watched everything that was happening from the side. Suddenly, the winged monster dug its huge fangs into the poor mutt after which the dragon's mouth closed and the wolf was split. Jean Kihan, who was watching this with his own eyes, was no longer able to understand what was going on here. Did the demons begin to exterminate each other? Or was this dragon an ally such thoughts were spinning in his head? Suddenly, a huge Morgenstern fell on one of the monsters, thereby crushing the dead wolf, after which the summoned demon raised his mighty weapons and continued his hunt. The helpless wolves wanted to leave the slaughterhouse, but the powerful bark also did not stand aside. He did not understand how such low creatures decided to resist such a noble being. The blood wolves had no choice but to whine pitifully, but the demon knew no mercy. Meanwhile, in a sealed bomb shelter, everyone present looked at the screen of their phone and watched what was happening on the surface but people could not understand what kind of madness was happening on earth monsters attacked monsters for some reason. Meanwhile, the doors leading to the association's observation room opened and a friend of the black-haired man entered them. Chan Ho introduced himself to the audience and stated that he was on the same team with Han Dae Song. The excited chairman thanked the guy for coming so quickly and since the guy was clearly aware of the situation, the man asked him to answer their questions right now. First of all, the man asked the guy what he could tell about Han Dae Song. Meanwhile, in the blood arena, the wolf in armor realized that the power used by the dark-haired guy did not come from this world. And based on this, the monster had one question, who the hell is this person? However, the smiling Han Dae Song, in turn, asked the lousy dog, did she not understand herself who was standing in front of her? At the same time, the guy no longer began to restrain his demonic energy and gradually began to step towards his enemy. The monster in metal armor declared that he was the king of the white wolves, after which, rushing from his place, he ordered the impudent man to bow before him. With these words, the monster in the red cloak struck his dazzling blow, from which the ground under the feet of the ruler of hell began to part at the seams but the guy absolutely calmly blocked such an attack. After which the dark-haired man asked frighteningly, Are you done? At the moment, the wolf lost all his confidence, and soon his instincts sounded the alarm. Han Dae Song began to strike with his sword. It was impossible to follow his movements. The only thing that was visible was the afterimages of the dark-haired guy. The king of the white wolves held an axe in front of him and held the blows. Meanwhile, the dark-haired man decided to ask since when has a level A gate boss been some kind of lousy dog. After these words, the sword of the ruler of hell digs into the ground, and the helpless monster in a red cloak dodges the insane attack. Looking back, the ruler of hell asks the dog why she is tumbling? However, the wary beast could not say a word. At the same time Han Dae Song lowers his sword and offers the wolf king to try to do something. Without thinking twice, the cowardly king rushes away from the real monster. Looking at this, the dark-haired one stops. Did he not come up with anything better than to escape? At this time, the ferocious wolf continued to overcome kilometers of distance. He decides to return back to his land, because he was not ready to meet such a demonic force from pandemonium. Suddenly, Han Dae Song appears near the beast who claims that dogs should not jump on two legs, after which the monster accelerates. 
However, the Lord of Hell will make him become an exemplary dog. After that, the black-haired guy tripped the fleeing monster. At that moment the werewolf realized all his helplessness, and his life flashed before his eyes. The king of the white wolves rode like Sonic through the night streets. Satisfied, Han De Song turned to the monster and stated that no one allowed the dog to return to his booth. At that moment, the summoned dragon opened its powerful mouth and headed straight for the armored monster. The white wolf regretted again that he had come to this planet, but it was too late to regret. The snow-white dragon struck its crushing blow. Having trampled a small bug into the asphalt with its mighty paws, the reptile rose into the air again. Meanwhile the battered wolf was giving up its spirit. But the Lord of Hell was not going to spare the mongrel and taking out his mighty sword, he demanded the core of the monster. At the same time, Sodankal turned around and asked if everyone had left the portal except the wounded. Looking back, the hunting party saw in front of them a deserted street littered with corpses of the military. Gritting his teeth, the squad leader cursed his leadership, because so far no one has come to the rescue from the International Association. Examining the wounded, Beck Heron said that she would try to cure those who could still be saved, and the rest should go to the boss of the portal as soon as possible. Hearing the girl's wish, the black-haired S-class hunter was about to rush into battle, as Li Changshik's friend asked the elder to wait a little and prepare for the upcoming battle. But the red-eyed hunter did not share his friend's opinion. He would prefer not to waste time even if he had to fight naked, after which he rushed into the attack with the rest of the guys. The territory of the construction site, the evening, the place of origin of the portal. The legendary Beck Heron stayed in this area to help the victims, when suddenly her head was visited by the 58th sign. Raising her head warily, she realized what kind of sign it was, because an angry white wolf was in front of her face. The monster rushed at the defenseless huntress, who did not even have time to activate the shield spell, when suddenly the monster's head flew past the girl, after which the severed brand flew several more blocks. In front of the helpless Beck Heron stood her savior, and he was the magnificent Han De Song. The startled girl could not utter a word, she continued to sit with her mouth open. The Lord of Hell turned his gaze on the girl and asked her if she was also a hunter. However, the black-haired woman could not utter a word, she could not believe her eyes, because these monsters suppressed the top ranker Li Changshik, but this stranger coped in an instant. Suddenly, the Lord of Hell was attacked by a white-haired hunter, but Han De Song had no difficulty dodging such a pathetic attack. Seeing the incomprehensible audacity of her comrade, Beck Heron called out to Li Changshik and not only she, the squad leader also acted. Hearing the voices of his comrades, the blue-eyed guy was surprised to realize that a man was standing in front of him. After this conclusion, he stopped near the guys. The top S-class hunter couldn't take his eyes off Han Dae Song. It was hard for him to believe that this stranger had so easily dodged an attack with a loaded sword. After his gross mistake, the white-haired guy hurried to apologize to the ruler of hell. The reason he attacked Han Dae Song was that he mistook him for a monster. Hearing these words, those present were slightly surprised. At the same time, the black-haired guy decided to clarify why he decided so. In response, Li Changshik stated that only monsters they hunt in portals emit such an aura. But the hunter noticed that the stranger was stronger than all those with such an aura whom he had met. Hearing this, Han De Song was slightly surprised, because he did not even suspect that there was a hunter who was able to see his demonic energy. After a few brief words, the white-haired man still bothered to introduce himself properly, stating that he was the CEO of the Chasen clan, and his name was Li Changshik. The Lord of Hell uttered his great name, Han De Song, with a slight grin. Soon, the young heroes were gathered in the office of the chief executive, he sincerely thanked everyone present for their hard work. So Donkal hastened to notice that the chairman's gift came in handy, because thanks to him, many hunters survived. However, the blue-eyed guy did not really want to listen to this, he was more interested in how the monsters got out. In turn, Beck Heron awkwardly asked what kind of person Han De Song was, she believes that there is no point in the association to cultivate a secret weapon, and the guy literally came from nowhere. She was also worried about the question of how a man who had been confined to a hospital bed for a long time became so strong in such a short period of time. 
Among those present at the meeting was a mysterious guy in a mask who did not utter a word. His name is Cho Hanul and he is the leader of the Marble Clan, and he also ranks fifth in the ranking. Park Chang Ho, after listening to everyone's opinion, did not think long and said that for a detailed explanation of what happened, you need to ask the kid directly. But now he has another question. Do those present agree to raise the rank of Hunter Han Dae Song to S class? Upon hearing this, the black-haired hunter in a red tie said that their opinion would decide something, because the public had already recognized him as an S-ranked hero. The girl, in turn, without hesitation voted for an increase with the hope that fewer of them would stop being used. Li Changshik also said that even if you don't want to be here, you can still accept the promotion, because Han Dae Song single-handedly closed the A-rank portal. After listening to the guy's statement, the gray-haired old man turned to Cho Hanul and asked his opinion. At the same time, the guy said that in his opinion, Han Dae Song's S-rank was originally. Upon hearing this, those present were not a little surprised. At that time, there was a special stream on the Yomael channel on which a special guest appeared, namely the leader of the clan of Pickers of Squabbles, the greatest Mr. Anderson. The young streamer hastened to clarify with the mighty old man how he knew the newly minted hero Han Dae Song. At the same time the pensioner began his story with the fact that their unusual relationship began at the hunter's exam. At the same time, someone's hand was furiously clicking on a computer mouse, going into the recommendations from the popular new tube city. You could see how the newly minted hero beat all the ratings. Chan Ho, sitting at the monitors, was in complete shock, because all the social networks were just trumpeting his name Robert Paulson, it was enough just to add the name of the ruler of hell to the video, and the views immediately fly up to a million. The kid in the suit was completely shocked, because they hit the real jackpot. Suddenly, the door to his office opened and Han Dae Song appeared on the threshold. A friend was glad to greet the young superstar. Jumping up from his chair, he opened his hands and began to praise the black-haired man because he was the treasure of their clan. However, the ruler of hell was not very happy with this turn of events, and also mentioned the past words of his friend who recommended fleeing the battlefield if it became dangerous. Upon hearing this, Chang Ho was embarrassed and said in a flash that he was just worried that his friend could have been badly hurt, but however it was not so important, because Han Dae Song was the best. However, the dark-haired man was not very worried about this, he wanted to know why his old friend had called him here. At the same time, Chang Ho grinned and smilingly declared that it was time to go for an S-rank hunter's license. Soon, broadcasting began on all TV channels, because at that time the Hunters Association gathered a large number of fans and foreign reporters. The reason for this was the increased interest in Hunter Han Dae Song, who closed the gap of the portal in Gangnam. The most impressive moment was the number of his calls, which made a huge contribution to cleaning up the monsters that broke through a red carpet, and a stage were laid in front of the Hunters Association. A black Mercedes was driving on the asphalt, and soon the car stopped at the curb, and the main character of all the news got out of the transport. The carefree ruler of hell and his faithful friend Chang Ho appeared before the society. Upon seeing the young hero, a crowd of fans began to shout the name of the great hunter. They were fans of different ages and different nations. However, the ruler of hell did not like such attention. He did not expect that Chan Ho's words about his increased popularity would turn out to be true. Suddenly, a cheerful guy in a suit elbowed the black-haired man and said that it was not worth being sullen, but instead it was worth waving to his fans. The great ruler of hell resigned himself to his fate and, letting everything go, raised his hand, and at the same moment admiring shouts began to be heard from the crowd. Someone from the crowd even begged him to marry. Soon, Park Chong Ho, on behalf of the head of the association, hurried to thank the newly minted hunter Han Dae Song for closing the A-rank portal, because his help helped to avoid serious damage. Upon hearing this, Chong Ho stated that they were just doing their job and nothing more. However, the gray-haired old man did not want to listen to this and called his secretary. Soon, a small box opened in front of the eyes of those present in which there was a golden badge on which the letter S was engraved. The brown-haired guy opened his mouth in surprise, because he did not expect that in this life he would be able to see with his own eyes the badge of a hunter of the highest level, which ordinary people cannot touch. 
At that moment, Park Chong Ho officially congratulated Han Dae Song on becoming the sixth S rank hunter in South Korea, as well as the license. The association will gladly provide the newly minted S rank hunter with everything he needs within their capabilities, so do not hesitate to ask for anything. Hearing this, the black haired man woke up and hurried to ask again, Can he really ask for anything? The old man waved his head in response, giving his approval. At the same time, a smirk appeared on the face of the ruler of hell. Roman was sitting in his office at that time. He was filled with anger because all his victims had been taken away, and Han De Song was to blame for this. At this time, the old man remembered the words of Cho Hano, who mentioned the new hero, saying that his abilities were at a completely different level, and would the association be able to refuse him at least some kind of request? The chief executive took his mind off his thoughts and looked at the black-haired guy who was thinking what to ask the association, and soon opening his eyes, Han Dae Song demanded that his appeals could raid portals independently. Upon hearing this, the man bulged his eyes, and beads of sweat stood out on his forehead. One day, one of the houses in the capital, an unknown figure was sitting in an apartment at a gaming computer and clicking the mouse. She was watching the news that was filled with a new figure namely Han Dae Song. Seeing this, the girl grinned saying his name. It was the Inferno which Ryu Son from the Fortress Clan and ranked fifth in the Hunter rating. The girl was sure that a chosen one appeared before her, who would surely be able to solve her problem. Getting up from the table in pink socks, the girl went for a walk around her house humming one of her favorite tunes. Soon she opened one of the doors of her house and maliciously let her father in. The man was very surprised. Jumping up from his chair, he could not believe his eyes because his beloved daughter Son had not left her room for six months because of her social phobia. However, the girl had a reason to do so, because she had a request, and upon hearing this, the old man asked with the same surprise. At the same time, the leader of the clan, the unshakable spirit of Ohishu, was beside himself with anger, because now that Han De Song is gradually squeezing out all the portals— the rest of the hunters are only allowed to starve to death. And he was not at all outraged by this question. Many people did not like this, because Han De Song does not put business etiquette in anything and monopolizes all portals for himself. After listening to this, the man had a headache, because his worst fears came true. Who would have thought that the guy would clean up all the dungeons with calls in such a short time? Ohishu continued to vent his anger because they managed not to get into debt by selling cores and other things from portals. But now they are not even able to pay the clan members' salaries. The black-haired man was distraught that only the bastard Han Dae Song was allowed to raid portals. It was the same as launching a catfish into a pond with small fish. Listening to all the complaints, the man did not know what actions everyone expected from him, because the permission to clean the portals was issued directly by the head of the association and it is beyond his competence. Oh Hyuksa demanded that Han Daesong's rights be immediately restricted so that he could raid portals of at least B rank and allow other clans to participate in raids on A-ranked ones. All hunters in South Korea would benefit from this. After listening to such a proposal, the man in the suit said that he understood the feelings of those present and would try to do something about it. Meanwhile, in one of the skyscrapers, a notification appeared on the screen notifying of the loss. Seeing this, the ruler of hell gritted his teeth. He could not understand how he was defeated over and over again in this stupid game. Suddenly, the phone rang on the table. Picking up the phone, Dae Song greeted his friend Chan Ho. But he began to yell into the phone because this was not the first attempt to reach Dae Song and Chan Ho did not understand why he had to constantly yell. After listening to the screams of his comrade, the black-haired man said that he did not answer the call because he was busy with a very important matter right now. In response, Chang Ho sarcastically agreed that some games were very important, and then the ruler of hell did not even know what to say in his defense. The high-rise building in which the new clan settled was called the Daesong clan, and its leader was Chang Ho. The reason that the guys gathered in this office was that the association sent a request in order to adjust the portal tenders. After hearing this, the black-haired man did not immediately understand what was the matter. At the same time, the guy in the suit explained that from now on they will have the opportunity to qualify for dungeons only of rank B and higher, 
starting with A-rank dungeons they will have to participate together with other clans. Chang Ho noticed that with his fierce monopoly on portals due to appeals, the guy created a sea of financial problems for small and medium-sized clans. At the same time Dae Song agreed that he already had no need to take on low-level portals, because during this time they had already earned well. The brown-haired man cautiously asked his friend, is he really not mad at this at all? But Dae Song had nothing to be angry about, because he had already raked in a fucking cloud of money. In this, Chang Ho was very much in agreement, because to clean portals like other clans, they do not need a lot of people who need to be paid, so it takes a little time to clean the portal, and that's why each raid results in a maximum plus. Thanks to this they acquired this clan building. After listening to this, Han Dae Song suggested to his friend to raid the most valuable portals, and the small ones can be left to the rest. Looking at the black-haired Chan Ho noticed that the asshole also had a business vein in front of him. Suddenly, the brown-haired guy mentioned the equipment that Dae Song had given for sale earlier. The fact is that he does not think that he will sell such things to hunters, given that they cannot be charged with ether. After hearing this, the ruler of hell was disappointed. She counted on the money to buy buildings in the name of her mother and sister. But Chan Ho said that it is not worth getting upset yet, because all is not lost, because there is a professor named Park Donghek, who can work on this equipment so that it becomes commercially available. Upon hearing this, the ruler of hell repeated the name he had heard, then Chan Ho hurried to tell in more detail about this great personality, because this man is an incomparable expert in the field of aura weapons, as well as a friend of the leader of the Soul Clan. However, the brown-haired one reports that it will not be possible to arrange a meeting through Huang Yunghyun because the leader of the Soul Clan was arrested and imprisoned, but Jang Ho already has another person in mind who may be aware of the professor's location. The emotionless Han Dae Song, after listening to a whole lecture from his friend, tried to express his surprise. Late in the evening, it was pouring rain on the street and through the puddle that appeared on the asphalt, you could see someone's reflection but soon it was erased. This figure was a mysterious black-haired woman who walked calmly despite the heavy downpour. There was firm confidence in her blue eyes. She was ready to do anything to return to the hunters again. After that she walked away. Meanwhile, inside the C-rank portal, a clan called Unshakable Spirit conducted its raid on this dungeon. A well-fed warrior used stun against his opponent after which the monster grabbed his head and the hunter called his leader who was preparing to deliver the final blow. Tense, Ohashi rushed towards the ogre, and the next moment the monster was cut into the smallest details by the sharpest blades. After that, the skin meat rushed to the ground, turning around, Hashi looked at his squad, which was already celebrating its great victory over the C-rank portal. Suddenly, the black-haired man's attention was attracted by something, namely, a detachment of unknown people was approaching behind him in the desert fog. Soon, Zhang Jinchil appeared in front of the guys, who mocked the small fry who got in his way, but he was not going to let them go just like that and the next moment ordered his guys to do it. A crowd of humanoid mutants rushed from behind the blonde guy. A wary squad of fighters did not understand what was the matter, because in front of them were not hunters but real monsters. Looking at the faces of the rushing mad monsters, the worried leader of the unshakable spirit clan ordered his guys to prepare for battle with fear in his voice. Thus, the desert and the hangover became an arena for carnage, but the battle did not last long. Soon, the defeated head of the unshakable spirit clan was touched by Zhang Jinical with two fingers and the next moment he applied his transformation power, and the next moment his face began to distort. Opening his golden eyes, Zhang Jinchul has already appeared in a new guise, he has become a new Ofyuksu and now it will be even easier for him to plunge this rotten world into house. Meanwhile, an important topic was broadcast on the news, recently cases of missing persons have become more frequent, and it was already the twelfth one just this month, and the strangest thing is that ten people disappeared at the same time. Han Daesong's family were enthusiastically watching TV. Han Jisu was very surprised by what she heard, because in what strange ghetto they live so that ten people disappear at the same time, is this really the case of aliens? However, the mother of the family did not care much and she asked her daughter not to leave the house temporarily, after which the mother looked at her son and asked if he was hungry, 
turned around, Kan Jisoo was scared and accused her brother, because why sneak up so quietly? Soon the mother asks what is better to serve to the table, and the embarrassed ruler of hell wished for a lot of meat. After that he looked at the TV again and thought specifically. At the same time, a figure in a white robe approached the mysterious altar. A dozen hearts were placed in a special vessel for sacrifices, and the next moment Elder Hans began to chant a spell that meant the beginning of the ritual. Soon his clenched hands shone even brighter, and the torn hearts also lit up with light and also trembled. After that, the man in the white robe walked away from the altar and turned to his like-minded people. At the same moment the guys in red robes hurried to fall on their knees in order to greet their grandiose god. A man named Roman said that they were very lucky, because in Khans there is a person who is connected with Han De Song. In this regard, the elder decided to transfer the will of the Lord to the blonde guy and ordered him to eliminate Han De Song. This cultist turned out to be Zhang Jinchul, who was incredibly happy about the upcoming mission because now he will be able to accomplish his long-awaited revenge with the help of new powers. At this time, a soccer ball landed on the coast of the Blue Sea and a black-haired boy ran after his toy. But as soon as he squatted down to pick up the ball, a mysterious light illuminated his face. The kid looked in surprise towards the light source and was delighted because there was a beautiful flower in front of him. But the others did not share the joy of the youngster, and the normal grown-up people present on the beach decided to take a look at what was happening in the water. A scarlet portal opened in front of the vacationers in the middle of the sea water, which distorted the space. Soon this information was passed on by a girl with glasses to her boss and stated that this sea portal is presumably a rank, and also for the safety of civilians, police and military were sent there, in response. The man straightening his tie said that such a water portal and complexity could be close to S rank and this is a serious matter. Upon entering the observation room, the chief asked the woman if the woman had sent a request to all the clans for assistance in raiding this portal. In response, the girl stated that the top five were taking part in the tender. Upon hearing this, the man asked again and was surprised, because what are the hunters thinking about competing in the tender for clearing the A rank portal? At the same time the girl adjusting her glasses, noticed that the conditions are the same for everyone. This fact also confused the man a little, which caused a drop of sweat to form on his forehead. At this time, in the main building of the Han Daesong clan, the clan leader was confused and thought to himself why such an important person had come to them, and it was clearly not his day. In front of him on the couch sat Dvalni Sodongkal, he officially addressed the leader of the clan and warned that he did not know how to beat around the bush, so he was going to say right away in fact, after listening to this, Chan Ho was not against it. At the same time, the red-eyed hunter crossed his arms with a smile and offered the guy cooperation with his Voromph clan in cleaning up the new portal. The next moment, the brown-haired guy, discouraged, pulled his hands to his face and was about to politely refuse when suddenly the door to the office violently opened. And on the threshold in front of So Dongkal was his old friend in a white jacket, it was Li Changshik. Now Jang Ho was completely fucked up, because another person who occupied the first place in Korea appeared in his office. Li Changshik was also glad to see his friend, but he had a question to hell with the person sitting in front of him, because So Dongkal asked off this time not to go to the portal with the rest in order to play with the children which raises the question of what the fuck he forgot here. The blonde guy also did not stand on ceremony for a long time and, having scored on his shameless comrade, politely addressed the leader Chan Ho and invited him to go along with his Josian clan to participate in a raid on the water portal. The situation was getting worse by the second, because this hunter was of an onological opinion, as was his comrade. Soon, in the Ocean Clan's meeting room, a girl named Beck Heron stated that she was determined to provide all possible assistance to Hunter Han Dae Song in gratitude for saving her life. She did not hesitate to declare that her Ocean Clan intends to fully support Mr. Hunter Han Dae Song in the upcoming raid on the water portal. Those present could not believe their ears, because a real sensation was born in front of them, namely, the news that the newly minted S rank hunter saved the well known Beck Heron should smash all social networks as well as everything said today can be a new tandem of Han Dae Song and Bak Heron. 
the deputy leader of the Marble Clan and at the same time Cho Hanul's brother turned to the younger one and said that at his request he informed them of their readiness to provide the Dae Song Clan with a newly developed S-rank or a weapon. However, Cho Hanuk does not understand at all why his brother would raid the portal with this Han Dae Song. But okay, he is also here and the other leaders are fussing. In response to the words, the guy in the mask briefly replied that he wanted to see. At the same time, the black-haired man asked what exactly his brother wanted to see. The leader of the Marble Clan clenched his fist with all his might and replied that he wanted to personally take a look at an unknown force beyond the S rank. At the same time, Han Dae Song took a golden pendant and watch in his hand, after which, in front of the summoned demons, he ordered them to inhabit these artifacts in order to protect his family. After listening to the order of their lord, the shadows humbly accepted the order and declared that if necessary, they would immediately sacrifice their miserable lives in order to fulfill the will of their king. A red portal opened in the middle of a deserted park and soon the great Han Dae Song came out of it. The half-naked girl leaned over to the guy and hurried to ask if that portal was the source of Mr. Han Dae Song's power. However, the black-haired guy was in no hurry to answer the stranger's question and in turn asked what kind of little thing was in front of him. Having endured such an attitude towards herself, the girl decided to introduce herself properly and stated that they had not yet met, but her name was Ryu Son and she was a member of the Fortress clan. After listening to this, the guy decided to ask where the baby from Fortress found out how to find him, to which the girl said that she was not a baby and she had the name Ryu Son. After that, the girl suddenly leaned closer to the guy, thereby confusing the Lord of Hell, and he maliciously asked what she was allowing herself. At the same time, Ryu Son, looking into his eyes, said that they were similar, and she really needed Mr. Han Dae Song's help. Without hesitation, the guy pushed the approaching girl away with the words leave me alone. When suddenly she disappeared, thereby scaring the great demon lord, a small knitted doll turned out to be in the place of the standing girl. Looking at her, the guy wondered if the girl who was in front of him was a ninja. Suddenly, the black-haired guy felt that demonic energy emanated from the fallen doll. Meanwhile, people gathered on the pier by the sea, and a snow-white flag with the emblem of the fortress clan was flying near this group of people. The assembled clan members were waiting for the start of the upcoming operation, when suddenly a mysterious creature flashed in the sky and in the opinion of those present it was a real dragon, and they were not mistaken. It was a real dragon on whose back sat a real monster Han Dae Song. The guys parted and created a kind of passage for the new legend, but Dae Song did not even pay attention to the excited glances and walked past his fans. Suddenly, the black-haired guy stopped and froze. Ryu Son was sitting in front of him, who was beside herself with anger. She wanted to fuck everyone up on this pier. When suddenly she felt a gaze on her and came to her senses, Finally silence reigned in her soul again. However, Desson was not very interested in what this crazy woman was thinking. He immediately asked her a question. Is she also from hell? At the same moment, the girl jumped up and asked again, after which she stated that that place was definitely hell. Yes, she was from hell. Exactly hell. While the girl repeated this hundreds of times, Desson looked at her and wondered what was wrong with this brat. The girl distracted him from his thoughts and began to madly say that the moment when it is possible turns into exactly, all this is possible only in the presence of Mr. Day's song, and also with him the nauseating noise disappears, after that the girl offers to score on the portal. When suddenly her madness is interrupted by Bakharin, who asks the witch to stop talking nonsense. After hearing this, the girl frowned, saying that another tick had stuck for attention, but Beck Heron did not want to hear anything and announced that she had been appointed the main one in Mr. Daesong's support team. The whole scene was watched by a satisfied Jong Jinchul in the guise of Ofyuksu. The ruler of hell noticed this nasty look and thought to himself that the number of bastards who want to ride on his hump continues to grow. At this time, the hell witch continued to get angry and think to herself, she already knew that all the others were worthless, but Beck Heron is the most terrible of all. However, the girl was also not very happy about this meeting and decided to clarify, does Ryu Son really think that if she stares so madly, she will scare the huntress who has already healed the guys who suffered from her curse in the past? The witch did a lot of business in that raid and then disappeared from all radars, 
and now she reappeared and didn't even say thank you. While the Lord of Hell was walking away, the girls behind him staged a real massacre. Looking back, the black-haired guy asked if they had enough quarreling. The crazy woman was beside herself with happiness because it seemed to her that the gentleman took her side, but this was not the case at all, and the black-haired woman was surprised how he noticed it without even looking back. Soon, Dae Song boarded the fifth and first boat with Ryu Son, and the hunting team set off. Standing on the boat, the ruler of hell did not know where he had sinned and why he was being bullied. Meanwhile the inferno which enjoyed every second of her life because she no longer hears voices. However, they were not the only ones who could give problems to the great Han Dae Song, because he did not yet know that Zhang Jinchul was watching him. Soon the boats reached their destination, and every second they flew into the portal. It was pitch dark inside the red portal, and Beck Heron was well aware that in such a shitty visibility, they were too vulnerable to surprise attacks, so they should be on guard. The girl decides to use one of her light detection abilities after which the ball she created soared into the sky and illuminated the surrounding area. The hunters who witnessed this miracle were greatly admired by the skills of the universal S-rank huntress. However, the girl did not pay attention to this praise. She was extremely worried about something else. Apart from the motor of the boats and the splashing of the water, nothing was heard. There was complete silence in the sea, when suddenly Beck Heron announced that something was approaching them and the guys should be ready. At the same moment, the hunters began to load the cores and prepare for the battle with the monsters, but soon they were very puzzled. Looking at the water, the guys saw harmless little creatures in front of them. To some extent they were even cute. The tense hunters escaped with a slight fright. It was even a sin to kill such cute creatures, when suddenly a boat with a crew soared into the sky. And the reason for this was Queen Geiger, a dangerous species of the first rank. Beck Heron was stunned. It was the first time she had seen a free monster, but not only she, the other hunters also did not imagine how to fight with it. Before the cute creatures began to fly out of the mouth of a terrible monster, after one of the creatures struck the youngster, the guys began to realize how wrong they were. However, victims among the race of people were avoided. The bonds with which the inattentive hunters were caught were immediately cut by a flying dagger. Soon, the blade like a boomerang returned to its owner's hands, and it was the great Han Dae Song. Looking at the impending threat, the guy smiled because he would be able to return home much faster than he expected, when suddenly the monster decided to hide under the water, thereby breaking off the hopes of the ruler of hell. Enraged, the black-haired man decided to turn to the baby and said that if she helped him, he would solve her problem. The girl couldn't believe her ears, she started asking hundreds of times if he was telling the truth for sure, and the black-haired man said that he was responsible for his words, so it's better for the little one to stop jumping like crazy and get that bastard who is hiding under the water for him. Ryu Son gladly agreed to fulfill this order. At this time, Beck Heron was trying to keep the balance on the boat, when suddenly the ruler of hell spoke on the radio. He asked the huntress to deal with the fast ones who were already on the approach. However, the girl did not understand what she was talking about and decided to look at the sky, and at the same second her pupils narrowed and cold sweat appeared on her skin, because there was a swarm of vicious insects in front of her. While the hunters were fighting with all their might against the infernal creatures, the blonde guy stood calmly and watched all this, when suddenly Zhang Jinchul with a smile on his face declared that it was time to start after which, he activated the power of stealth, at which point he declared the hunt for hunters open. At the same time, Ryu Son took off her clothes and used a skill called the alluring scent of death. Dae Song, who was watching this, expected something like this, the next moment the girl jumped overboard of her ship. Seeing this madness, the guys did not have time to say a word to stop the girl, as there was not a trace of her left. Meanwhile, Inside one of the cafes, an unknown person was slowly climbing the wooden stairs, at the same time the girl was already sitting at the table and looking out the window. Chan Ho came up to the table, he was pleasantly surprised, even though he came ten minutes earlier, but his interlocutor is already here. However, the girl, correcting her cap, said that she had also literally just arrived, 
The guy in the suit did not focus much on this and decided to introduce himself properly, and the girl followed his example. Her name is Shinchon from the Soul Clan. While the couple were chatting sweetly at a cozy table, the hell which continued to plunge into the depths of the dark sea, reaching a certain depth, she put out her hands and began to spread her aura, thereby beckoning the monster. Soon, purple energy enveloped the depths of the sea and the next moment the witch smiled because she caught a fish on her hook. A giant monster was already floating up to her from the very bottom. Soon the monster looked out of the water, and at the same moment Beck Heron ordered everyone to focus on the battle, after which she erected a barrier to repel enemy attacks. At this time, the black-haired lord of hell suggested that the monster swallowed some kind of doll instead of Ryusone, which is exactly what she did to him last time. However, it was not so important that the girl completed her task and now Han Dae Song could start his hunt. The black-haired guy pushed off from the boat, and spread his demonic wings and rushed straight at the giant monster. After flying a sufficient distance from the boat, tentacles with cute bait flew in his direction, but the guy coolly chopped down the approaching minions, thereby flawlessly repelled the enemy attack. When Queen Geiger realized that her attack had no effect, she opened her terrifying mouth. Suddenly, a sign appeared in front of the ruler of hell which notified the guy that his unique skills had been adjusted according to his level of realization of superiority. Thus, a previously closed ability called the King's Breath was revealed to him. This skill is complemented by the spread of a cloud of flame, and in case the enemy is unable to suppress the flame, the fire will grow until it disappears along with the cursed creature. Seeing his old skill available again, the black-haired demon grinned and said the King's Breath. At the same moment, he spewed the purest flame of unprecedented magnitude, which rushed into the fanged mouth of the queen. After that, the monster slammed his mouth shut so that nothing else would fly in. But even that should be enough and the generous Han Dae Song advised to eat exactly because the dish he cooked is damn hot. From such a terrifying temperature, Gigera opened her mouth from which smoke billowed out and her body swelled, after which the monster collapsed dead causing the sea surface of the water to shake. The inferno which Ryu Son watched in surprise, quite expectedly, but the lord of hell Han Dae Song exceeded all her expectations. Now the girl from the fortress clan hopes to get rid of the nauseating noise with the help of the king. Pulling her hand out of the water, Ryu Son turned to her master with a request to solve her problem. In response to this, the guy coolly stated that the fight was not over yet, so she should wait. And indeed, at this time, Bak Heron continued to hold the barrier and shoot back with a group of hunters from monster-like insects. Even in such a situation, the black-haired woman again helps the Inferno which get what she wants. A group of terrifying flying creatures rushed to attack, but Bak Heron did not loosen her grip and used her shock shield ability. The rest of the hunters slashed their weapons with aura and shot enemies standing on the boat. Turning towards her allies, the girl demanded more concentration from the guys, while another group of unknown people on a boat was approaching them. The hunters who arrived turned to the head of the operation and stated that they had already cleared their side, so they came to help. Upon hearing such good news, the girl grinned and thanked the guys and asked them to take their direction for eleven o'clock. After her words, the guys looked at each other maliciously. At that time their boss Jong Jinchul was standing next to them under the stealth ability. Now the guys were given a real order. First they had to finish off a large fish of the S-rank Bek Heron. While the defenseless girl was holding her barrier with the last of her strength, the attacker calmly descended onto her boat, after which he came closer from behind, when suddenly he felt an inexplicable pressure from which he felt uneasy. Without hesitation, Zhang Jinchul turned in the direction in which he felt threatened, and then a long-forgotten fear flashed in his eyes, and there was one obscene swear word in his head that we censored. In front of the rat who used the invisibility skill stood the unattainable Han Dae Song. After that, the black-haired man turned to Bek Heron with the pretense that she had not finished yet. In her defense, the girl said that they were all trying their best. Upon hearing this, the guy dared to come on deck and indignantly asked where they were trying. Then he asked me to step back. Looking at the passing demon, Zhang Jinchul stood and calmed himself, because he was not discovered and perhaps he had a better opportunity. This was his great chance to tear Han Dae Song to shreds. 
Having ascended to the hold, the ruler of hell used the eyes of the four pillars of fate. This ability captures all hostile targets within a radius of one kilometer, after which he again summoned hellfire. A ball of fire like a meteor burst from the sky. It illuminated all the hunters present. Suddenly, the summoned flame began to scatter in different directions, hitting both monsters and people. Looking at such a terrible sight, the hunters were concerned about the cruelty of the newly minted hero, when suddenly a nearby boat exploded altogether. Beck Heron couldn't stand such an atrocity, and demanded that the black-haired man stop immediately because he could harm their own people. However, the ruler of hell could not understand where the girl saw her people, turning around, an unknown Zhang Jinshu rose up in front of the guys, who was beside himself with anger. And his words we also stuttered. The wary hunters fixed their gaze on the blonde guy and wanted to know who was standing in front of them, when suddenly Han Song remembered the bastard and was surprised to notice that he was surprised that he had not died yet. Zhang Jinshu took a syringe with unknown contents in his hands, clenching his teeth. The madman injected the drug intramuscularly after which he declared that today he would tear Han Sung's mouth, thereby taking his revenge. Suddenly, after such a terrifying speech, the blonde man threw back the syringe and began to gush blood from his filthy mouth, after which he kindly left the ship, leaving the hunters alone. Looking at this sight, the ruler of hell did not even know what to say and just looked into the water. Meanwhile the rest of those present identified the perpetrator, and remembered that he was Zhang Jinchul from the Red Horse Clan. However, the guys heard that he died during testing. At this time, the water around the boat turned dark. The arriving passengers on the boat panicked because out of nowhere black smoke appeared in the air, which greatly worsened visibility. Suddenly, demonic appendages rushed towards the guys and soon one of the hunters was pierced through. The same threat flew towards the defenseless back heron. The girl tried to put up a force barrier in time and it would seem that this was a situation of a kind one second before the telegram, when suddenly the demonic appendage was squeezed with bare hands right in front of Beck Heron's face. The Lord of Hell had saved the S-rank huntress again, and now he wanted to kick the annoying bastard's ass. A previously unseen creature appeared out of the water, which easily outraged the allied boats with a simple wave of its fingers. The newly minted King Geiger S-rank rose up in front of the hunters, who was eager for his revenge. At the same moment, the mutant rushed to attack with the intention of destroying his abuser. Dozens of tentacles rushed towards the guy floating in the air. The ruler of hell was in no hurry to act and looked at the looming threat with a dissatisfied look. At this time, negotiations continued and Jang Ho stated that if the girl helped them, they would give their full support, sparing no money to get her mentor and the leader of the Seoul Huang Junyan clan out. Xin Chouang silently sat and looked at the business card that the guy in the suit gave her, after which she raised her gaze and asked what she could be useful for. At the same time, Chang Ho stated that they were interested in the whereabouts of Professor Park Donghek. The girl silently turned her gaze out the window, and without thinking twice stated that this information about Professor Park Donghek is a top secret, and before divulging it, she should consult with the clan leader. At that time, the hunters who lost their boat were in the water, and they were all in great danger. The black-haired man was very annoyed because if he uses his skill, then everyone around him will die and this incredibly infuriated him. Several blows flew at once at Han Song, from which he flew several kilometers away from the king of Gigera. However, despite this, he continued to stand and at the same time demonic tentacles rushed into him again and soon the body of the ruler of hell was covered with sticky tentacles, and now the mad Zhang Jinchul was going to turn the limbs of the helpless guy into pieces and wished him a speedy death. Three tentacles with a tip on the tip rushed towards the ruler of hell, preparing to pierce his body. After that an explosion occurred on the water and the view was limited due to the rising water. The hunters watching the battle were now waiting for new instructions from Beck Heron, but the girl did not want to believe it. Suddenly, behind the backs of the desperate hunters, the monologue of the soaring Han Dae Song rang out. Turning around, the girl could not realize when the black-haired man managed to get there. However, this was not something worth thinking about now. The ruler of hell turned to his allies and said that if they did not want to die, they should get out of here very quickly. At the same time, 
A boat swam up to the guys in order to pick up the hunters in the water. The black-haired man did not take his eyes off King Geiger. Soon the guy rushed into battle on his wings. Another of his abilities is called Extreme Rage. This skill throws forward a powerful flame of magical energy, thereby creating a fire in the flame's passability zone. At the same second Han De Song used this amazing ability. At the same time, an insane human-like creature was looking around and wondering where Han De Song had gone. But as soon as the monster looked up, suddenly he had another question, namely, why was this scum alone so strong? At the same moment, a powerful blow struck the monster's thicket, leaving no trace of it, disintegrating into atoms. Zhang Jinchul cursed his abuser and declared that he would continue to curse him even in hell. However, the ruler of hell was standing at a distance and watching the thicket burn. He did not hear what that asshole was saying at all. While the spectators of the fight stood in utter shock, the inferno which Ryu Son praised her new master. Suddenly, an alert from the system appeared in front of the guy again, which said that the power of the essence from Hans, namely the operator of measurements, permeated his body thereby Han De Song gained two new skills stealth and transformation. The ruler of hell continued to levitate over the water and looked at his hand. At the same time the system announced that the use of an ethereal aura was now available to the guy. But this did not bother the black-haired man so much, he was more interested in the unknown entity from Hans. Meanwhile, the flag of the Samic clan fluttered in the wind against the background of a clear sky. A group of boats sailed close to the red portal the strongest clan of Samic porters and its greatest leader, Anderson, finally arrived. With him on deck was the famous streamer Yen Gil, who had already managed to collect a million subscribers. This time he was preparing special content for his viewers, namely the experience of transportation from the sea portal and all this is possible only for the great head of the Samic clan Anderson. At that moment, the guy received a large donation in the amount of 100,001 and his broadcast was replenished with new viewers because he is the first one who films about shipping. Meanwhile, in the thorn center of the fortress clan, the inferno which Ryu Son was struggling with her demonic energy with all her might, when suddenly a magic click from Han De Song flew to her forehead. The girl was outraged because she asked to drive away the annoying ghost, and not to beat her. At the same time, the black-haired man said that the girl was not worried about a ghost but about the magic that penetrates into her head, but from now on she will not disturb Ryu's son since he carefully suppressed her. Grabbing the place of the injury, the girl tearfully asked about the topic of magic, then Han Song tried to briefly explain it to her, and said that this magic was something like ether, only he could not understand where she picked up this power. At the same time, the girl with a smile on her face said that most likely it happened because she entered the awakening portal. From this place the ruler of hell became interested, and he wanted to hear about it in more detail. The witch called her master wanting to say something in his ear. The black-haired man came closer, and at the same time Ryu Son said that this information was top secret. But for her master she was ready to open the veil of secrecy. Namely, she said that sometimes a portal capable of awakening hidden abilities appears inside portals with monsters. And the girl was one of those madmen. Ryu Son at one time wanted to wake up so much that despite the danger she entered the portal. Listening to this, Han De Song realized that the portal could open even to hell. Suddenly an alert from the system appeared in front of the demon lord, which said that a celestial inhabitant had invaded the king's domain and an emergency pandemonium quest was launched at the same time. Turning away in the direction of the notification that only the king of hell saw, the guy scratched his head thinking how tired he was of these bugs. After that, the black-haired man turned around without thinking twice and said that he was leaving. The girl wanted to stop the guy at first but decided to just follow him with her eyes, when suddenly a brilliant idea came to her head and she grinned maliciously. On the territory of a special prison for hunters, a uniformed officer knocked on one of the closed cells and notified prisoner number 108 that a visitor had come to him. A black-haired man was sitting on the wooden floor of an unlit room, and the name of this prisoner is Huang Junyan, the former head of the clan Seoul. Soon, the door leading to the meeting room was opened by a police officer, and a black-haired man in a prison uniform entered the room. The short-haired Shin Chuyong greeted her leader affectionately, and at the same moment the sullen big man blossomed again, 
he was glad to see his student in good health. After a while, the girl left the special prison for hunters, slowly walking away from this place. Shin Cho Yong was immersed in her thoughts. The head informed her that Park Dong Hek might have a way to restore her destroyed aura reservoir, but since the red horse was also involved in this circumstance, she should first think carefully before acting. And once again, this beautiful girl's life is being poisoned by the cursed Red Horse clan. After entering the pandemonium, an alert popped up in front of the Lord of Hell, informing him that the king had entered with his servant, but the black-haired man did not remember that he had won. At the same time, Ryu Son jumped out from behind him, who was looking at this mysterious place with great interest. A frightened Han Dae Song turned around and asked how she got here. At the same time, the witch put her index finger to her lips and politely asked her teacher to teach her how to control magic as well. An alert appeared in front of the guy again, the topic of which was a servant named Ryu Son. Now the black-haired man knew all the abilities of the witch. One of them was very entertaining and called instant death. When using this skill, a small probability was created to instantly kill the enemy. However, if the caster himself died. And again, an extra load fell on the shoulders of the black-haired man and this is the first time when he was called a teacher. Looking at the happy girl, the ruler of hell assumed that by putting a magic mark on this small one, he accidentally registered her as his servant. Scratching his neck, he didn't even know what to do better, when suddenly he came to his senses that there was a more important task now. Suddenly grabbing Ryu Son's hand, he pulled her along, after which he told the system to load the ghost king's domain. After hearing the command of his king, Pandemonium began downloading data on the invasion of the celestial inhabitant into the domain of the Ghost King. The world around these two began to crumble and change. Holding tightly to her teacher's hand, the girl asked what was going on. However, the black-haired man was not going to bring her up to date, and soon a bright light covered the hellish couple, after which Han Dae Song opened his eyes and wondered what the fuck. Here he is the fruit of the forbidden love of the main character planted. An alert appeared in front of Han Dae Song again, informing him that the guy was imprisoned in an underground prison with sealed magic. The purpose of this quest was the boss collector of ghosts, and as a reward he would receive 100,000 merit points and one point of servant skill. Looking at his magical shackles, the ruler of hell noticed that he had nowhere better to do, when suddenly a happy Ryu Son suddenly appeared in front of him, who was glad to see her teacher again. The room in which the two were was not the most romantic place, and judging by the objects lying on the table, the contests here were not very interesting, but the witch liked such pranks. Han Dae Song of course apologizes for distracting the little one from interesting toys, but he has a request and Ryu Son gladly agrees to fulfill it. On his knees, he asks if she can unlock these damned shackles, in response, the witch wonders why the teacher won't just break them. At the same time, the guy stated that these shackles seal his magic. Realizing the situation, the girl kindly agrees to help her precious teacher. Still in the same prison cell, the Lord of Hell has freed himself from the shackles restraining his power. Han Dae Song, rubbing his swollen wrists, curiously asked the student how she did it. At the same time, a satisfied Ryu Son declares that she and her skills are perfect for this beautiful place. Now the black-haired man noticed that the stats of this little one were up. Suddenly the couple was distracted by a noise outside the wooden door. The guy asked the student to be quiet and warned that the jailer was approaching them. A giant creature with a key band on the small of its back was slowly walking down the dark corridor. It was the local jailer, and they called him the Collector of Ghosts. Ryu Son immediately became eager to finish off the unknown, hearing her wish. Dae Song looked at her with sharp surprise. At this time, at the parking lot of Yenin Market, a white car arrived at the parking lot and parked. Soon Chang Ho got out of it, and an unknown figure called him from the next car. The guy in the suit calmly looked around and came up. Shin Chon was driving the second car. She asked the head of the Han Dae Song clan to sit down because she was going to take the guy to the research laboratory of Professor Park Dong Hek. After Chang Ho jumped into the car, the girls started to gas up and soon the gray car left the parking lot. Meanwhile, in the laboratory, Elder Han stood in a bathrobe and looked at the report. He was a little disappointed that the trash who received the ability from the ampoule of the monster died so starved. 
However, despite this, the man was not too upset because he had already brought out enough samples. A new creature was maturing in the incubator. Suddenly a signal sounded in the laboratory notifying that new test samples had arrived at the entrance. Glancing at the monitor screen, the mad scientist grinned. He completely forgot about the arrival of the test sample. Chan Ho and Shin Chon drove up to the building where the laboratory was located. Elder Hans was not going to miss such a great opportunity, because besides the decadent A-rank hunter, the leader of the Dae Song clan also showed up to him. These two can serve as excellent material. A homemade voodoo doll flew into the air, and Ryu Son created tongs from her demonic aura and threw two needles that were responsible for weakness and paralysis. As soon as the aura tongs stuck into the doll, at the same moment the ghost collector froze in place. Soon several more needles were added to the first two, which imposed exhaustion, loss of consciousness, and sleep. Now, the monster bent under the weight of curses. If not for his sword, he would have already collapsed. Suddenly, a weapon imbued with aura pierced the jailer's chest. Pulling his sword out of the chest of the helpless monster, he fell dead to the ground. Thus, the jailer, who was supposed to be a serious obstacle, was defeated without much difficulty. Suddenly a system window appeared congratulating him on his victory over the ghost collector. As a reward, Han Dae Song was awarded 100,000 promised merit points and also one point of servant skills. At the moment the implementation of this quest was 33%. The girl was pleasantly surprised because her guesses that she was getting stronger in this place turned out to be true. But the black-haired man did not say anything about this and advised the teacher to spread out more of her dolls in hidden places since the road would be much more dangerous further on. Ryu Son was surprised because she didn't talk about her skill and she asked how the teacher found out about it. The guy, continuing to step forward, said that he just looked at her status window. After hearing Han Dae Song's explanation, the girl rushed to catch up with him. Soon, the forest path led travelers into a mysterious maze. A new alert appeared in front of the guy notifying about the second location called the Tomb of the Garden Maze. The purpose of this mission is to successfully escape from the maze. A warning was also highlighted, which said that the energy of death in the air of the garden tomb drains the life forces of the target, and in order to restore the lost vitality, the children will have to get rid of the caretakers of nature inside the maze. The Lord of Hell put his hand to his chin, after which he stated that he had already passed this route before, so it would not be a problem for him to escape from the maze. But something was bothering him. After a short thought, he turned to a nearby Malacca and demanded one of her dolls, but Ryu Son did not immediately understand why this was and demanded an explanation. Taking the doll, Han Dae Song declared that he would go first and signal the girl when she could move. Hearing this, the girl was charmed, she understood the true intentions of the master, and realized that he was going there alone because he did not want to put her in danger but in fact Han Dae Song wanted to get rid of her for at least a second because he could not stand listening to her snot further. The Lord of Hell explained that the mention that the tomb keeper restores vitality is a trap. In fact, messing with him on the contrary will lead to a delay, which will only make the forces go faster. After a short thought, Han Dae Song concentrated and calmly exhaled, after which he took off and headed into the maze. At high speed, he easily broke through the foliage fence and thus got inside the tomb of death. Suddenly, several organ rods appeared behind the black-haired guy, trying to pierce the uninvited guests, but this attempt was unsuccessful. They could not keep up with Han Daesung's movements. The black-haired man knew that contact with the thorn additionally reduces speed, therefore it is pointless to fight against him. The best solution is to run, however, looking at his hands. The ruler of hell realized that aging occurs faster than he was counting on it. There was another obstacle in the way of the runner in the form of a monster in a dark cap. The monster noticed the intruder running and was already preparing to hit him with its tool. The aged ruler of hell lacked only this giant. Suddenly the monster swung and delivered his crushing blow, but the old man grandiosely slipped on his knees, thereby dodging the enemy attack. After that, the black-haired man got back to his feet and continued on his way. The exit from the cursed maze appeared in front of his face. Han Dae Song accelerated and rushed to the exit from the Garden of the Dead, when suddenly a guard in a cap hovered over the black-haired elder, 
and was preparing to deliver the final blow. Sparks lit up the place of contact between the sword and the shovel. The ruler of hell managed to block such a sneaky blow, but his time was coming to an end. Out of the corner of his eye, Han Song noticed the twigs of thorns, and then he realized that he was in a complete ass. Soon, the plant enveloped the helpless old man. Meanwhile, the guys parked the car in the parking lot and moved on, walking along the carefully hidden subway. Chang Ho noticed that this place was not easy to find. However, Shin Chu Young noticed that she herself had only been here once. After a couple of brief words, they continued walking forward. Soon they stopped and a huge elevator was erected in front of them. Chan Ho asked with interest for what purpose they needed such a large elevator. But the girl in the cap did not know herself and found it rather strange because it had not been like this before. Soon, the metal walls of the doors cracked, and an unknown figure in a white coat stood in front of the guys. Earlier, a stranger introduced himself to them as Professor Park Donghak's assistant and asked him to call him Java. At this time, the witch was squatting and creating funny little animals from her aura, when suddenly she heard the teacher's voice and her balls burst. Han Daesong was outraged why hadn't the little one answered him before. After that, he ordered her to change to a doll and she began the task. Lowering her hands, the witch began to concentrate her power, and in the next instant she disappeared. After the transformation, the girl hurriedly began to look around, when suddenly she felt something very big and extremely powerful behind her. The red-haired witch, finding herself in a stressful situation, rushed to the doll in order to save her life. However, the monster behind her was in no hurry to attack the girl and suddenly spoke. It turned out to be Han Dae Song. Looking at him Ryu Son could not understand what was happening and why he was like that. However, the guy had no desire to explain it to her now and ordered her to follow him. The next moment, he touched the ground with his mighty paw and released a fraction of his aura, causing the ground to crack at the seam in the middle of the maze. Soon, a dark tunnel leading into the unknown opened in front of the Ryabats, but the great Han Dae Song had nothing to do with it. There was a frantic rumble in the huge dungeon, and soon a horned skull began to appear from the ground. Just a few seconds later, the infernal monster ascended. At the same time, a new notification appeared in front of Han Dae Song, which gave him a new task, the purpose of which was to defeat the ghost king who was infected with the celestial particle. The guys carefully watched the crazy monster from around the corner, and soon the ruler of hell declared that they were too late. The demon was tormented by an invisible voice that ordered him to repent in order to hear the doctrine of the supreme heavens. Unable to withstand such a strong onslaught, the monster went crazy and beat its head against the floor with all its might. Watching this picture, Han Dae Song in the guise of a guard stated that the ghost king had already completely become a puppet of the heavenly bastards, and killing his body possessed by intercepting the soul was still a gemmer. After that, he looked at his wonderful student with great interest. Without thinking twice, he demanded the system to show him the skills of a servant, and among the abilities he was interested in was the skill instant death, which consumes 99% of vitality and magic, creating a small probability of killing the enemy. However, in case of bad luck, the skill leads to the instant death of the caster. This is exactly what the ruler of hell needed. Without hesitation, the executioner gives two points to instant death. Suddenly, the half-naked which was enveloped in powerful energy, and the girl did not understand what was happening, also a notification popped up in front of her saying that the level of the instant death skill had been increased and now the chance of successful application was increased, and most importantly, the failure of such a dangerous ability would only lead to loss of consciousness. The Lord of Hell asked Ryu Son to be quiet and explained to her that he had just raised the level of her strongest ability. The girl did not expect that this was possible. Looking at her palm, the red-haired witch declared that she felt much stronger. Now Dae Son wanted the girl to use her fang on the monster that was hitting the ground with her head, but Ryu Son was not sure of her abilities since the opponent in front of her looked very impressive. At the same time, the Lord of Hell gave her a thumbs up telling her that everything would work out. At the same time, the witch got up from her knees and crossed her arms, after which she took one of her dolls and began to imbue it with demonic energy. Looking at this tricky process, Han Daesong prayed that she would succeed, otherwise he would have a hard time. At the same moment, Ryu Son pierces the head of the linen doll with a needle and pronounces the name of the ability Instant Death. At the same time, the monster's skull was illuminated by a purple light and soon the lifeless thicket plopped to the ground. Seeing this, 
The guy was frantically glad that everything worked out, but he suddenly heard another slap and with fear in his hellish eyes he turned his head. Turning around, he saw Ryu's son lying in front of him, and that could only mean one thing it didn't fucking work out. The infected ghost king came to his senses and began to rise, seeing that Han Dae Song and someone else's guys used a full buff, and took out his legendary sword from the inventory. The two monsters stood on top of each other, and exuded incredible energy, and soon the ruler of hell used another of his blood naturalization skills. The ghost king also did not stand idly by and hurried to get his bone sword. When Han Dae Song saw this, he rushed into battle, he was surprised that this bastard had called the Blade of Sin to deal with him, and now the ruler of hell demanded that the ghost king die obediently. Soon, their mighty swords clashed, and the battlefield was filled with flying sparks and their boundless energy, when suddenly Han Daesong's sword flew out of his hands and went into free flight. At the same moment, the bone blade pierced into fresh flesh and the dungeon was sprinkled with blood, the ruler of hell was embarrassed by this outcome, and even through the mask one could see his tense face. But the ghost king wasn't going to stop there and instantly used a skill called absorbing a living soul. After that, the body of the defeated Han Daesong gradually began to disappear. The great ruler of hell was in the process of being devoured by a pathetic bug and his last words were obscene language. Soon, the strongest hunter and concurrently the ruler of hell disappeared from this world without a trace. However, even being inside the sword, his angry words reached the soulless monster. Meanwhile, a black car was driving at full speed through the busy streets of the city. Shinchon, adjusting her cap, asked the guy in the bathrobe for forgiveness for not being able to warn him that she decided to take another person with her. Jaevu was embarrassed by such sudden news and in response asked who is it? At the same time, the guys in the underground parking lot were illuminated by a bright light. A black car drove up to the white car and parked there. Soon an unknown figure in dark shoes got out of the car. The uninvited guest turned out to be none other than Cho Hanul, the leader of the Marble Clan. The girl introduced a friend who had arrived in front of the scientist, and stated that the leader of the Marble Clan also intends to cooperate with Professor Park Donghak. Jeva unhurriedly said that this should have been reported in advance. At the same time, the guy in the mask did not wait and introduced himself properly, and he also stated that he sincerely admired Professor Park Donghak as a fellow engineer in the field of Aura. Elder Hans who was hiding behind the name of Jevu, was confused. He did not expect such a large fish to fall into his lair. At this time, Cho Hanul wasted no time and also greeted the leader Chan Ho, but the guy in the dark jacket got confused and forgot that he was the leader of the clan. The black-haired man in the mask also waved at Shinchon, to which she only nodded slightly. The blue-eyed woman turned and turned to the subordinate of such a famous professor. She said that from now on everyone is assembled and therefore she asks to take them to Park Donghek. Or does she need to contact him directly? Elder Hans did not expect that this bitch would have such a good feel and she would take a backup with her. From now on he intends to decompose this bitch into pieces and turn her into a monster. Without thinking twice, Jevu announced that there would be no problems with this and most likely the professor would be very happy. Soon, the guy in the white coat brought his companions to the research room and asked them to wait a little while for the professor to come. After these words, Jevu turned around and left the room. The metal doors slammed shut behind him with a characteristic sound. However, this did not bother Chang Ho much, because he was more afraid of cans with unknown contents. Cho Hanul disturbed the guys and handed them the developed aura protectors. The masked man warned that these red bracelets should be worn on the wrist. The leader of the Daesong clan was pleasantly surprised by such a gift, and Shin Cho Yong also hurried to thank the guy in the mask. Soon, Blue-Eyed said that it was her leader Huang Zhenyan who advised that. Just in case, for the sake of safety, it was worth taking Cho Hanul with you. After hearing this, Chan Ho took hold of the top of his head and forgot that he could ask the leader of the Marble Clan for help with weapon modification. Suddenly, gas began to flow rapidly from the ventilation into the laboratory. The guys looked at the ceiling in surprise at a time when the gas had already completely filled the room. At the same time, the masked man worriedly announced that it was a trap. After hearing this, Shin Chon and the guy in the jacket froze in surprise. Frantic knocks could be heard through the locked door, and soon, with an effort, the leader of the Marble Clan was still able to knock it out, but Chan Ho, coming out of the poisonous fog, realized that it was not so bad there. There were angry orcs in front of the hunters who were screaming in anger, but Cho Hanul did not lose his head and pulled out his blade without hesitation. He was ready to confront the huge monsters and protect those two behind his back. 
one of the monsters was already ready to deliver its fatal blow to the motionless black-haired guy in the mask. Suddenly, Cho Hano painted several orcs with incredible speed, after which he stretched out his hand, from which warm light gradually began to flow. From such incredible firepower, the hunter's clothes literally began to evaporate, but the result was worth it. The fire ray illuminated his opponents, the orcs did not even have time to realize their death, but alas their bodies were cut in two such as the strength of the leader of the marble clan named Cho Hano. The guys hurried to their mighty savior with words of gratitude, but Cho Hano was worried about the incredible stench that permeated the laboratory. Elder Hans and a part-time mad scientist were closely watching everything that was happening. Despite the fact that the intruders had not yet been defeated, a smile shone on his face because those who inhaled this gas would not be able to escape from his creatures. Now he's going to test stronger freaks. Meanwhile, inside the Blade of Sin, there is a place called the Field of Souls. Thousands of faceless beings were begging for their salvation, when suddenly one of the crowd tremblingly raised his hand and with the same voice notified his fellow non-members that a new soul had arrived. The sinners rushed to the newcomer in a crowd in order to feast on fresh meat, but despite hundreds of frightening and dragging creatures, the unknown continued to stand quietly. The monsters were getting closer with every passing moment, and when the distance reached the peak, the Lord of Hell spoke, apparently the faceless creatures were still unaware of who was standing in front of them. The sinners were far mistaken, because they will be the dinner. Apparently, the guys did not expect such a turn of events. Meanwhile, the ghost king who had swallowed Han De Song was slowly dragging his sword through the dungeon, when suddenly he stopped in front of the half-naked and defenseless Ryu Son. Without a doubt, the monster raised his sword and was about to pierce the girl, when suddenly he was stunned by a strange phenomenon. The bone sword in his hands turned over and its tip pointed at its owner. The ghost king cursed the scoundrel and demanded to stop it. At the same time, Han Daesong's arrogant voice reached him from the sword, who was surprised that the monster had not yet realized what position he was in. At the same time, even droplets of sweat began to stand out from the bone skull, after which the monster was defeated by its own sword. In anger at such a shameful loss, the ghost king rolled his eyes to the sky, and soon after he committed seppuku, he began to gradually disappear. An unusual bone sword that killed its own master crashed to the ground with a crash. Suddenly, a system window appeared in front of the ruler of hell, notifying him of the completion of this location. As a reward for this feat, 100,000 merit points were credited to him and another servant's skill point was awarded. After getting out of the field of souls, the black-haired man scratched his head and was indignant that there would definitely be some kind of hemorrhoids in each such quest. However, his words brought new adventures upon him, and an unknown yellow energy began to flow from under the res hot. Having seen this, the ruler of hell realized with annoyance that the test was not over yet. A female silhouette appeared in front of him who wanted to know who this black-haired nobody was. A notification appeared in front of Han De Song again, which wanted the guy to settle the law of causality, and for this he should deal with the celestial inhabitant. The ruler of hell was in no hurry to introduce himself and gave this opportunity to the unknown because it was she who broke into someone else's house. Raising her hand, she asked again is he really the ruler who stands over these mindless, insignificant creatures. Without waiting for a response from the black-haired guy, she dealt him a powerful blow demanding to repent of his sins. However, the demon somehow mysteriously avoided this attack, from which the heavenly resident was amazed. Suddenly, yellow-bodied, without having time to utter a word, noticed the radiance that rushed through her right arm, the next moment her heavenly limb rotted into oblivion. After seeing such an amazing sight, the demons imprisoned in pandemonium praised their demonic god and begged him to take revenge on the heavens and wash away their shame. Han De Song was already quite tired of the buzzing of these mosquitoes, he was going to deal with her without their advice. A celestial resident who was brought to her knees wondered how an unknown person, even without being the main deity, could communicate with the demonic beasts of the abyss? The words she uttered interested the blue-eyed guy, and he asked again what kind of main deity is this. Suddenly, golden chains shrouded in a light aura appeared out of nowhere and enveloped the helpless celestial. Seeing the heavenly apostles behind her, the girl began to beg for her forgiveness and repent of her mistake, but the decision of the Almighty was unchanged, their scarlet eyes symbolized her sentence. Han De Song looked arrogantly at the new guests and asked what they were doing, but the heavenly apostles were in no hurry to answer the black-haired guy's question and announced to the woman that for violating the law, she would be exterminated. Seeing that the three scoundrels decided to ignore him, the ruler of hell was angry, 
from which he grabbed his blade tighter and tore on his demonic wings to the apostles. The heavenly creatures were stunned in horror by the impending threat. A barely noticeable ray of light flew past the three creatures, and the next moment, the cut parts of the apostles began to fall to the ground. The celestial resident, who was bound with golden chains, watched this terrifying power from the side. The only way she could explain what happened was that the apostles were simply weak. The defeated bodies emitting warm light began to gradually evaporate in the atmosphere. As soon as the apostles finally evaporated, the wound of the heavenly virgin opened, and blood gushed out from her in a powerful stream, from which she screamed in pain. A new notification appeared in front of the ruler of hell, which congratulated the guy on the successful completion of the task and notified him that the realization of the possessions of the ghost king had reached 100%, as well as the heavenly inhabitants ceased to exist, and the ghost king and his troops came under the command and command of Han Dae Song. The dimmed and bleeding young lady fixed her gaze on heaven on her knees, the light surrounding her was losing its strength every second and the girl could not believe she was rejected by the main deity and banished from heaven. In the next moment, the power began to leave her rapidly, from which the woman twisted in pain and began to cry furiously. Soon, a defenseless little kid was lying in the place of the former celestial inhabitant. The black-haired one was watching everything that was happening and could not understand what the hell had just happened. The only explanation was that the screenwriters were smoking something. And it turned out to be true, in front of the great Han Dae Song, instead of a crying child, there was already an egg. After looking at this, he now had no questions for the developers at all, but the guy did not know what to do with this egg now. The first thing that came to the demon lord's mind was to smash him by force. Suddenly, a notification appeared in front of him congratulating him on acquiring the heavenly egg and warning him that he could be transformed into a demonic beast that would kindly obey him. Without thinking twice, the black-haired man decided to start the process of demonic transformation, after which the egg in Han Daesong's hand glowed furiously. Soon, a table appeared above the flaming shell from the system that notified about the transformation process. The black-haired guy had no other option but to try to understand something after the transformation was over. Meanwhile, a rusty sign warning of radioactive danger hung at one of the iron doors. Suddenly the metal door slammed shut with terrible force and sound. All this was happening in front of the guys who were under the protection of the leader of the Marble Clan, straightening his Tai Chan Ho indignantly trying to understand what was the point of all this. At the same time, Shin Cho Young replied that the most obvious thing was that Professor Park Dunhuk was in trouble. Suddenly, Cho Hano slowly raised his left hand, thereby attracting the attention of his real allies. Looking higher, the guy in the mask discovered a two-headed monster above him who stood on the corporate ladder. The black-haired head coming from the monster's body was choking with saliva. The monster was very happy to meet delicious and fresh hunters. A huge ogre with an iron bulge dared in front of the guys, but it was an unusual ogre because a human head came from the monster's body. Chan Ho and Shin Cho Young saw this for the first time and could not understand what it was. At the same time, with horror in his eyes, the masked guy worriedly said that this was an experiment in merging a monster with a human. Meanwhile, the crazy black-haired head noticed that the girl among the guys is pretty enough, and he hopes that she will become a head next to him. Shin Cho Young did not appreciate such a compliment from the madman and took out her pistol, after which a hail of bullets rained down on the chimera. However, this attack did not show up on the monster's condition in any way, and the black-haired man could not understand why all these tingling. At the same time, Cho Hano disappeared from his place, leaving an invisible trace the leader of the Marble Clan rushed to attack the vile Chimera. After blocking the attack, the monster was outraged and did not understand what kind of cowardly attack it was without warning. However, Cho Hanul did not react to the words of the monster and again put his hand forward. At the same moment, one of the ogre's heads shattered into pieces. While the remaining head flew into a rage, she did not understand how some little man dared to kill his pet. The leader of the Marble Clan stepped back a little from the enraged monster, Gripping his deadly weapon tighter, the black-haired monster was going to crush the pathetic insects in front of him. The guy in the mask, not listening to empty threats, rushed into battle again, but suddenly Morgenstern flies out of nowhere at Cho Hano. With the help of his deadly weapon, the one-headed monster easily pins the leader of the Marble Clan into the wall. Having collapsed, Cho Hano was lying at the foot of the wall, and the monster was not going to miss his chance to crush one of the bugs. However, at the last moment, the guy in the mask disappears from under the blow, thereby saving his life. Suddenly a hail of bullets rained down on the monster again, 
The reason for this was the same Shinchon with a gun. Looking at the cutie, the black-haired man decides that he will still need to ask the professor to attach his new partner's head. Meanwhile, Ryu Son was curiously examining the strange egg in Han Daesung's hands, when suddenly its shell cracked and bright light poured out of it. Soon the egg completely disintegrated into particles and the inferno which happily informed her teacher that something had hatched. A creature previously unknown to them levitated in front of the guys, and soon the flying fairy turned to Ryu Son with the question, is she her mistress? Han Daesung interrupted her and demanded that the flying moth tell him everything she knows about heaven faster. However, the magical creature apologized and stated that she had no memories related to heaven. At the same time, disappointed that he had spent so much time for some useless moth, the ruler of hell slowly began to draw his sword. However, suddenly Ryu Son intervened in the dialogue, who asked her master not to kill this creature. She herself would not mind raising this pet, but the guy did not understand what nonsense she was talking about. At the same time, the inferno which began to whisper to her new girlfriend with a request to show something useful to the teacher, the only way she could stay alive. Without thinking twice, the pet objected and remembered that she had a heavenly store. Suddenly, a counter appeared out of nowhere in space, and when Ryu Son saw it, she was very surprised, but Han Dae Song did not even know what to say. A real shop for hunters appeared in front of them. There were various potions and artifacts on the windows and shelves and in front of the guys themselves there was a huge selection of ranged weapons. After walking a little down the rows, Han Daesong noticed a strange object and called the moth to tell her what it was in more detail. Flying closer, the hatched pet began to tell its owner that this is a one-time item that informs the user of important information about the coming future. An information window appeared in front of the ruler of hell, which notified that the information provided by the diary of the future would be valid for 24 hours and it could be purchased only once a week for merit points. After reviewing all the details, the guy without hesitation decides to purchase this item. At the same time, a pen with papyrus flies up in front of His Majesty Han Daesong, and after a few moments several names appear on a piece of paper, namely Chan Ho, Shin Chon, Cho Han -ho. Seeing the names of close and familiar faces, the black-haired man woke up very much, when suddenly, because of what he had written, he tensed up and in earnest. Meanwhile, near the multi-story building of the Hunters Association, an unidentified scarlet portal appeared from which the ruler of hell came out with his newly minted student. Without thinking twice, the black-haired guy began to chase Ryu Son away, but the girl was in no hurry to leave because she was his student. The girl turned to Han Daesong again, but the guy was not in the mood and said that he was not going to repeat it twice. After that, the inferno which decided that it was not worth bothering today. Meanwhile, in the laboratory, the defeated Cho Hano was already lying, from which smoke puffs emanated. Suddenly, steam began to flow rapidly from the guy in the business suit, and the monster who was watching such a strange picture could not understand what was happening. However, the answer to this was very simple. The reason why the leader of the Marble Clan was emitting so much smoke was because he had an almost completely mechanical body. Now, Cho Hano was serious. The black-haired guy abruptly jerked towards his enemy and struck him with a powerful punch to the jaw. From the force of the blow, the monster's enormous bulk staggered. But the monster was not going to lose so easily, and having sustained the damage, the skewed guy declared that this was not enough. Suddenly, Cho Hano's hand appeared in front of his face, which was already preparing to strike the next blow. The leader of the Marble Clan decided to use the Aura Quantum Cannon, and in the next instant, the artificially created monster was torn into molecules by an energetic release. The bloody remnants of the monster collapsed to the ground in front of the mechanical guy. However, Cho Hano was not in the best condition as he used too much aura. Looking at this, Shin Chon worried about the condition of the Marble Clan leader. Meanwhile, Cham Ho could not believe that Cho Hano really stuffed his body with aura weapons. Turning to the guys, the black-haired man announced that his body needed time to replenish the charge of the ethereal core, but the leader of the Han Daesong clan had a bad feeling as if they were all dancing to the tune of that bastard. While the hunters stood in front of the defeated monster, the hero of the occasion watched them from the surveillance cameras. Elder Hans did not expect that he would have to use his secret weapon. Without thinking twice, the mad scientist presses one of the buttons saying that he would like to catch them relatively intact, but he has no other way out. At this time, Cho Hano, sitting on the floor and crossing his legs, was recovering his wasted energy. Watching him, Chan Ho inadvertently wondered what his chances of surviving next to an S-rank hunter were. Suddenly, one of the metal doors began to slowly rise, 
and now a new opponent was waiting for the already battered hunters. A gloomy and unknown figure could be seen from behind the half-open door, but when the light shone, it became clear that this was another infernal monster. Jevu, watching his creation enter the scene, decides that he should take at least some of the bodies before they are cut to shreds and eaten. A previously unknown creature appeared in front of the hunters, and his name was Goldman. After looking at him, Shinchon took out her aura blade and declared that in front of them was a monster of the monster class. However, looking at the creepy creature, Cho Hanol announced that a creature of presumably S rank was in front of them. Such news shocked everyone present. The monster, which appeared more and more out of the fog, slowly approached its future victims. In one of its paws there was a real butcher's blade with which it casually scraped along the metal coating. But the leader of the Marble Clan was not going to wait until he was pushed back by some ram on two hooves. But the fanged creature did not expect such fearlessness from a pathetic man. Cho Hanul's fist rushed into Goatman's face. But the red-eyed monster easily dodged such an attack, and despite its ridiculous position, the monster decided to launch its counterattack. Goutman suddenly grabbed the Terminator's arm, at which point the black-haired guy realized that he was inferior in speed to this monster. The laboratory was again stained with drops of scarlet blood, the hand of the leader of the Marble Clan went into free flight separately from its owner. Jang Ho, stunned by such terrible fights, shouted no, Meanwhile, Xin Chou Yung rushed to her comrade's aid without hesitation, and in anger she cursed the monster standing in front of them. The girl made a cutting attack when suddenly the victim of the experiments disappeared. The bloodthirsty goat man was already standing behind the defenseless Xin Chun. The monster struck its blow and from such destructive force, the black-haired girl was slammed into the wall, but she managed to survive with the help of a protector that was given to her a little earlier. At that moment, Cho Hanul had already managed to charge his mechanical arm to deliver a terrifying blow. Noticing this red-eyed creature at a monstrous speed, it began to stream violently. Without having time to realize what was happening, the leader Kalen Marble lost his second hand in a split second, after which the guy in the mask received an imperceptible blow to the head and he lost consciousness. Goatman slammed the head of the S-rank hunter into the middle and was already ready to execute the helpless Cho Hanul. However, Chang Ho could no longer watch what was happening and ordered the goat to stop. With his loud words he attracted the attention of the bloodthirsty demon. Goatman's silhouette began to dissolve in the air, and the next moment, the red-eyed monster was already standing in front of Chang Ho. Despite the fact that there was a creature in front of him that could kill him in a split second, the guy in the suit continued to stand impassively. Goatman grinned at the determination of a small bug. At the same time, Chang Ho declared with a smile on his face that he knew someone cooler, and that he would die today. After these words, the monster was ready to kill the poor guy and raised his hand for a final blow. In fear, Chang Ho closed his eyes and waited for death. Suddenly, the blade that was aimed at the guy was stopped by black shadows that appeared from outside. Goatman stood in shock and did not understand what was happening. The man in the suit was protected by unknown demonic hands with eyes. At the same moment, the monster jumped back. Goatman felt a threat from an unknown black substance blocking the path of his blade. The king of Hell Han Dae Song appeared from the demonic mixture, the blue-eyed girl did not expect to see this guy again, especially in this situation. Looking back, the black-haired man turned to his friend and asked with a smile if he had leaned back yet. Chang Ho was very happy to see his sick friend, after which he declared that he was not going to die, because he was also Song Chang Ho with an S-ranked Chuka. Suddenly, the hooves of a bloodthirsty monster appeared in front of the defenseless Shin Chou Yong, seeing this. The guy in the suit only managed to pronounce her name. The monster struck a terrifying blow with his blade again, but the black goo stopped his attack again, thereby protecting the girl. Shin Chou Young looked with shock at the demonic hands that had saved her, and the red-eyed gold man looked at them with the same shock. The monster swiftly turned its head and looked at the strange guy in the t-shirt. Han De Song did not tolerate such arrogance from some bug and activated his aura stealth skill. The guy instantly disappeared and the monster was stunned again. Goatman turned his head and could not understand what was happening. Soon, the monster began to vaporize with anger, and with such force that all those present clutched their heads, Chan Ho thought that a little more and his eardrums would burst. After thinking a little, the red-eyed man turned his head around and struck a cutting blow into the void. Goatman did not miss, but Han De Song blocked his attack. The black-haired man was pleasantly surprised that the monster decided to search for him using sound. The mad scientist continued to quietly observe everything that was happening with the help of cameras. Elder Hans recognized Han Dae Song, who was the biggest threat to the eastern headquarters. 
Without thinking twice, Jeva decides to use the chimeras he has saved for a rainy day, and presses the red button with the image of a skull. The system announced that the release of deadly poisonous chimeras had begun, and three minutes remained before the activation of self-destruction. Getting up from the table, the villain slowly strode to the exit, declaring that even Han Dae Song would not get out of here alive. A voice alert sounded throughout the laboratory notifying that there were 30 minutes left before self-destruction. After hearing this, the guys could not understand what the hell was going on here. Han Dae Song was also not very happy. He was already tired of these constant problems, and each time they became more and more. Before he had time to think about it, several previously sealed doors began to open. Soon, the ruler of hell was confronted by crowds of various chimeras and their leader, Goatman. Looking at Yuto, Cham Ho thought with horror about how many people this bastard had experimented on. Shin Chon supported this statement, and declared that this was no longer a laboratory but a factory for the production of monsters. Cho Hano, who was sitting against the wall, quietly said that these monsters were created by awakening ampoules. Looking at the guy in the mask, Chang Ho realizes that the leader of the Marble Clan is unable to help. So the brown-haired man turns to Han Dae Song and says that he will have to deal with this alone. The ruler of hell, looking at the guys, thought that if he had his way, he would have inflamed everything here with the ultimate stage of the volcano. But because of the presence of comrades nearby, he cannot do so. At the same time, Han Dae Song decides to use the change of territory, namely the possession of the Ghost King. At the same moment, an incredible energy emanated from the ruler of hell that could not be overlooked. The chimeras panicked when they smelled something was wrong. Cho Hano came to his senses that hour feeling such a large wave of tremendous power. Before the eyes of Chang Ho and the black-haired girl, something old was happening and they saw this for the first time. The laboratory gradually disappeared under the cover of thick smoke, and soon there was no trace of it, and everyone present found themselves in a completely different location. The friend of the ruler of hell did not know that he was capable of such a thing, in turn. Shin Chuyong could not believe her eyes because this is a real teleportation. However, the leader of the Marble Clan understood that this was not teleportation. Han Dae Song completely changed the very area with the laboratory, and this is an incredibly frightening ability. At the same time, the Lord of Hell decided to summon an army of the undead. The angry chimeras were already ready for a bloody battle and were screaming with rage, when suddenly the conscripted troops began to march out of the cracked earth. Soon, the army of the Lord of Hell was ready to begin, all of them waiting only for the order of the Lord. And soon the black-haired man gave his only order to exterminate them all. A crowd of the living dead immediately rushed into battle, crazy chimeras ran to meet them. Very soon these dry lands will absorb tons of blood of the enemies of the ruler of hell. Meanwhile, Han Dae Song turned to the guys and told them that they were safe here, after which, without saying a word to them, he disappeared and left them indignant about what was happening. Meanwhile, Elder Hans was leaving the scene of the attack with the help of an elevator, when suddenly the cabin, along with the professor, began to shake violently. Suddenly, a message appeared on the service screen notifying of an emergency stop of the elevator. However, Java was not so worried about this notification. He was more afraid of why the metal cabin had slowed down and why there was a hole in it. It was from this hole that the naughty Han Dae Song looked out, seeing another guy. Drops of sweat appeared on the face of the mad scientist, and he already began to worry about his anus. However, the ruler of hell was not going to stop there. He entered the elevator without an invitation and headed to his victim. Coming a little closer, the black-haired man decided to shame the scoundrel because he ordered the monsters to hunt, and he decided to leave his workplace. A little embarrassed, Hans noticed that Han Dae Song completely exceeded his expectations. Spreading his arms in different directions, he declared that the black-haired man had won and now he was ready to die at his hands. But the ruler of hell was in no hurry to shed his blood and took him by the hem of his t-shirt. The black-haired man immediately realized that the man and was up to something. But only what? Hearing Han Dae Song's suspicions, the guy with the tattoo on his eye became worried. Suddenly, a bloodthirsty smile appeared on the face of the ruler of hell, because he remembered how he got an entertaining ability in the domain of the king of ghosts. A system window appeared in front of the guy which informed him that Han Dae Song had temporarily been given the unique ability of a subdued demonic beast, namely the Ghost King. Leaning closer, the black-haired man used a temporary ability on Khans that was called Ghost Eyes. With the help of this skill, Han Dae Song saw deeply hidden memories. He saw how a helpless Hans was lying on the ground and gasping for breath, when suddenly an all-seeing eye appeared in front of him out of nowhere. 
He also found out where Lisoga came from and how he got the ample with the mutagen. The ruler of hell saw all the nightmarish experiments that the madman conducted and how he resurrected Jinchil. However, apart from all the atrocities, Han Song saw something interesting, namely how the mad scientist poured liters of blood. As a result, he was rewarded for this by the Lord of the East Elhim, he gave the guy an extraordinary body for a sufficient number of victims. From now on, with the death of his body, he will recover in a new one and Khans was incredibly happy about it. However, his happiness did not last long. The black-haired man slammed the guy in the bathrobe into a corner. The black-haired man was surprised that bastards like Hans exist. Through so many sacrifices, the bastard in front of him got an unclean long-lasting body. However, now after learning about this feature, Han Dae Song smilingly told the boy that fuck him and not death. No matter how much he asked, the ruler of hell is not going to kill him so easily. Meanwhile, there was only one minute left in the laboratory before self-destruction when suddenly the doors leading to the control room opened. In the middle of the room there was another goat in a long robe. The monster inserted the key into the keyhole and then turned it. At that hour, a voice notification sounded saying that self-destruction had been stopped. Upon hearing this, Goatman exhaled with relief. After which, Red-Eyed wondered what the hell was going on here at all. Suddenly the doors leading to the observation room were knocked out, and the culprit was none other than Han Dae Song. Without thinking twice, the black-haired man was surprised aloud by the presence of another goat. At the same time the red-eyed monster was surprised and asked who this unknown young man was. However, the ruler of hell was in no hurry to answer and he asked the same question to the goat in the bathrobe. At the same time the monster declared that he was Park Donghek, the director of this research institute. Han Dae Song did not expect such a turn of events. Soon the ruler of hell pulled his friends out of another dimension and brought them to the observation room. After listening to everything that happened from Shin Cho Yong, the red-eyed monster could not believe that Leader Huang was imprisoned. He got up from his chair and realized that it was his fault, but he asks not to worry. Park Donghek, in the guise of a monster, declares that the leader of the Soul Clan should be released soon because he has plenty of evidence proving that Jeva had illegal ties with the Red Horse Clan. While the monster was telling all this, Jang Ho turned to his friend in the ear and decided to ask her if Professor Park Dunhuk was exactly in front of them. However, the girl herself did not know what to answer. At least the voice is the same as that of Professor Park Donghek, whom she met earlier. Cho Hano stood and silently admired. He couldn't believe his eyes that the professor had completed a complete fusion with the monster without losing his mind. Park Dunhuk also admired the work done by the leader of the Marble Clan, because the guy in the mask successfully succeeded in replacing body parts with aura weapons. Soon, the monster in the robe turned to Shin Chon and decided to ask the girl if she had come here because of problems with the aura reservoir, and the girl confirmed it. At the same time, Park Donghek stated that it makes sense to resort to fusion amples here, but the professor cannot guarantee full recovery. Suddenly, Han Dae Song interrupted the goat with a question. Does he want to tell them anything interesting? For example, what was he doing while the hell was going on at the research institute, and why did he show up like this? A little embarrassed, Park Dunhuk closed his eyes, and soon he began his story about how he became the first fusion test sample. The man believed that to resist the strong monsters that constantly climb out of portals, the awakening of the aura is not enough, and therefore, together with the terminally ill Javu, he decided to conduct an experiment on merging a monster with a human. Java was more interested in prolonging life with this method, and the professor himself wanted to strengthen the human physical body. However, their plans and calculations developed over the years failed. In case of an unsuccessful experiment, the device was configured to automatically switch to hibernation. At this point in the story, Cham Hong got in. He did not understand if the current appearance of the professor did not indicate the success of the experiment. Taking up the goatee, the man did not know how to explain it better, and soon he declared that as a result of strong influence on the hibernation apparatus, his original body died and the experiment was crowned with success. After hearing this, Chan Ho realizes that if, with sufficient force of influence on this device, the experiment was successful and at that moment Han Dae Song turns away from his friend's gaze. Grinning, Dae Song declares that Professor Kozel also does not know where the base of the bastards from Hans is located, the last words interested Cho Hanul, and not only him. Soon, Jang Ho asks Dae Song who these Hans are? At the same time, the black-haired man declares that it's like flip-flops from another world that create monster portals. Such creepy words gave the guy in the jacket goosebumps. Meanwhile, Jevu woke up chained to an unusual bed, 
the guy from Hans couldn't figure out what Han Dae Song was up to and started yelling at him to kill him sooner. When suddenly his piercing scream drowned out the sound of sparks flying out of the metal, seeing long sharp pegs in front of him, the chained guy fell silent. However, the silence was interrupted by the executioner offering to start their games as soon as possible. Seeing the humanoid monster in front of him, Jeva became nervous and began desperately asking who the stranger was and what he was going to do. However, the answer was not long in coming. The masked monster impatiently declared that he was going to enjoy the separation of the dirty body from the soul of the boy for centuries. Frightened, Jeva began to break out in drops of sweat and, not believing his ears, asked him to repeat again what this monster had said. Meanwhile, in the Hans wormhole, four unknown figures were sitting at a rectangular table. Soon one of them, the Lord of the East under the name of Elhim, began his speech that something unforeseen had happened in the East. The Lord of the North, Volks, asked his brother if a variable had appeared and what exactly had happened. The Lord of the West, Karina, said that she had heard how Japanese hunters had recently conquered a portal of the highest rank. The Lord of the South, Azar, was already banging his fist from hunger. He demanded to tell us what happened faster. Without thinking twice, Elhim stated that he had lost two powerful measurement operators in Korea, and those present were surprised by such news, because it meant that there was a powerful person in Korea previously unknown to them. That is why the Lord of the East requests the operator of the highest rank to deal with that insolent man. Suddenly Azar rose from the table who wanted to deal with the problem on his own. Crossing his arms, Elhim calmly rolled over to his brother with a question. He wanted to hear Azar's opinion. Why didn't he personally go to investigate? The Lord of the South twisted his face in disbelief. After a short thought, he grinned and asked the question, Does Elhim really think that he can lose to some awakened with an aura? The Lord of the East, who was sitting motionless, slightly corrected his comrade, stating that their opponent was not awakened with an aura. Upon hearing this news from Elhim, the present rulers of Hans became quite tense. Meanwhile, in the office of the chief executive, Park Chong-ho sat silently and thought for a long time about the information he received. Soon, the gray-haired old man opened his eyes and decided to clarify about the fact that really some guys from Hans kidnap people and even create portals with monsters. At the same time, the man in the suit stated that this information was obtained from the words of Hunter Han Dae Song. Realizing that this was true, the man again closed his eyes heavily and said that if others found out about it, then chaos would begin in the world. Soon, the same Majina again turned to the head of the department and stated that he only gets migraines from the smell of the reactors, so he asked Jean Kihan to conduct a secret investigation about this. The black-haired man immediately accepted his superior's order, but he had a request in response to this case. Meanwhile, at the Korean prison, the head of the Seoul Huang Junyan clan came out of long imprisonment. The bearded Muchin was immediately called by a voice from the side. It was Shin Chon. she literally glowed with happiness, the black-haired girls shed tears from the surging emotions. However, the man took this situation with a smile and praised the student, and also decided to joke about why she meets him without tofu. In response, the girl reminds the leader that he is allergic to soybeans. Interrupting the sweet conversation, the girl remembered and told Huang Junin that someone wanted to meet with him. Upon hearing this, the black-haired man looked at Shin Chon with a clear misunderstanding. A little later, walking up to the car and opening the doors, the man saw a talking goat who greeted him and introduced himself as his old friend, namely Professor Park Donghek. Huang Jun Young, seeing this in the car, did not even know what to say and was completely speechless from what he saw. When he came to himself, the black-haired man began to shout at the old goat, because somewhere in the depths of his soul he guessed that sooner or later something like this would happen, but still he could not understand what happened to his appearance. However, the professor said that it no longer mattered and asked the guy to get into the car already. After that, the doors of the white car slammed shut loudly. While Shin Chon was watching the road, the head of the Seoul clan continued to inflate the atmosphere. He was shocked by the professor's madness, but Park Dong Hyak had already asked to stop it. However, the black-haired man continued to add oil to the fire and said that he would never have thought in his life that he would talk to a goat. Grinning, the professor said that it was better to be a goat than an ex-prisoner. Soon, the Korean streets were mired in night, at such a late hour. A girl was walking along the sidewalk and anxiously looking around. Suddenly, a creepy voice rang out from behind the frightened woman. The brunette turned around and saw an unknown figure in front of her who was smiling madly. With a trembling voice, she decided to ask who was in front of her and what he wanted. But the man was in no hurry to answer, and he wondered who he was. Suddenly, 
a knife blade whizzes near the maniac's throat, and the low-ranking hunter Ho Chong turned out to protect the girl from the unknown. The guy with the blade in his hand was terribly glad to meet this killer kidnapper. Looking back, the boy turned to Mrs. Midgen and asked her to request help from Captain Jean. After a short signal, the girl hurriedly runs away for help. The maniac was pretty impressed that this whole situation turned out to be a trap. Ho Yoon couldn't understand why the bastard in front of him, despite the fact that he still remains relaxed in a losing situation, then the guy decides to give all his attention to the defense. When suddenly an unknown man teasingly stuck out his tongue and asked if the hunter in front of him was the one who had personally manually stabbed his boss in the Red Horse building, the boy should thank them for taking revenge for him. After listening to this, Ho Yoon was pretty tense now all the puzzles in his head had formed and he realized that after all, these types and Lee Sogu were at the same time. In a fit of emotion, the boy in the suit rushed at the object of his conscience with the words that he was the one who had to kill Lee Soga. The hooded psychopath with a smile on his face calmly turned away from the ardent blows. After evaluating the hunter's skills, Yellow-Eyed decided to ask how the boy was going to kill the head of the Red Horse clan with such a low level of skill. However, Ho Yun, overcome with rage, did not listen to the villain and declared that he would take the maniac's life as revenge. When suddenly an unknown person grabbed a weapon aiming at his throat with just his fingers. After witnessing such overwhelming superiority, the boy came to his senses. However, it was too late. He managed to provoke the psychopath enough with his sharp tongue. The next moment, the unknown man with a smile on his face drew a smooth and elegant line with his hands. Ho Yun continued to stand motionless when suddenly the first drops of blood appeared from his neck and the guy realized that he could not afford to die here. When suddenly his head was separated from his torso, and in its place a fountain of blood began. Turning around, the killer looked at the lifeless body, worried. The maniac remembered that Jake had ordered them not to kill people of the association. Suddenly, a smile flashed on his face again. The boy remembered that Jake had just recently reclined at the research institute. Walking slowly, the psychopath began to doubt that his boss's name was Jake. Soon he remembered that his name was Jevu. Despite the fact that he was confused about names, the only thing he knew for sure was that this man was no longer with them. Moving further away from the corpse, and thus leaving the scene of the crime, the bloodthirsty guy was thinking about how far that bitch could have run. The head of the department watched the received recording about the killer, and soon he closed his laptop with a heavy hand. The man bitterly stated that Ho Yun courageously filmed the criminal right before his death. Jean Kihan stood silently and listened to his superior, he had nothing to add to this terrifying event. Soon, the man in the chair turned back to the guy with the question did they find out who the damn killer was? At the same time, the guy immediately stated that this was Cho Chunsik, an awakened D-rank who was active three years ago. Also, considering the attacks of Zhang Jinchil along with the remnants of the Red Horse on hunters in the sea portal, as well as looking at this incident, the guy could assume that the organization called Hans had lured a sufficient number of hunters to itself. After listening to this assumption, the man recalled Jeva who was a member of the search team of portals. At the same time Jean Kihun said that apparently the recruited Jevu joined the association by faking his status. They also received new information from Chang Ho, which notified that Jeva died at the research institute. Straightening his red tie, the head of the department ordered the boy to reveal the existence of an organization under the name of Hans to the rest of the S-class hunters and also Magina angrily ordered to involve all hunters of the association to catch and permanently end the geeks who kill civilians. At this time, a loud bang on the table was heard in one of the offices. The S-rank hunter turned to the exhausted Chan Ho and again stated that he did not like beating around the bush, so with the permission of his interlocutor, he decides to get right to the point. The tense leader of the Han De Song clan could not understand why this dude came back to their ghetto, but despite this, the guy kindly agreed to listen to the insolent man. At the same time, Seo Dongkal asked if the guy had heard about the Fruits of Hope Foundation that he runs. Chan Ho knew that this community cares about children who have lost their parents to monsters. The hunter was very glad that the leader knew what the conversation was about. At the same time he began to explain that this year they wanted to build houses for children and create families for them. However, due to the lack of portals, they have problems with funds for this good cause. Realizing that we were talking about large amounts of money and a good cause, Chan Ho did not even know what to answer. Soon So Dongkal shook hands with the clan leader with great gratitude and said that the guy should not hesitate to contact him if they needed S-rank strength. In response, Chan Ho awkwardly scratched his head and stated that the matter had not been resolved yet, and he should discuss everything properly with Hunter Han Dae Song. 
But even this arrangement of affairs suited so Doncal, and he was really grateful, saying goodbye. He asked to make a decision as soon as possible. After that, silence reigned in the office of the head of the clan, again holding his head. Cham Ho was recovering from shock because he had been asked for 400 billion for the Northern Development Fund. At the same time, an unknown man in a black robe was running cross-country along the coast of the sea. It turned out to be Li Changshik Hunter, a top S-rank hunter, and his daily training was interrupted by someone's presence. It was a pumped-up man of a contentedly large size and sunglasses. The blonde guy was wary and asked who was standing in front of him and for what purpose. However, the man did not answer these stupid questions and immediately launched an attack, but the S-rank hunter easily dodged such a careless blow. Dodging behind the guy, a shockwave flew past hinting at the strength of the enemy, but the blue-eyed man declared that such sluggish attacks would not pass. Immediately after that, Li Changshik went on the counter-offensive and struck back, but the man in sunglasses managed to block this attack. Stretching out his mighty arm towards the S-rank hunter, the dreadlock guy praised his opponent in English, after which the foreigner pointed down and used his skill called Neodymium. After that, the man with dreadlocks rushed to attack again, the blonde guy again just wanted to dodge the attack with his speed, but for some reason he couldn't lift his legs. At that moment, the foreigner declared that he was the coolest. Finding himself in a similar situation, Li Changshik realized that the only thing he could do was put a block. At the same second an explosion occurred in the place of the blonde guy. Meanwhile, at the orphanage called Nadezhia, Sodonkal told the nun the good news that in the first half of the year they planned to receive financial support for the construction of homes for the safe life of children and caregivers from the Daesong clan. The girl was pleased with this news, but she could not believe that the Daesong clan was able to devour such a sum for them. At the same time, an S-rank hunter in a tracksuit began to explain to the divine that by cleaning S-rank portals, a person earns astronomical money, so they should not have any problems with this matter. Suddenly, Sodonka looked away, feeling threatened. Looking back, the unshaven guy noticed an unknown figure outside the window. The hunter jumped up from his chair and ordered his sister to immediately take the children and volunteers to the bunker from the monsters. Hearing this so unexpectedly, the girl was stunned and could not understand what was the matter. But the guy did not explain everything and again told them to quickly run away from here. Meanwhile, an unknown guy in colorful t-shirts ran closer and closer to the shelter with children. The man slowly opened his eyes feeling an approaching threat. Suddenly, an enraged sound call jumped out from around the corner at the blonde guy with a baseball bat in his hands, and struck with all his might at an unknown man. After that, the guy in the tracksuit jumped back from the explosive power, and with a little effort braked with his sneakers. The black-haired man tensed as it seemed to him that his blow was blocked but it did not seem to him that the monster in front of him remained completely unharmed. With bitter annoyance, Sodunkal said that he just wanted to relax and it wouldn't hurt for him to sweat a little today. Suddenly, the guy took his right hand out of the pocket and aimed it at his opponent, after which an aura discharge shot was fired from two fingers. The guy with the bat in his hand successfully repelled this attack, a simple attack. After that, he took a look at the residual energy, and now he realized that his opponent was much stronger than he expected. At this time, another unfamiliar figure was approaching the 210th house, and a very satisfied Ryu Son was in this house. The girl was extremely glad that she managed to finish creating a doll of Daesong from his master Daesong's hair. The doll was exactly like the original and the same majestic aura flowed from it. The huntress, nicknamed the Hell Witch, could not withstand the pressure of such sweetness and began to hug the mini version of her master. At this time, Dae Song, who was in hell and picking his ear over the crowds of defeated enemies, could not understand what kind of bad feeling was haunting him. Standing in front of the house, the red-eyed woman began to gather her energy in her fist with the hope of finishing the mission as soon as possible. Soon, the three-story house with the villa was completely eclipsed by black smoke. Ryu Son, who was inside, began to yawn unconsciously and did not understand why she felt so sleepy. At that moment, the hell which lost her consciousness and soon the girl was snoring on the floor with her beloved doll. Although the doll was not going to sleep yet, it was the best version of Han Dae Song. At that time, the front door was already unlocked and the malefactor got inside this apartment. A strange object began to appear in the unknown woman's hand out of nowhere. Picking up the staff, the red-eyed girl announced that from now on there would be an altar of death. The woman was leisurely looking around the living room when suddenly her attention was attracted by something small on the floor. It was as great as Han Daesong's little incarnation. 
Looking at the little trash, goosebumps ran through the girl. It was the first time she had seen such a terribly ugly doll, as if from a nightmare. However, the black-haired doll could not understand what this crazy girl was carrying and who else was ugly. The caster could no longer tolerate the company of such a disgusting trinket, and remembered that if you burn the medium of the cursor, then the doll itself will disappear. With these thoughts the girl used the chakra of the colossus, namely the raging flame. The red-eyed woman struck the beautiful hair of the little ruler of hell and he cursed her for it at all, after which he in a rage with a kitchen knife rushed at the bitch who dared to offend him. Now he wanted only one thing her death. After seeing the madness of the little boy, the caster decides to use the colossus chakra again, namely the blessing. Despite the barrier, the doll flies into it at full speed without blinking an eye with the hope of puncturing it. The same cute Han Dae Song in a fit of emotion threatened to chop the girl into pieces and wished her to go to the top as soon as possible. The little lord of hell continued to pour out a barrage of blows without stopping, and suddenly the barrier began to crack. The red-eyed girl could not believe that her spell could suffer at the hands of a ridiculous doll. The villain staggered in fear and lost her balance. After that, little Day Song the Ripper began to take revenge on his abuser, and her frantic scream was a delight to his ears. That's how peace and quiet reigned in this house. Meanwhile, the doors to the observation room suddenly opened. The out-of-breath head of the department ran into the room as he began to receive numerous reports of ruptures, however. The girl with glasses replied to the chief that these were not ruptures but battles that had begun in places all over the city. One of the employees informed that a battle between Li Changshik and an unidentified mysterious force in the park near the Han River was identified, and they also report a confrontation between an unknown person and a donkal in an orphanage. Hearing this, the black-haired man tensed up and the thought flashed through his head, is this also the work of the bastards from Hans? Soon, the chief announced that since the Josian clan was based near the Han River, they would provide support to the shelter, after which he ordered a rapid reaction force to be sent there immediately. Meanwhile, still by the sea, the foreigner, holding his chin, pleasantly noticed to himself that the Korean hunters were holding up much better than he expected. In response, Li Changshik, with the help of all his knowledge of the English language, managed to send the enemy far away. At the same time, the man in sunglasses decided that it was time to end this battle and decided to use the power of the Colossus, namely the magnetic storm. Stretching out his hand, he began to distort space, thereby the body of the blonde hunter was rapidly attracted to the epicenter. Suddenly, the guy was enveloped in warm energy, and he did not expect this. All the pressure exerted by an unknown ability for some reason disappeared. The man with glasses also did not immediately understand what was going on an unknown figure in white sneakers appeared between the guys. This was Beck Heron, who came to the aid of the world-famous Li Changshik, who can't even fight back. After seeing his old friend, the blue-eyed guy thanked her and promised to return the favor. But the girl was a little distracted. Turning to the guy, she clarified is this guy in front of them an entity from Hans? However, the blonde guy could not understand what was going on, what other entities— the girl's gaze became even worse and she asked if he had not read the association's notifications sent only to S-ranked hunters. Suddenly, Li Changshik was hailed by a crowd of hunters who were worried with all their hearts for their leader, but the foreigner did not appreciate that the distance prevented him from having fun. At the same time, in anger, he struck his magnetic blow, seeing that the enemy began to act. The S-class hunter decided to use the aura skill, namely the Shield of Light. With the help of her abilities, Beck Heron calmly blocked the attack, but despite the fact that the blow was parried, the average hunters could hardly withstand such power. At the same time, Li Changshik suddenly turned to his subordinate with a request to quickly bring his weapon. At the same moment the hunter handed over a sheathed sword. And the next moment, taking out his blade, Li Changshik declared to his enemy that he was now a dead man. However, the foreigner, leaning his hand against his chin, realized that he had spent too much effort without even grabbing the real target so he decides that's enough for today and leaves the crime scene. Li Changshik is in no hurry to give chase and declares that he is tired like a dog. After these words, the blue-eyed guy suddenly loses consciousness. Those present did not expect this, and the subordinates of the clan decided that their leader needed urgent medical attention. Meanwhile, in the underground shelter under the shelter, the nun hid with the children and volunteers, as requested by the S-rank hunter. Some of the guys were worried about whether the director would be okay and the girls calmed the children down by asking if the little ones remembered the catchphrase from Dunkal. At the same time, a boy in a red t-shirt jumps out of the crowd of kids and quotes the phrase I am the number one hunter in Korea. 
This scene greatly amused and calmed those present. Meanwhile, their hero continued to frantically fend off the constant shots. The hunter did not see a single opportunity to somehow respond to this attack. The muscular blonde man crossed his arms and declared that it was time to end this fight, after which a strange bloody aura began to flow from his hands. The battered Sanko glanced maliciously in the direction of his opponent and saw that the man was preparing something strange again. At that moment, the blonde man used the power of the Colossus, namely the Blood Rain. A rain of blood poured down from the sky like hundreds of fiery arrows on the S-rank hunter. To repel an enemy attack, the black-haired guy decides to use the aura skill, raising his metal bat, he uses it to cause a thunderstorm. Clashing two opposing abilities caused a huge explosion, and soon the smoke began to gradually dissolve. From it, one could glimpse the angry figure of a high-ranking hunter, the defeated one was bleeding profusely, he could not fully repel the enemy attack and he was angry that he understood that he could not die here. After that, the black-haired guy dropped dead. The muscular blonde man's hands were shaking, because it was not the easiest fight and he needed to use all the power of the Colossus of Blood that he was gifted with. After that, the villain looked around and hurried to leave the crime scene. Meanwhile, Ryu Son woke up and touched the blood trail on the floor, and used her skill called Blood Memories. Looking through the events that took place on her knees in front of the defeated doll, the girl realized that her sweet Chucky Day song had nobly saved her. Meanwhile, information was reported on the news regarding the explosion in the park near the Khan River. As it became known initially, the assumption of a portal rupture was not confirmed and the place of the incident is currently strictly cordoned off. In addition, according to the stories of the eyewitnesses, an unknown person attacked the hunter Li Changshik, and news was also received about an incident at an orphanage called Nadezhda, whose director is So Donko. Carefully watching TV, Han Daesong's mother began to worry because her son had not been home for several days. Without thinking twice, the woman sitting on the couch began to look for her mobile phone. Suddenly, a sleepy Han Jisoo came up to her, who did not understand why her mother had not gone to bed yet, because Chang Ho had told them not to worry about her brother. However, this is the first time the black-haired woman hears that Chang Ho contacted them, and therefore he wants to hear details from his daughter about where her brother is now and what he is doing. However, Jisoo does not know anything about this and in general she declares that she does not need to know this. At the same time, an uproar arose in an upscale skyscraper due to the fact that the mother began to scold the ungrateful young lady to the brother who had done so much for them. In response, Han Jisoo begged for mercy from her mother. Meanwhile, an unknown sinister figure could be seen on the same skyscraper, and it was someone other than a maniac named Cho Chunsik, drooling, he was going to kill one of his victims and take the other hostage. At this time, the residents of the luxury apartment were already fast asleep, when suddenly a creepy figure appeared outside the window. It was the same wanted psychopath who made sacrifices. The man soaked his hands with an aura and decided to carefully enter the apartment. However, touching the glass, his hand was hit and thrown back. A small glow began to emanate from the sleeping black-haired girl, namely from the pendant that her beloved son Han Dae Song gave her. The killer did not expect that the guy would put a protective layer on his apartment, when suddenly Cho Chunsik was pierced through by a bright ray of light. The guy who had unexpected such a turn of events, with bewilderment in his eyes, began to spew blood from his mouth, the helpless maniac was literally impaled on a skewer. The shadow guard turned to the pitiful mortal and announced that their mistress was sleeping now, and if he wanted an easy death, then he should bite his tongue. Seeing such a thing, Cho Chunsik was very surprised because the call came true even without the presence of Han Dae Song in the vicinity. The startled maniac turned to the shadow promising to explain the misunderstanding, but the guardian was not going to listen to the insolent man and said that the lord would interrogate him personally. Meanwhile, moonlight reigned over the sea surface of the water, when suddenly the sea became restless and a demonic dragon rose from the water and an unknown figure could be seen on its head. Suddenly, a notification popped up saying that the quest called the Sea of the Demonic Dragon has been successfully completed and now the power of the body of the ruler of hell has been fully released. Standing on the blue dragon was none other than Han Daesong himself. Now the real lord of hell has returned to the world. Suddenly, the red-eyed guy was approached by a guardian who announced to the lord that a rat had been caught trying to harm the lady. Soon, in the kingdom of the lord of hell, a chained figure sat in front of a huge staircase. It was Cho Chunsik who did not even understand where to be. Suddenly, slow footsteps were heard behind the defenseless guy, which grew louder with each step. Han Dae Song was walking slowly through the hall, 
in front of which hundreds of messages from demonic beasts of the abyss were displayed that glorified their god, but the guide did not understand why these freaks were so drawn to worship him. Coming closer to the prisoner, the ruler of hell promised to pull the prisoners out of the abyss as soon as the time came. After these words, Dae Song turned to the chain Cho Chunsik. The angry white-haired ruler of hell wanted to know who the owner of this mutt was. Meanwhile, in the southern aller of Khans, two prisoners stood in front of Elhim. The man asked the guys what about the specified goals. At the same time, the blonde man said that he got rid of the second S rank from the Donkal, but the muscular guy on the contrary could not boast of the same result. He tried to justify this blunder by saying that unknown hunters had prevented him, and if it hadn't been for them, Li Changshik would definitely have been dead. Elhim interrupted the dispute between the two men by announcing that Guzman was dead and Sagat was missing. The guys were surprised by what they heard, because the demon Guzman was directed to the weakest of the goals. Suddenly an unknown snow-white monster approached the guys who announced that he would grant them the power of the apostle. The only thing he asks in return is that they kill that arrogant Han Dae Song immediately. Meanwhile, in the Korean hospital, two guards in dark suits were standing at one of the wards. Suddenly, the S-rank hunter woke up. At the same time, the black-haired guy turned to the girl and ordered her to immediately call a doctor and inform Mr. Head about it. A white-haired guy lying on a hospital bed forcefully asked where he was. At the same time a girl standing next to him hurried to explain to the leader that he was now in a medical institution and this was due to the fact that the guy was shocked by the exhaustion of the aura. Upon hearing this, the guy tried to explain himself, saying that it was a shame, but the girl said that he could not move yet. After that Li Changshik asked where Heron was now and one of those present said that she was with So Donkal. At the same time the black-haired man rebuked his colleague and asked why he told this. At the same time, the blue-eyed man changed his tone and asked what happened to his brother Donkal. The guys in suits were in no hurry to disclose this information, but soon they said that after a sudden attack from unknown people, the life of the leader of So Donkal is in critical condition and therefore the huntress Beck Heron hurried to his aid. Li Changshik, an S-rank hunter, did not expect such news because his friend is strong. After learning such gloomy news, the white-haired man began to get out of bed by force, asking where Donkal was being treated, but the subordinate asked the leader to calm down because he had not yet recovered. But the white-haired guy in a rage only repeated his question. Meanwhile, in one of the chambers, endlessly repeated suggestions were heard, namely, rapid regeneration. Inside the room, Jean Kihun said that this should be enough because the external and internal wounds had healed, but the agitated Beck Heron treated the victim with all her might because she could not let him die. Suddenly, the door to the ward opened and Li Changshik burst in. At the same time the guy saw Donkal in front of him, who was severely exhausted and unconscious. The white-haired man in fear told them not to dare to say that so Donkal was dead, but Jean Kihun said that the man was in a coma and from the point of view of medicine, only his brain was dead. When the guy heard this, he got angry and asked if the bastards from Hans were involved in this too. At the same time, the black-haired man confirmed Hunter No. 1's guess and stated that the association was doing everything possible to track down the culprits. Suddenly, Jean Kihun's phone rang. Picking up the phone, he learned shocking news from the head of the department about the newly opened S-rank portal. The high-ranking hunters present were also shocked by this news and utter silence reigned in the room. Meanwhile, a huge scarlet S-rank portal stretched over the city. The situation was closely monitored by the higher ranks from the video surveillance room. Everyone present was amazed at the level of threat that had arisen, but the head of the department tried to remain calm. Realizing that there was no one to fight, because Li Changshik was shocked by the aura and so Donkal was now unconscious, and the huntress Beck Heron and the Scarlet which are auxiliary members of the team. Therefore, from that moment on, the black-haired man announced a red alert, and ordered the mobilization of all registered hunters in the association. After that, the life of the hunters' association went into full swing, but despite this, the head of the department understood that they had only one hope. Meanwhile, in the castle of the Lord of Hell, Han Dae Song used an ability called Ghost Eyes to get the information he was interested in from a spoof killer. Looking the poor guy in the eyes, the white-haired guy ordered him to show all his memories. At the same time, Han Dae Song saw the events of the past, namely how the guy got his powers and became a maniac. After watching an exciting movie, the guy canceled his ability, but now Kaniki can realize that the pop-eyed monster was apparently the main boss. Meanwhile, Residents were informed about the situation at the exit to the highway which was on the outskirts of Seoul. According to the news, at the moment people are trying to avoid the huge portal that was located high in the sky of the city, 
so many are evacuating from the central areas, thereby forming a traffic jam. Along with this information, according to unofficial sources, it was known that the two best S-rank hunters Li Changshik and So Dongkal would not be able to take part in the clearing of the portal due to their injuries. The association itself has not made any statements about this. A blue suitcase was rolling along the marble tiles with difficulty. Its owner was Han Jisoo, who was dragging her luggage with difficulty. When she saw this, the mother asked her daughter what kind of suitcase it was. At the same time, the pink-haired Gopnitsa said that she and her mother urgently needed to leave the city because there was complete chaos on the streets. However, the black-haired woman did not appreciate her daughter's offer, because how can she leave so shamelessly when Dae Song still has not returned home? At the same time Han Jisoo said that it was time for her mother to stop worrying about the monster who himself easily beat all the poor demons. The girl's conversation was interrupted by the sudden sound of the front door opening. At the same time the mother was shocked because her son's hair turned white. His sister generally assumed that the guy had dyed his hair, but this was not the case. Suddenly, Deshaun noticed a suitcase in the middle of the apartment and decided to ask where they were going. At the same time, the pink-haired woman whispered to her brother that they were now preparing to evacuate because of the S-rank portal, and she had already packed his things, so she suggested that he also quietly escape from this city. Grinning at his sister's words, the guy turned to his mother, after which he closed his eyes and asked his family to sit quietly at home because this is the safest place in all of Korea. It was for this dialogue that the guy came home. Also, the Lord of Hell noticed that Jisoo was right about one thing, he would easily deal with the monsters and come back. At the same time, the mother humbly agreed to wait for her son, but the pink-haired girl clearly did not sign up for this adventure. After that, the ruler of Hell turned around and went to solve the problem. At that time, a huge tank was driving through the city, but I'm not talking about one tank, but about hundreds of heavy vehicles that were preparing for a military operation, and the reason for all this was a huge scarlet portal that was the highest threat to ordinary residents. Soon, a dark silhouette appeared on one of the roofs of multi-story buildings. This silhouette was the great and mighty dead inside named Han Dae Song. Looking towards the portal, the guy immediately realized that they were trying to lure him inside. At this moment, the association's employees were looking at the creepy portal in anticipation, when suddenly the silence was interrupted by a loud slap on the table. The head of the department was shocked that the bastards from Hans managed to create even an S-rank portal, when suddenly a girl with glasses looking at her phone said that the Dae Song clan had bet on an independent sweep of the S-rank portal. Upon hearing about this, the head shouted with joy, thereby attracting the attention of others, after which the man, straightening his tie, asked for forgiveness for his behavior. The head of the department announced that the clan for cleaning this portal has now been determined. Everyone else should prepare for the breakup. It was this information that the man asked to pass on to each group of hunters and the girl accepted the order. Meanwhile, people were preparing for defense with might and main, specially trained people distributed groups of hunters and dictated the best strategy to them. One of the fighters asked a friend who would go to these gates of hell at all, but the guy in the purple t-shirt did not know the answer to this question himself. Suddenly. The square was filled with the sounds of mobile messages. It was a mailing list from the association in which the clan appeared to clean up a high-ranking portal. Suddenly, the silhouette of a dragon appeared and a thunderous roar emanated from it, which forced people to close their eyes. The silhouette of a shadowy creature raced over the heads of low-ranking hunters with terrifying speed. At the same time, the people present realized that this was Han Daesong's dragon, and it was he who was trying to clean out the S-rank portal. Meanwhile, from the management room of the association, the chief executive also watched the last ray of hope. They just have to trust him and the man and his subordinates sincerely hope for him. Reporters also try not to miss this crucial moment for Korea and start broadcasting that the Dae Song clan decides to clean the S-rank portal alone. At this moment the ruler of hell sitting on his fire-seeking friend flew into the portal. And after a moment, the white-haired guy found himself inside the looming threat, finding himself in another dimension. Dessen felt that in this biome it was below 70 degrees Celsius, if not lower. Suddenly, a man with dreadlocks on his head used a magnetic storm to overthrow a dragon. It was the same guy in sunglasses who once attacked Li Changshik. The ruler of hell looked towards the non-entity with a scarlet gaze. Meanwhile, the summoned dragon was already ready to use the breath of doom. At the same moment, a jet of blue flame fell on the guy in the summer t-shirt. The black-haired man without hesitation tried to repel this attack. However, when he realized that it was too late for him, it was then that a bright explosion occurred in the snow biome. However, 
This was not the end of the fight and with one glance, Han Daesong realized that the enemy was running away. At the same time the white-haired guy decided to personally settle the problem and jumped off his dragon. But as soon as he was in the air, red needles of aura rushed towards him, not confused. The guy slowly took out his mighty sword and used the king's breath to repel such a pathetic attack. There was a deafening explosion in the snow biome again and even the temperature rose by several degrees. In the clouds of smoke stood the bloodthirsty ruler of hell who was holding his naked blade. Looking to the side, Destin turned to the homeless man and asked him to stop suffering bullshit and hide like a loser. At the same time, a dark-haired man appeared in front of the white-haired guy. For some time they stood silently facing each other while a heavy snowstorm was raging around. Suddenly, a man in sunglasses said that Day Song was too emboldened for an ordinary hunter, but the Lord of Hell did not accept compliments today and suggested that he start already. Smiling, the guy with dreadlocks again used the power of the Apostle, namely the Titan of the Overthrowing Gods. At the same moment the man's clothes tore into tiny pieces and a new previously unseen power flowed from his hands. Now, the stranger has completely transformed and looks more like a monster than a human. However, the white-haired man was not greatly confused, although he noticed that the opponent had become a little stronger. Seeing the face of the carefree guy, the transformed monster wanted to check how long the white-haired man could remain as calm, so he reactivated the power of the colossus, namely the huge meteor. Seeing this, the ghoul laughed at the top of his voice because the guy is trying so hard for Day Song to use his strength. The good-natured ruler of hell decided to play along with the man-man and released his sealed magic. At the same time an incredible force began to flow from Day Song, which filled the entire space. The red-eyed weirdo did not understand where such power came from an ordinary person. At this time, there was another unknown silhouette behind the ruler of hell. It was a white-haired man who was preparing his crushing attack, because he knew that there is always a weakness in impressive techniques. At this moment, Dishan coolly turned to the rat behind his back and asked why is he hiding so diligently in the grave. Hearing this, the white-haired guy's confidence instantly disappeared and he could not understand if Day Song had originally known about his presence. At this moment, the mutating muscular Gakamuchi man finished his preparations and a fiery meteor rushed at the ruler of hell. The demon lord was looking forward to the start of the battle of such a sweet battle and with a smile on his face used an ability called the fury of the lord of hell. The next moment, the guy suddenly swung his blade in front of him. However, this swing was like a bank eye that chopped down everything in its path thousands of kilometers away. The mutated guy didn't even have time to blink, and the only thing he said before his death was fuck. The ruler of hell continued to stand calmly in the same place. A sliced flaming meteorite fell behind the brutal Han Dae Song. After witnessing such a shocking sight, the man did not know what to do next, because such a level of power is not available even to Elhim and the guy with trembling hands tried to pronounce the name of the ability. When suddenly the hand of the Lord of Hell got into his muscular throat, Han Daesong lifted the defenseless poor guy by the neck and declared that everyone is always substituted when using the skill. After which, the irritated white-haired guy asked where Popeye was now. At the same moment, a mysterious eye appeared in front of the guys from the rift, but this eye was not the only one, he had many friends with eyes. The appearance of this ghoul was exactly what the pleased ruler of Hell was waiting for. Immediately after that, with a single movement of his hand, he threw the muscular guy away. A strange voice coming from the eyes suggested that the guy did not get the power by awakening and the Popeye wanted to check this power personally. Suddenly, the yellow-eyed opponent used the power of Hecaton, namely petrification, but despite this, nothing happened to the ruler of hell. Meanwhile, the muscular yellow-haired guy began to turn into stone, and before he could ask to stop, the man turned into a work of art. After that, Unknown red rays rushed towards the motionless Han Dae Song, but this attack could not harm him. Raising his sword again, the white-haired guy declared that now it was his turn. At the same moment the ruler of hell used the ultimate bullet of fire, and a fireball appeared in front of him. Now Han Deeson suggested Popeye to climb out and attack. After these words, hellfire struck all the eyes that appeared, as well as the petrified man, the stone statue shattered into tiny fragments. After these events, there was nothing left around the ruler of hell except the glowing snow, but despite this, the white-haired demon knew that Popeye was not dead yet, so he politely asked him to get out. At the same time, a strange eye appeared in front of the guy again who wanted to know where this Piran came from, because his power was clearly not obtained from this star. But Han Dae Song did not understand why he was so interested in him and offered to answer his question first, and then he would also answer it. 
Upon hearing the offer of a deal, the eye glowed with interest, but the white-haired guy was waiting for an answer. Does Popeye agree or not? At the same time, Red Eye joyfully looking at Han Dae Song declared that he adored deals. However, in fact, the monster was going to take the bastard's soul the moment he relaxed his vigilance. After hearing a positive response from the enemy, the ruler of hell decided to ask his question. At the same moment the guy opened his scarlet eyes and used an ability called Ghost Eyes. The monster did not understand what it was and he did not expect that he would fall for such a deception. In turn, Han Dae Song said that he initially did not believe scum like this, so he demanded that Popeye show all his memories. The Popeye monster tried to resist, but it was useless. At the same time the ruler of hell saw the planet of the titans called Hecker. A large-scale battle of monsters and winged angels took place on it, but the lower creatures could not oppose anything to the opponents, and their kind was destroyed, not only the genus but also the planet itself. However, there were those who still managed to escape on a spaceship. Soon, the survivors were lucky enough to get to the Hans Nebula, where they met their ally, who was surprised that all the many descendants of Hecker were dead and only they remained alive. These survivors turned out to be the previously familiar lords of Hans and the pop-eyed kid, their squad decided to open the space of a living star to revive the Colossus. All they had to do was place a portal cube on this star, and fill the earth with ethereal energy so that their grandiose plan would come true. A couple of years later, at a meeting of world leaders on the shadow side, a circle of influential people gathered in the building who discussed the possibility of negotiations with aliens because they sent them a giant clot of energy and offered them immortality. Suddenly, there was a sound coming from a cane in the hall. An extraterrestrial being greeted the leaders of the earth and declared that it was time to grant them immortality. At that moment, the owner of the memories pulled out his eye. Despite this, Popeye still managed to find out where Han Daesung's power came from. Popeye suggested that the white-haired guy is the lord of the junkyard universe called the Nebula of Demonic Beasts. Remaining in the winter biome, the lord of hell was surprised that a freak with thousands of years of memories managed to break the connection with the ghostly eyes at the moment of his confusion. But despite this, Dessen assumed that the final boss was an alien whom he saw last, but still the rebirth of the Colossus and the thousand-year history of another race is too much information that can be obtained for one time. Holding his neck, the ruler of hell remembered that he was now in the S-rank portal, but he did not meet a single monster here and did not receive anything from this cart, when suddenly a strange thing attracted the attention of the blue-eyed Han Dae Song. There was a strange smoking object lying among a pile of snow when suddenly pillars of light began to appear from the sky. Meanwhile, the Scarlet Portal continued to hang over Korea, numerous hunters were ready for the worst-case scenario, and the restored Cho Hanul and Beck Heron came to the aid of the fighters. The head of the department sincerely expressed gratitude to the highly ranked hunters for standing at the head of the groups preparing to break up. However, the man in the suit was still surprised because he had heard that the leader of the Marble Clan could not use both hands. At the same time the masked guy said that he had hastily installed spare equipment despite certain technical limitations he could still fight. Suddenly, the Beckheron warrior asked the man how long ago the hunter Han Daesong went to clean up this portal and at the same time they were told that according to official data it happened about three hours ago. Closing his eyes, the head of the department said that if the guy fails, they will still have a second chance to attack the portal, so the man only hopes that Daesong will return unharmed. Suddenly, a voice from the side said that the head of the department was insulting the teacher with the word failure. The owner of these words turned out to be the Inferno which Ryu Son. Coming closer to the guys, the arriving huntress asked if these ignoramuses knew how strong her teacher Dae Song was. However, ignoring the witch's question, Beck Heron asked what Ryu Son had forgotten here at all. At the same time, the blue-eyed girl stated that a killer from Hans came to her house. Hearing such words, those present were amazed. The man in the suit hurried to ask the huntress what happened to the attacker and at the same time the Infernal which declared that the enemy had died in battle with her doll. From these words the guys only had more questions. At the same time, Ryu Son tried to explain that she had created a special doll and imposed a stronger curse, but all her energy was spent on killing the enemy, which is why it takes even more strength from Mr. Han Dae Song to return the doll to the blue-eyed girl. Suddenly, the dialogue of high-ranking hunters was interrupted by people shouting that the color of the portal was changing and the portal was apparently successfully cleared. All those present were defeated by such a shocking result. Meanwhile, the ruler of hell held two incredible crystals in his hands. 
At the same time several tablets appeared in front of him that notified that he had received power called a huge meteor, and also with the help of one ethereal core he was able to create an awakened S rank. Looking at the two crystals that were the ethereal cores, the ruler of hell was afraid to guess how much money he could get for them. However, he did not dwell on it, and decided that now he could safely leave this portal. On the street, numerous citizens were waiting for their hero. Soon the ruler of hell flew out of the cleared portal on his ghostly dragon. Ryusoon, surrounded by other S-ranked hunters, screamed and waved at her teacher, calling the guy to them, seeing the annoying little white-haired guy died inside again. Soon, Han Daesong landed on his cute pet in the middle of the road. The people around him could not believe their eyes that the guy had single-handedly cleared the s rank portal in just three hours. Jumping off his pet, he appeared in front of a black-haired man, the head of the department with a smile on his face, on behalf of the entire association, officially expressed gratitude to Mr. Han Dae Song for such an incredible feat. And not only the boss, but all the other people were insanely grateful, which made the white-haired guy change his face. The Lord of Hell was not used to such praise at all, and it made him a little uncomfortable. In addition to the guy, an annoying hell witch ran up to him who wanted to know what kind of incredible monsters were in the s rank portal. Not only Ryu Son was interested in this information, but the rest of the hunters were looking forward to the answer to this question. However, the great Han Daesong said that there were no monsters at all and the hell which did not even know what to say to this. The head of the department was also very surprised and hurried to clarify how the S-rank portal was without monsters. How can this be? In response, the ruler of hell stated that he met three people inside. One was pop-eyed, the second was black-haired and the third was white-haired. After hearing this information, Beck Heron realized that the black-haired and white-haired were the bastards who attacked Li Changshik and So Dongkal. The head of the department still found it difficult to believe what he had heard because there were no monsters in the S-rank portal. Some nonsense. Calming down, the black-haired man said that the association was independently exploring the portal. At the same time, Cho Hunil said that the two described guys fit the description of the guys who attacked Li Changshik and So Dongkal, but they hear about Popeye for the first time. Beck Heron also wants to know what happened to them. At the same time, Han Daesong stated that Popeye had knocked off and he had finished off the two remaining ones. The head of the department decided to clarify whether Popeye was also an entity from Hans. In response to this, the guy said that this was something like an average boss, but in general he believes that there is another secret leader and before dealing with this, he needs to sort out the information received. At the same time, Ryu Son again accosted the ruler of hell, and this time she wanted to ask her teacher what he got inside the portal. Many people were also interested in this issue, because if you think about it, the loot inside the S-rank portal should be incredible. Not finding a better excuse, the great fucker grabbed his head and said that he had a headache because he used too much force in the portal, so they should contact Song Changho for details. Ryu Son asked the teacher to wait because she had another request, but the trace of the guy has long disappeared. While the inferno which stood in shock, those present processed the information they received. Soon, it was broadcast on all Korean news channels that Hunter Dae Song from South Korea had single-handedly cleared a high-ranking portal. Now, after this feat, all people expect major changes in the world ranking of hunters. At this time, streamer Yonggil was splashing in front of the camera. He was immensely glad that his beloved Dae Song had become the strongest hunter. The guy hurried to remind the audience that he was the manager of a fan cafe called Han Dae Song, who steadily follows Dae Song since the beginning of his hunting career. Now the guy offered to talk about how important it was to clean up this portal by paying attention to the world map. According to all reports, only America, China, Russia, Japan and the European Union cleaned the S-rank portals. But now the first single cleaning of the S-rank portal appeared in the entire universe, which was carried out by the Republic of Korea. After that, streamer Yego promised the guys that after such a feat, Brother Dae Song is obliged to soar into the top one of the world hunter rankings. In response, the audience reminded the guy in the comments that there were no monsters in the portal, according to Han Daesong himself, and now the streamer did not know what to say in response to this asshole. Soon the guy got angry after seeing numerous messages that he was spluttering saliva and he promised to block everyone who writes it. Soon, the streamer decides to ask the head of the collector clan personally from Anderson about the S-rank portal. After calling the strongest grandfather in the universe on the phone, the guy decides to find out if he went to collect loot from the S-rank portal. Hearing the answer to his question, the shaggy guy was very surprised. Meanwhile, numerous calls rang out in the Han Daesong clan building, and the huntress Shin Cho Yong was sitting at the table. 
receiving calls from various news channels. Holding her head, the black-haired girl was already starting to get tired. She came here at the request of her leader to temporarily help the Daesong clan, but she did not expect such nonsense. Suddenly two office phones rang again in front of her and temporary secretary Shin Chuyong went back to work. Meanwhile, Chang Ho was holding his phone to his ear. The guy was starting to shake specifically and prayed to all the gods that his genius friend Dae Song would pick up this damn phone. Realizing that all this was useless, the fastest hands in the Wild West began typing a message notifying Han Dae Song that they should at least hold a press conference, because their office phone is bursting with calls. However, at this time, the white-haired ruler of hell was sleeping soundly on his soft cot. Now the guy in the suit has officially surrendered. Clutching his head, Chang Ho began to talk to himself, stating that Dae Song should not have cleared this portal alone. Meanwhile, the main priest of the hackathon named Lemish was sitting in the Hans wormhole at the altar of the Colossi. The blue alien was bowing to his gods, when suddenly his rest was interrupted by the lord of the East Elhim, who arrived to see the main lord priest. A man in a brown robe turned to his boss and said that there was a problem with the land, but Levish did not expect this and coolly clarified what had happened. At the same time, the masked man announced that most likely the lord of the demonic beast Nebula appeared on earth, who used magic to extract memory, and now obviously he is aware of their plans. The priest of the hackathon silently listened to the guy, after which he hit the ground with his cane, and stated that from now on they were temporarily forbidden to create portals in Korea the alien ordered them to calmly prepare for war with heaven. After receiving the order from the chief priest, Elhim humbly bowed his head and agreed. Meanwhile, in the World Association of Hunters, numerous newspapers and magazines on the topic of a single sweep of the S-rank portal in just three hours lay on a wooden table. Representatives from different countries gathered in this office to discuss this issue. Suddenly, Someone tapped the microphone with his finger in order to check the sound and the head of the World Hunter Association under the name Darren Anderson announced that the meeting on the S-ranked Korean portal was declared open. The man with the scar on his eye said that before moving on to the issue of the South Korean S-ranked portal, they should take a look at something, namely, he asked to see the first slide. It depicted Hunter Han Dae-song, who independently closed the aforementioned S-ranked portal in South Korea. Suddenly one of the present raised his hand and wanted to remind something. It was the director of the main bureau of hunters of Japan named Natsukawa Shinji, who stated that in their country, dungeons are evaluated not by their aura but by the level of monsters, and according to the information received, no monsters appeared from the current dungeon, which means it cannot be recognized as S-rank. The man also claims that there are only six countries, including Japan, that were able to clear the S-rank dungeon. The head of the awakened forces of China also joined this discussion under the name Jin Lum, the man supported the words of his colleague, because closing such gates alone is initially impossible and apparently the rank of these gates is not S, and the black-haired man declares the rank of these gates is not higher than their training grounds. The brown-haired man did not understand why those present were in such a hurry to insert a word and advise to refrain from hasty judgments, because the head of the Association of Korea is present at this conference. This leader was a well-known Park Chong-ho, he slowly adjusted his tie watching the behavior of the assholes present. At this moment, Darren Anderson confirmed that the official hearing of the S-rank closure will be held by an investigative committee sent by the association. However, the man states that today's meeting is being held at a different moment, and first he suggests listening to the head of Park Chong-ho. At the same time, the old man moved closer to the microphone and properly introduced himself, after which he stated that he had received important information from Hunter Han Dae Song, and that was why he wanted to develop global measures against this problem. To start making decisions, the chief executive of the Korean Hunters Association suggests watching a video. Meanwhile, at the Dae Song clan building, a two-color car was approaching the facility at all times, and the crowd of reporters immediately recognized it and realized that leader Chan Ho had arrived. Shin Cho Ung, who was driving, turned to the leader and warned about annoying reporters and also asked what they would do. Chan Ho was already gradually starting to hate the whole world around him, because a little more and he would go crazy. Soon, the car door slowly opened and before he could get out of the car properly, the embarrassed guy was surrounded by crowds of reporters who wanted to know the real level of the portal and what did Hunter Han Dae Song say about it. Straightening his tie, the brown-haired guy wondered what kind of cretin started a rumor that the portal was not S-ranked. After thinking a little, Chan Ho turned to a reporter and said that regarding the situation with the portal, Hunter Han Dae Song will have an announcement about this in the near future so the guy kindly asked them to just wait for the conference. 
However, these words did not reassure the reporters, they wanted to at least see the loot from the clean portal, because rumors about an empty portal are already spreading abroad, and the research group generally reported that they had found nothing. At that moment, Shinchon, who was acting as interim secretary, got into the feud. The girl said that this interview was over and therefore asked her leader to go ahead. After getting out of the human trap, Chang Ho turned around and thanked the girl. At the same time a hail of questions fell in the direction of the black-haired girl, but Shin Chon flatly refused to comment on anything. Meanwhile, a bunch of reporters crowded under the building of the association where the relatives of the S-rank hunter lived. Suddenly some of the guys noticed Dae Sung's mother and his sister. The next moment, the girls were surrounded by vultures eager to ask a few questions, but the black-haired woman was afraid of such a crowd and said that they themselves did not know anything. One of the reporters pointed the camera at the girls and asked where the hero who saved the country was now, saying that many citizens wanted to hear his speech. However, the women did not know that he was a hero at all, and Han Jisu strongly doubted it. The man did not lag behind the two girls and asked to say at least briefly whether something special happened during the period of this soul us rank portal. At the same time, a pink-haired girl in sweatpants replied that her brother at that time told them not to evacuate. After hearing this, the man asked why. In response, Han Jisu stated that according to Han Dae Song, it would be safest at home. The reporters already sparkled with joy because now they have a foreign language that can be written in the headline. Next, a black-haired girl came up to JIS and asked if Mr. Dae Song's hair color change was somehow related to his inner state. Suddenly, at this moment, the girl was loudly called by name. The white-haired guy asked his sister to take his mother's hands and return home. Turning around, the reporters found the object of their adoration behind them. Soon the hawks changed their target and surrounded the white-haired hero, asking him hundreds of questions. Soon, a black-haired ghoul also got to him, who asked to comment on the theory of an empty S-rank portal. Suddenly at this moment the blue-eyed guy put his finger to his mouth and hissed that those who say at least one more word will not be invited to the hall for a press conference. After hearing such a statement, the influx of questions subsided because there was a general press conference at stake. The next moment the ruler of hell snapped his fingers, and creating a small electric discharge disabled all the recording equipment of the guys. Gradually leaving, the white-haired guy said that photography and videography were also prohibited, after which he looked back and repeated that people would receive all the information at the conference in a week, and now he asks everyone to disperse. The saddened reporters had no choice but to silently escort the newly minted hero. Meanwhile, a snow-white private plane was flying in the blue sky, and the chief executive of the Korean Hunters Association was in it, who was sitting with his eyes closed and thinking about what had happened at the meeting. Jean Lung said that the gates to the other world pose a threat to humanity, but they are also sources of important resources, so he suggested catching those Hongsa who create portals and using them for their own purposes. At the same time, the black-haired man wanted to personally test the kid's abilities, so he found an excuse to call this hunter here. The gray-haired old man supported his colleague's thoughts and turned to Park Chang-ho with the words that they needed more accurate testimony, and he also wanted to see Han Dae Song. In fact, Natsukawa Shinji also wanted to know about the guy's abilities and if they turned out to be real, he realized that they would have to maintain absolutely loyal relations with Korea. Another unknown character joined the conversation, who supported the idea of those present, and also wanted to call Hunter Han Dae Song to get more information from him. However, Park Chong Ho stated that this is completely out of the question, because currently the Hunter Han Dae Song is the most important strategic resource of the Republic of Korea. At the same time, the head of the World Association of Hunters said that to protect the portals, Korea would receive support from the World Alliance in the form of five S-rank hunters, after which Darren Anderson asked the gray-haired man if he now agreed to call Hunter Han Dae Song here. The old man looked around the audience with a sidelong glance and realized that these assholes were not interested in cons in any way, but exclusively in the Hunter Han Dae Song. With his arms crossed, Park Chong Ho said that they should act as they want, but he does not intend to help in this. Sitting on the plane, the chief executive of the Hunters Association declared to himself that he would not play for selfish reasons, after which he calmly continued his flight. Meanwhile, in the clan building, Dae Song was surprised to see Shin Choyin and asked if she had decided to work here. In response, the girl greeted the head and thanked the leader because he had saved her life twice and before that she had not been able to thank him properly. But Han Dae Song did not even know what to answer and asked if the girl's body had completely recovered. In response, the girl said that since the Aura Reservoir was destroyed, she could not work as a hunter, but she did not have any problems in everyday life. 
so she tried to help with things here until she returned to the hunters. Upon hearing this, the white-haired guy asked if she still wanted to return to the hunters. Lowering her eyes, the blue-eyed girl revealed her background and told that she had lost her parents because of monsters and that is why Shinchon wants to become a hunter again and take revenge on those who created the portals. Hearing this, the ruler of hell was thinking specifically, when suddenly the attention of the gallop chicks was interrupted by Chang Ho, who flew into the office, surprising that he was busy, seeing his friend, the guy in the suit smiled and handed him an invitation that they received from the World Association of Hunters. Xin Chuyin read the contents of the letter in which Dae Song was congratulated on the closure of the S-rank portal, and invited to a meeting in the hope that the owner of such a valuable information would visit them, and share his experience, and knowledge. Chang Ho considered this great news because their Dae Song is reaching the international level and high-ranking hunters from all over the world will be invited to this meeting. However, Han Dae Song does not hesitate to completely refuse this invitation. The guy in the suit did not expect such a sharp refusal and asked his friend to at least think about this issue and take his time. However, the Lord of Hell comments on his decision by saying that those types from Hans are much stronger than they seem and if they show up at the moment of Dae Song's absence, it will be a real ass. Although Chang Ho did not want to agree with this, it was absolutely true, because even if, as stated in the letter, they were given five S-ranked hunters from the association, they would still be weaker than one day song. Exhaling, the brown-haired guy agrees and decides to answer that they simply will not be able to come. After that he asks a friend how they will prepare for the press conference. After hearing this, the white-haired guy came to his senses because of all that had happened and the thousand-year-old information he had received, and he forgot about the scheduled conference. Without thinking twice, he turns towards the terrified Shin Choeung and announces that he already has a plan. Soon, when representatives of all the news channels were gathered in the hall, the black-haired girl announced the start of a press conference on the S-rank portal, and to begin with, it was decided that leader Chang Ho would hold a clarifying briefing. Grabbing the microphone, the brown-haired guy who is the leader of the Dae Song clan introduced himself properly, and began a long story about what happened when the high-ranking portal was closed. After this briefing, the beautiful Shinchon took the microphone again, who turned to the gentleman of the reporter who wanted to ask their questions, she asked them to raise their hands and she would answer one question at a time. After that, there was a queue of raised hands in the hall. Soon, the blue-eyed huntress asked the reporter in the front row to voice her question. At the same time, the long-haired girl Lee Jimin from the weekly Hunter News channel addressed her question to Hunter Han Dae Song. The guys were happy to make room for their friend at the microphone. The girl with glasses said that she had heard that before sending Mr. Han Dae Song to the raid, he asked not to evacuate his family and friends. In this regard, the girl had a question did the guy have information about what was inside the portal. Without thinking twice, the ruler of hell said that he did not know what would be inside the portal, and the reason why he said so was that he did not think that there was such a portal now that he could not close, which is why he asked not to leave anywhere. The reporter's mouths opened at such audacious words, but Jang Ho inwardly begged his friend to watch his words at least a little. Soon Shinchon decided to listen to the next question and called the next gentleman with his hand raised. At the same time, a familiar curly-haired reporter repeated the well-known information that there was not a single monster in the portal and therefore he was wondering what enemy hunter Han Dae Song was fighting. Again, without thinking, the ruler of hell began to say that there was a hard L inside the portal. Without hearing who the hunter was talking about, the reporter asked who was hard. The great Khan Dae Song almost told the whole world about the pop-eyed enemy but he managed to stop and said that he fought with enemies in a snowstorm. At the same time, Chang Ho stood behind the microphone and stated that the research group confirmed that the temperature inside the portal was below 90 degrees and that the hunter Han Dae Song had engaged the enemies in a harsh winter remains a fact, but the identity of the enemies was classified, so the brown-haired guy asked those present to wait for an official announcement from the association. Not satisfied with the answer he received, the curly-haired reporter asked if they had at least some evidence, for example, Loot that would refute the rumor about an empty portal? At the same moment, in front of a dozen people, the ruler of hell opened a portal that acted as an inventory. Han Dae Song decided to take pity and show the loot that was knocked out of the S-rank portal. The next moment, the white-haired boy took out a trophy obtained from the enemies of the defeated enemies inside the portal it was the S-rank Awakening Core. Upon seeing such a relic, the reporters were amazed because it was the first S-level Awakening Core in the whole world. Ryu Son, watching this on her gaming computer live, was also shocked by the size of the core, and not only she, the other high-ranking hunters also watched the process of this conference, and saw something like this for the first time. 
the main leaders couldn't believe their ears, because this promised the birth of at least one new S-rank hunter in Korea. From now on, the streamer Yegil ordered those assholes who wrote the entire internet about an empty portal to shut down. Suddenly, the white-haired Dae Song turned, holding the core towards Shin Choyin. The blue-eyed girl's face was illuminated by a bright light, and she asked what does this mean? Smiling, the Lord of Hell asked if she was ready to return to the ranks of hunters? And he asks her to use the core of the awakening right now. Beads of sweat appeared on the face of a confused Shinchon, and she did not expect that this was exactly what Dae Song had said about the press conference earlier. Closing his eyes, the guy said that he had agreed in advance with the leader Huang Jenyong that he would use the core to restore the girl to the ranks of hunters and if everything worked out, he could use her as he wished. The girl's hands were shaking from overflowing feelings. It was a fusion of joy and emotion. But the next moment she put her palms in front of Crystal and said that she would certainly pay Day Song for this service. The next moment, a bright light covered the blue-eyed Shinchon, and not only her dazzling light impressed all those present who saw the birth of a new legend. A sign appeared in front of the ruler of hell asking if the guy wanted to enroll a magic shooter named Shinchoyong as his servant, and at the same moment he agrees and presses the confirmation button, after which the impressive awakening was completed. Looking at her hands, the girl clearly felt the aura, although the sensations were different from the past, but she felt it again. The audience still could not believe what had happened, because in front of them there was a real S-rank awakening and the birth of a new top hunter. Chan Ho happily looked at the transformed Shinchon, but now he and his friend have once again become one step closer to the dream of founding the strongest clan in the world. Soon, in a medical center called Sanrim, dozens of different stickers were pasted on the doors of one of the wards which all supported a seriously ill patient. This patient was a defeated Sankal who still has not come to his senses. The nun hugging the children reminded the children of the promise not to cry. Although it was very difficult for her, suddenly a bright purple light appeared on her left side. This unexpected light turned out to be the great Han Dae Song. The children and the divine servant did not expect to meet such a popular guest in this place. Reporters followed the white-haired guy in a crowd but he did not care much about it, and he greeted the leader from Dankal and said that he had come to give him something better than 400 billion for the Northern Development Fund. The paparazzi present could not believe that this would happen again, but this time was so Dankal who was in a coma. Suddenly top hunters came into the room and Beck Heron asked reporters to make way and let her pass. At the same time, the S-rank awakening crystal appeared live in front of their face. Li Changshik couldn't figure out what kind of thing it was and was it really capable of bringing Brother Dongkal back to them? But what was definitely clear was that a huge aura power emanated from the core. Now the great ghetto schoolba has announced that the S-rank resurrection and awakening show is starting.